I stupidly thought there was like an anime opening. <laughs> one of the black raven and one of the white raven. A country torn in two. One to the west and one to the east. When those which were split are made whole again, the truth will reveal itself. That is a woman's hand, based on its slenderness, I guess? I mean, I've got kind of slender hands, it might have been right. It's the, it's the Yatsu Rasu, the Yatsu Rasu is here, no! Kill her with the flashlight! You, a curse in Yatsu Rasu, K, you! Thinks K did that? That's interesting. And so nice, almost dreamlike, to finally have the chance to relax and sip some tea. Especially after what a whirlwind the past few days have been. On my return flight, I was dragged into a case involving an Interpol agent's murder. The next day, I was investigating a kidnapping and a murder at the Gate One Orland theme park. And later that night, a detective's body welcomed me back to my office. Along with a thief who was out to pilfer files related to a case from 10 years ago, how did I manage to find myself in the middle of so many cases back to back? Must, it's almost like this is a fictional story. Well, at least I have today. All I ask is that I be allowed to spend it quietly. Mr. Edgeworth! No, Mr. Edgeworth! This is big! Big, I tell you! How the fuck did you get in here past the security? Hey, what's wrong with you? Where's your enthusiasm? And suddenly the phrase, the fragility of dreams, comes to mind. What are you talking about, fragile dreams? Come on, let's go! The, the fake Yatsugarasu isn't going to just find herself, you know. Well, if you must know, it's possible that I was paid a visit last night by your fake. Say what? Unfortunately for us, the thief managed to escape. Didn't the thief talk to him? Am I, am I misremembering that? Now, I suppose, if she's such a seasoned thief, she could have like some voice modulator, right? But otherwise, wouldn't he be able to tell like whether the voice is more feminine or masculine at least? I guess we'll find that out. But even now, we're still looking for this criminal. However, I must warn you that we've only had a few hours to search so far. So I must insist that you be patient on this one, Kay. You are grossly overestimating our abilities and competency. What's with you today? Kay, I... Kay, I just have had the worst week. Just the worst. I keep getting accused of murder. I'm just tired of it. I remembered another case that I was in. I'm just exhausted. Are you sure you aren't sleep talking to me right now? Anyway, I've got some special... Uh, I got something much more important that you want... Uh, that I want you to see. That, yeah. Uh, just what, look at it. Oh, and that is... Booyah! Take a look at this! On March 14th, I will be there to steal your dirtiest secrets. That's quite a bold declaration to send out to an embassy. I suppose it was inevitable that a newspaper would catch wind of this. The date the card mentions is today! Today, huh? Come on, we gotta hurry! The embassy awaits! What embassy? Do you know how many, how many embassies we have in this city? It doesn't even specify here. It just says to the embassy, or to embassy. We need more information. What embassy did she send it to? Oh my God. However, do you know which kind of, thank you. <laughs> the embassy awaits. <laughs> you hear that guys? We gotta go to the embassy. However, do you know which country's embassy we should be investigating? Well, it's some really special country, and I'm actually really fuzzy on the details. Why wouldn't it say that in the story? In the fucking newspaper? You're telling me that the reporter that wrote this story didn't indicate which embassy. He, he called it the embassy, too. I'm calling it the because I'm choosing to believe that it was what's-his-fuck who's coked out of his mind and thus missed some details. But never mind that. Where's all your energy? <sighs> Never mind where we have to go. Where's all your energy? Why are you so lackadaisical today? I'm not, Kay. You're just too wound up. Who put a quarter in you today? 
Well, then you should get you you should get to wound up too. Here's a quarter for you. What are you doing to my finger? I'm twisting it. I'm I'm winding you up. Zit zit zit. Because this just might be our chance to catch that woman. Oh God. Okay. I really need you to listen to me for a second. What I want you to do for me over the next I don't know six months or so. Whenever you feel yourself about to say the word just don't. It legitimately lessens the impact of every sentence you included on in and undermines the confidence of your words. That, and it's really annoying to have to read. It throws off the flow completely. I do not want Brushel on this case. I just hope he gets punished somewhere. You mean Miss You? Ah, she makes me so mad, the phony. I would call her my father's murderer personally, but sure, phony Yatagarasu works too, I guess. Everyone knows that the real Yatagarasu would never s would never send something like a calling card. Are, are you are you serious? That it? How is that still the thing you are most concerned? Okay. Until a company's underhanded dealings are made public, the target is always totally unaware that the Yatagarasu has paid them a visit. That's what makes the real Yatagarasu so awesome. Hmm. The Yatagarasu's card that's shown in this article. It looks to me as though it could be genuine. See, that's the thing. Whatever it is, that person isn't the real deal, but has knowledge of the Yatagarasu. I'm like, Trucy, I can get another. You're my dad now. Oh. Okay, then. The decision to make her eyes green in that specific green really brings out her expressions very well with, like, the rest of how the rest of her face is designed. It's like... The energy is literally shooting out of her eyes. You feel that. How many characters in these games have had green eyes? Like, this seems like a very specific choice. If this isn't a clue that that woman's involved, then nothing is. Half gloves. Come on, Mr. Edgeworth, out the door you go. Wait, there are a few preparations I must make before we go. There's something interesting about this car we found last night here in my office. Some a different color than the one in the article, which makes me wonder why. The dark Yatagarasu. God, that'd be so lame. <laughs> What's up? Any reason why you're boring a whole, whole through the newspaper with your eyes? That's an interesting way of... Okay. No, no reason at all. Very well. Thing is how Miss Yu is also someone of a special nature to me. Considering she tried to kill me. I agree, there is some merit to be found in investigating this. I knew you'd come around. Gant did have green eyes, that's right. They're just smaller. But yeah, 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 yeah. Which contrasted with his skin, his darker skin tone really nicely. And like the white hair. I love Gant's design. I, I love his design so much. We are ready! Ready to embark on our nightly outing! And this is where our tale begins! Huh, what a coincidence. Who would have thought that a Steel Samurai stage show would ever be held at such an elegant theater inside a foreign embassy? No, seriously. What the fuck is going on right now? Has this ever happened? Do you know what security is like at embassies? And they just have this stage show happening. Yeah, the climax is really awesome. Steel Samurai, Sushi Slice. I got the chills down my spine when he pulled that move out. I suppose it really is more impactful to watch a show in person than on television. I have to say though, this embassy is set up kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, no shit, Herlock Sholmes. I mean, they have two countries sharing the same building. Oh, that is... Is that... That does seem... really weird, but I wonder if that's actually out of the ordinary. In theory, it seems weird, but does it actually happen more in actual practice than I think it does? Well, as you said yourself, this place and the countries and houses are very special. Even this theater is special in that it is a neutral zone shared by the two countries. Um, so let me get this straight. The Steel Samurai show just now is being sponsored by one of the two countries. 
The one that's called the Kingdom of Alabast, right? Yes, it would appear that the Steel Samurai is very popular in that country as well. That flag is dog shit. Seems that way. Do you know who I'm really into? The Jammin' Ninja. That flag is also dog shit. What the fuck? What is with these terrible color schemes? The Republic of Baval is sponsoring a Jammin' Ninja stage show. That's something for fangirls like me. You totally gotta see that too, Mr. Edgeworth. The Jammin' Ninja show is gonna kick the Steel Samurai show's rear end. You can just say but. It's a lot more concise and I still under anyways you know ever since I first met this girl I've always had this inkling that what she really wants to be is not a thief but rather a ninja so anyway about today's event um what's it called again yeah she wants to be the ninja that wears bright red and carries around a sound device because we all know that ninjas want to announce their presence right Go check out my tier list for flags. That's the very first tier list we ever did in our tier list streams. The Kingdom of Alabas versus the Republic of Babal, Goodwill Jubilee. The small European countries of the Kingdom of Alabas and the Republic of Babal. Just say Alabas and Babal, okay? Just fucking... These two countries used to be a single entity that was abundant with nature. And it was called the Principality of Kadopia. Is everything all right, Mr. Edgeworth? Yes, I'm all right. Moving on. After a period of civil unrest, the country split in two. Those signs of their past remain. For example, their flags preserve the flower and butterfly motifs to this day. Kadopia, huh? The KG-8 incident, what was referred to as the second KG-8 incident, in which an embassy staff member was murdered. Both of these cases were related to the Principality of Kadopia. In the seven years that have passed, the country may have split into two. However, the Yatagarasu still sent a calling card here. What can it all mean? Is this supposed to be like a reference to Czechoslovakia? Mr. Edgeworth, I know, I know you're thinking about something. Oh, excuse me. What were we talking about again? You just bore me so much. If you could please stop spacing out on me. Anyway, we're talking about the Alabast versus Babal Goodwill Jubilee. Thank you, Kay. Good lord. Two countries have had a pretty bad relationship with each other, but supposedly, ladies and gentlemen of the supposed jury, <laughs> they've been trying really hard to make up recently. That's why they decided to hold this event. You know, ever since their economies went to shit because they broke up and they were like, wow, this is a really fucking stupid idea. Maybe we shouldn't be so damn petty. If that's the case, then why the verses? Also, both countries claim to own the real Primadux statue what the national treasure to both they're planning to have them publicly evaluated today to see which one's the real deal yeah it sounds like they're making up really well hey you know i remind you to take care and not succumb to your thieving desires oh when it comes to treasure i can't help myself you know that actually i can you help yourself i'm not aware that you've ever stole anything or you claim to be a thief but you had better be saying that in jest i can read your language your body language you know You've got it all wrong. Look, I'm here to do some investigating. Investigating, I tell you. Huh, I know. And although we don't know if the Yataganasu will really make an appearance, I suppose we should still spend some time examining this place. Yo, like so? Tell me that show was fantastic. You're a reporter. I don't care. Apparently, I must care. Oh! You know what's interesting? I don't even dislike her character. I don't. I think she's a solidly middle tier character. I don't want to keep seeing her though. She's not good enough to be bringing back like that. If you're not A tier, you should not be brought back that often. A tier or above are the people that deserve recurring roles. Unless you're going to actually give them character growth, which she does not have. As I can tell by the fact that she's still doing what she always does. Look at this shit. What the fuck? Who acts like this? Nobody. Because I'm not sure you can get more sus than that. Where in tarnation are they? Come on, big scoop. Hey, mister, out of the way. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Ugh. I seem to remember this woman from somewhere. How does she not remember who he is? And yet my instincts are directing me to not engage in conversation with her. Perhaps it would be best if I left her alone. Thank God. 
These flowers were sent by Global Studios. Global Studios? That's where they filmed the Steel Samurai television show. They've been producing hit after hit recently. So the studio is being remodeled. Oh, I read about that in the papers the other day. That mascot of theirs is also getting a facelift too, right? Um, what's its name? Oh, the monkey? You mean, you mean Mrs. Monkey? Yeah, I thought it was something like that. You really have a great memory. Huh, never underestimate my powers of recollection. <laughs> I'm gonna say that to my wife the next time we talk about our respective memories. I'm curious just how hard I will be hit. It appears that the child is watching a video from the first season of The Steel Samurai. Go, go, keep on fighting until your last breath. Go, my hero, The Steel Samurai. I don't know. Sure. Completely absorbed in singing the theme song, I see. I'll leave, let the child watch in peace. There are pamphlets about the two embassies here on this table. I'm gonna wrap up two flashbacks. Oh, I did not like that case. That was probably my least favorite case. That lime green, and was it bright pink, or was it red? Like, whatever it was, it was... It was painful to the eyes. It was an eyesore, like, for real. Ugh. Whoever owns the building is like, You guys signed a lease, and you're both going to be responsible for that lease. For the rest of the term. I suppose I'll just help myself to one of these. Hmm, what, what is all the hubbub? Ah! Hey look, it's a still samurai! He's got his son, the Iron Infant, with him. Did I miss that earlier? The Iron Infant. God, my stomach just Ava growled. I do think this is a bop. Who is the Steel Samurai now? It's not Will, right? May I speak with you for a second? It's the Steel Samurai. Mr. Edgeworth, what are you glaring at him for? I glare at everyone. Anyways, please excuse me. It's just that I've never seen a superhero up close before. Does that say to Edgeworth? Looks like he's written something down for you. To Edgeworth, from Steel Samurai Daddy. Married man of Neo Old Tokyo. What the fuck? Wow, an autograph. Pretty cool that he got that you got one, huh, Mr. Edgeworth? <laughs> Mr. Steel Samurai, Ambassador Alpha is waiting for you. We'll proceed to the birth. The Steel Samurai isn't only here for the two countries tonight, but rather can be thought of as a goodwill ambassador for our own country as well. There he goes, off to spread goodwill to the world. He really does seem like a goodwill ambassador, doesn't he? Okay, we're shooting the next segment now. Cue camera. In just a few seconds, the Jam and Ninja stage show is set to begin. After the show, the Jam and Ninja will enter the Republic of Babao. He's set to meet with the Ambassador of Babao at that time. Ah, the Jam and Ninja show is about to start. We've got to get back to our seats. Regrettably, I don't have much of an interest in ninjas. Oh, that show will change your mind. Come on, we have to hurry. If we even miss a second of the Jam and Ninja's awesome play, I'll never forgive you. Uh, I suppose you're not about to give me much of a choice here, are you, Kay? Wow, they're, they're in such sync. They're walking in sync. I could listen to that A Ninja's Marked for Death's Lullaby song all day. Wh what? A Ninja Marked for Death's Lullaby? His superb playing in that sad melody really brought a tear to my eye. And his heart-wrenching voice, now that's the Jam and Ninja's greatest weapon. Ugh. Ah, those pieces of Jam and Ninja merchandise over there, I've got to have them. I'm gonna steal them, I mean, yeah, I'm gonna steal them. I especially want the hair sticks they're selling exclusively at these shows. They're exactly like the ones the heroine Princess Misola wears in her hair. Anyway. Anyway, anyway, hold it right there, Mr. Edgeworth. Yes? You're thinking of going home, aren't you? Well, it doesn't seem likely that the Yantakarasu will be making an appearance tonight. Most likely it was simply a prank, bro. No way, I just know the Yantakarasu will show. But I thought you said that the Yantakarasu doesn't send calling cards. Yeah, I did, but... I figured from the very beginning that this would wind up being a wild goose chase. Well, that card she sent was a genuine fake calling card. A genuine fake? Oh, how can I word this? Yeah, genuine fake, that's kind of an oxymoron. The Yatsugarasu's mark that's on the calling card is exactly the same as my mark. Get it now? Uh, we've got a problem. 
No, that's that's the bailiff. Oh, we got a we got a problem. The Atarasu has been spotted in Alabast. What? You hear that, Mr. Edgeworth? Ha! So you finally decided to show yourself, you phony! Hey, what gives? What the fuck? She's just gonna. Oh, yeah, there's a there's a thief in here. Go on, go crazy. Go ahead. I'm sorry, but I will need to search you before you may enter. What the? Hey! The Steel Samurai just walked straight through, I'm through without one. Yeah, she doesn't understand the idea behind celebrity privilege, does she? Uh, if you don't hurry up and let me through, my phony is going to escape. Hey, a country's embassy is considered to be a part of the country itself. If you don't go through the proper procedures to enter the country... Mr. Edgeworth! I'm going to enter through Babal and climb over to the wall to Alabas. Yeah, announce that to the guard. With the guard right there. Just announce it publicly. Yeah. Hold it. You would tell a prosecutor straight out that you intend to illegally enter another... Okay, are you listening to me? Okay, Faraday, and I'm coming through! Yes, and welcome! Someone stop her, anyone! Oh, the other place just let her through? Hey, what's up? Come on in! Oh, oh god. I, oh, I really need to start the cardio again. Okay, where are you? Don't tell me you really did find some way over this fence. Ah! Fire! It's too big for us to handle! Looks like the Yatagarasu came to Babal, too. You, cursed Yatagarasu. Okay, you, you'd better be alright. Wherever you are. Oh, here we go. I told you it wasn't me! Hold it. There's no fucking way that she had the opportunity and time to burn that much of the building after running out of our sight. That alone exonerates her. Impossible. I need, really, that cardio. Ugh. Okay, are you all right? Do I look all right to you? Now, can you do something about this woman? Mr. Edgeworth, Detective Gumshoe, what is the meaning of this? Uh, well, sir, it's some um, this. Oh! Okay. Never mind, that's a little different from the fire. Just, just a little bit. Isn't that Cochin? He's... It wasn't me! He was already dead when I ran in here! Hot on the heels of the fake Yatsakarasu. Look, I only came in here because I saw a suspicious person at the open air stage. A suspicious person? A long back black coat and a hood over their head. I dare you to tell me that's not suspicious. When I saw that person, I immediately thought they must be the fake Yatsugarasu. So I chased after them in the embassy, into the embassy, then into here, and then lost sight. But I just know that person is the one who did it. She's been really weird. She's been really weird. I wonder what would happen if we were to remove that wig and those sunglasses. Because th this just, this design has to mean something. There is one big difference. She doesn't have freckles on her face. Oh my god, she actually has a voice now. What are you so worked up over? There is no reason for you to be this loud. Correct me if I'm wrong, but your agent Long's security... I mean, <laughs> secretary security gave you too much credit. Sheena, I believe your name is correct. And if you're making an arrest, I assume you have evidence that it was Kay who committed the crime? Is that also correct? You refuse to answer? Oh, shit! Well, that... Okay. Okay. <laughs> just, just shit on my theory immediately. I guess she could have contacts, but yeah, that definitely looks like a different person. I like her design too. I don't need to answer. You are merely a prosecutor in this country, meaning you have no investigative authority. Hey pal, just what the heck does what you just said mean? If it happened here, it's under Mr. Edgeworth's jurisdiction. The end. And seeing how this building is sitting on our soil, we can investigate whether, wherever we'd like. I don't think that's true. Unfortunately, detective embassies are a, a different matter. Yeah, that's what I thought. Huh? This office is considered to be a part of the Republic of Babal, which means that anything that happens in here defaults to the, con the control of the, the, the Babalese government and Babalese law, giving them exclusive extraterritorial rights. Extraterrestrial rights? <laughs> Sir, do you really believe that the truth is out there? <laughs> G 
good X Files reference. Oh, basically, our country's laws do not apply inside the embassy of another country. That's what was agreed to by our respective governments. Our authority to investigate was effectively nullified the second we entered this place, which means we can do little here in this situation. No way, sir! Please leave this matter to Interpol's hands and. in Interpol's hands and go home. Hey, you calm your fucking nerves, Ray Ayanami. We're gonna. we're gonna have an actual conversation here. Mr. Edgeworth! Hey, you're not. Mr. Edgeworth! In that case, allow me to enjo join your investigation. Slap! Wait, whip! Ah! Ambassador Paleno, I truly appreciate you allowing me to join the investigation. It's really nothing. Maddie was my secretary, so of course I want to help you as much as I can. In fact, it's a blessing that Interpol agents were able to make it here so quickly. Francisca. Well, well, I never imagined that I'd meet you here of all places. This is an embassy, meaning that you have no authority to conduct. Already? What is it? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Ambassador Polina. And you are? I'm Miles Edgeworth, public prosecutor. I ask that you please allow me to investigate this case as Miss Von Karma's assistant. Uh, assistant? Miles, what the heck do you think you're? Please, I implore you, Amb Ambassador Polino. Very well, I'll be counting on the two of you, Miss Von Karma and Mr. Edgeworth. Um, what did you mean by you'll be Miss Von Karma's assistant? I don't exactly have a choice, do I, detective? I don't become Francisca's assistant. I can't participate in this investigation. <laughs> there you go again, running at the mouth with that aloof expression on your face. Francisca, please. I don't know what you're planning quite yet, but at least I do know one thing, that you are now my subordinate. Just remember that my whip is always ready to wake you should you have a brain lapse. Of course, I'll keep that in mind. You are done playing games. All right, let's begin the investigation. Go, 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 go. By the way, detective, I suppose it's a bit late to be asking, but why are you here? Well, better late than never, I guess, sir. I was placed on guard duty for the Babylese Embassy today. And where are our police guarding an embassy? Well, on account of the card they got from the Yatsakarasu. They called us up and asked for our help, sir. Oh, and because we've been searching for the Yatsakarasu these past seven years. It's a bit more or less mutually a beneficial arrangement, if you ask me. Except it didn't mutually benefit anybody. Except for how mutually unbeneficial this is. <laughs> oh, I'm good. I, I, I'm not gonna lie, that was pretty good. Except for how mutually unbeneficial this has all turned out to be, I suppose. It looks like you failed to com competently perform your guard duty yet again. Ah, look forward to your next salary negotiation, although it's out of my hands. But sir, if my salary gets cut anymore, I won't be able to buy even packet noodles anymore. Go get a different job. All right, uh, so Kay is not having a great time. Um, this person is definitely not having a good time. This dude is barring my entry. That's some fireplace. You know, it really gives this place a mansion-like quality, don't you think, sir? Oh, if these are a staple in every Babylon's house. Then I bet Santa Claus pays them a visit too. Just how old are you again, detective? Sorry, but Interpol is still conducting its investigation beyond this point. I'm a subordinate of Miss Von Karma. Is there some reason why I'm being denied access? I completely forgot about that. My superior clearly stated, don't you dare let anyone near the site, you got it? If I let you examine the site, my superior would get really angry at me. You know, Miss Redworth, I feel really bad for the guy. So why don't we do as he says? Yes, I suppose we may, might as well. I'm sorry, I have to half-ass this. So our victim was the secretarian of this embassy, I take it. Manny Cochin. I heard that he was an admirable person. Very admirable. The cause of his death is a stab to the base of his neck. He was lax in watching his back. Or his neck. We were fortunate that, we, that the fire missed our victim's body for the most part. If the fire had burned a bit longer, it would have made identifying him a hassle. So Mr. Conchin was stabbed to death in the middle of a raging fire? Yeah, holy shit, who would have thought that he couldn't focus completely on protecting his neck? What in the world happened inside the, this room? 
Nook and cranny time. Oh, that's suspicious. Hmm, there appears to be something in his pocket. This key, it can't be. Isn't this the Yatagarasu's key that was stolen seven years ago? What? But that's... Huh? Seven years ago? You mean that case where I was framed, sir? Yes, it's the piece of evidence that stole the life of Kay's father seven years ago, which was then stolen by Kalisto Yu. What? Mr. Faraday was killed with his key, sir? Thought he was killed with a knife. Ah! Did nobody fill him in on what really happened? Scruffy, at the very least, try to remember the details of crimes you were a suspect in. Yeah, no shit, I actually agree with her. Like, how do you forget that? Francisca, as you will recall, Detective Gumshoe was not present when Miss Yu made her escape. Plus, even among law enforcement, only a few knew of this key's existence. I doubt that a new rookie at the time would have been made privy to such knowledge. You could have just taught- he was there! He was there! You couldn't at least told him what got him off the hook? Like, dude, this is what we found out, it's not you, hooray! I guess no, they were just like, hey, you're free to go. Get out. Oh, feel like the victim right now. All trampled on, sir. Hmm, I suppose I'll just have to fill you in now. The secret to this key is... Is there blood on it? Is there Oh. Oh, wow. That's amazing, sir. It's like some kind of magic trick. I knew it. This is the same exact piece of evidence that Miss Yu took with her. I remember this beautiful pattern on the blade. <laughs> kind of arousing, quite frankly. Erotic and... The way the pattern intertwines and... Oh. It's like it's dancing on the blade. I remember this as well. It's a vine motif, isn't it? Yes, it looks like two interwoven vines crisscrossing down the blade in such an erotic fashion. It's like the vines would die if they were ever separated from each other. It's so beautiful. <laughs> Just love how he's like, specifically like, oh, it's quite beautiful. It's like, it's like the world right now is just him in that pattern and just darkness around him. Fine, sir. I think it looks like a bunch of stars, if you ask me. It's one of those six-sided stars. Just like the police mark on our Ds. I really don't think you can call these stars. To say that the detective's art sense is underdeveloped would be an understatement. The real question is why the Babylese Embassy's secretariat holding this. Embassies. While we don't know how Mr. Cochin came to possess this key, we do know that this was stolen by the Yatagarasu from the Kodopian Embassy. That's right, Mr. Faraday had written that fact down in his organizer. And obviously because he written it down, we should take it as 100% truth. I believe this means that further research is required into the country of Kodopia. Why don't you ask Ambas Ambassador Paleno about what he knows? Supposedly, he was a candidate to be the next Kadopian ambassador once long ago. He should be able to answer any specific questions you may have. Miles Edgeworth. What am I looking for? Oh, the knife. <laughs> Is this knife the murder weapon? Some preliminary testing has been conducted. According to the results, the blood on that matches the victim's blood. The blade shape was also found to be consistent with the stab wound. I suppose this means that we now know that the crime was committed with this knife. This knife's got some really fancy ornamentation going on, huh, sir? This thing practically screams artsy at me, too. Although, it's also covered in blood. Just like the last thing I said was artsy. Gumshoe secretly loves, like, morbid art because of the desk. Hmm, but the handle is pristine. There's not a single drop of blood on it. Speaking of the handle, I believe it has a butterfly motif. It's very beautiful. That is odd for the handle itself to have nothing on it. The ceiling fan must have fallen from the ceiling. Um, yeah? That might be the most obvious thing Ed Edgeworth has ever said. Ceiling fan? What does one of those do? Exactly what it sounds like it does. It's a fan that is installed on one ceiling. Well, if I had one of those in my room, I'd better go dizzy from staring at it as I slept. Detective Gumshoe, in the real world, we close our eyes when we sleep. <laughs> Just let that one go, okay? Miles Edgeworth. What is it? Let me tell you something. You are currently my subordinate. And if you wish to convince everyone else of that, you will speak to me with respect. What's with the giddy glint in her eyes? I don't think that will really be necessary, Francisca. Oh, really? Well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't change the fact that you are still under me. I thought Francisco was flying around the world in pursuit of the smuggling case. Well then why is she here at this embassy? Maybe because it has something to do with the smuggling case. 
I was investigating the Alabastian Embassy when I got wind of this mess. The ceiling fan, it must have been carried in here and smashed on the ground. The only possible explanation. Oh, that's right. The Yatsugarasu was due to appear at that embassy as well. Yes, but the difference is that we didn't have a fire over there. Although, there was an incident at the Alabastian Embassy as well. But I left Agent Lang in charge of that case and came over to the Babylese Embassy. Oh, so Agent Lang is here as well, huh? I see you've met. Well, he's in the Alabastian Embassy acting as bodyguard for Ambassador Alba. Ambassador Jessica Alba. <laughs> hubba, hubba. However, he seems to have a different reason for being there. So the suspect in the murder that occurred in this office is that little girl I see. Is she perhaps trying to be the Yatagarasu? Okay, whatever, harm a soul, sir. Hey, you remember, do you not, about the case we investigated together seven years ago? That girl's the daughter of the victim in that case, Mr. Faraday. So she's that feisty little girl. He has been on the trail of the Yatsugarasu, which is how she ended up here, looking for the one who took her father's life. I see. Hmm. Maybe that's something I should try sometime. Kay's trying so hard, but you know what? The Yatsugarasu just keeps on tricking us all. Hmm, how so? The Yatsugarasu sent a card saying, I will be there to steal your dirtiest secret. But all we've had is an arson and a murder. The lab boys are going in circles. You know what this is, sirs? It's a breach of contract and it's going on the rap sheet. <laughs> yeah. That's what we gotta worry about, the breach of contract claim. You ask me, I'm perfectly fine with the fact that nothing was stolen tonight. I do wonder though, if Kumisto Yu really is the Yatsugarasu. This guy is very warm. I can't believe that many fell among thieves tonight. Without him, I have no idea what my schedule for tonight is. Ambassador Polano, I believe your schedule tonight will consist of Listening to reports from the police, that and only that. I ask you to cooperate not only for your own sake, but for Mr. Cochin's as well. You're a rather strong man, aren't you? How fascinating! Here I know it isn't much, but I'd like you to have these. I'm sorry, but it would be against my principles to accept the bribe. Oh, no, no, no. These are simply coupons we distribute to promote Babao. Remember, we offer a large number of discounts and offers when you visit lovely Babao. Now I remember, the Republic of Babao is known for its feverish tourism industry. Yeah, it, his friction isn't helping his temperature. Yeah, like this dude isn't suspicious at all with his eyes closed and his... <laughs> I was wondering if you might tell me a bit about the deceased Manny Cochin. He was my secretary in the embassy secretariat and charged with running the whole place. He was an admirable man. His death is a great loss to our country. He was in charge of everything, accounting, printing, taking care of our national treasures. I'm sorry, but you, did you say printing? Our country's primary source of revenue is our tourism industry. So in order for us to print the necessary pamphlets, flyers, coupons, etc. We have a printing press here at our own embassy. I see. Please excuse my forwardness. However, I feel I should mention that I have the distinct impression that I've met him before. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Since you are of the legal profession, I suppose you just might have. After all, Manny was involved in the KG-8 incident. The KG-8 incident? The defendant was found innocent. Who was found innocent in that case was Manny. So your Mr. Cochin is the same man as the one in that case. It's been ten years. Manny recovered personally from that case and dove enthusiastically into this job. He was the one who planned this event and was to oversee this embassy's renovations. It really is a shame he had such a bright future ahead of him. We can't have tourists and visitors to our embassy think we're a poor nation, can we? So renovating the embassy is something of an investment. We may have a rather paltry budget, but we're trying our best to make do. However, I guess the only person who could have helped us do our best is no longer now with us. How are they so poor if tourism's so big? Ambassador Polano, I was wondering if I may ask you about Canopia. Canopia? Oh, right. What would you like to talk about? First, I'd like to ask you about this key. Hmm? What about this key? Screen XD. I found it sticking out of Mr. Conchin's pocket. I believe it originally belonged to this embassy, is that correct? Hmm, upon closer inspection, it seems that this key is shaped like a butterfly. It's not all about this key. It's also capable of changing into a knife. Oh, how fascinating. Is it possible that the ambassador didn't know about the existence of this key? Hmm, 
in its knife form, there is a flower mark at the base of the blade. I guess this knife might be from when we used to be a part of Kenopia. Damn, dude! Just, like, respond like a normal person! And how did you come to that conclusion? It has both of Kenopia's national symbol, the butterfly and the flower. I suppose Manny used this key here at the embassy back when we were still Kenopia. Are there two keys? I mean, it's possible that there are two keys. I don't think it was ever stated that there's only the one. Ambassador Paleno, this key was stolen from the Kadopian Embassy seven years ago by Kalisto Yu, otherwise known as the Great Thief Yatagorazu. Oh, really? You were not aware that Miss Yu had broken into this embassy at that time? I'm sorry I can't be much of a help. I'm not very familiar with these details, you see. I only became the ambassador after Babao became its own independent nation. But if Manny were still alive, he'd probably know about what happened back then. I would fucking think so, considering he was accused. Well, actually, Gumshoe was accused and he didn't know shit even after the fact either. Mr. Conchin and Miss Yu knew each other seven years ago. Well, that doesn't explain why I found the Yatsugarasu's key here in the, in the present. Alright, let's check in with Kay. Kay, are you alright? She's been choking me for this entire time, you son of a bitch! You believe me, don't you, Mr. Edgeworth? You don't think I did it, right? Yes, of course I don't. I promise to prove that it wasn't you. That's enough chit-chat. You can investigate all you like, but it's only a matter of time before we take her in. It would be wise of you to give up while you can. What? Why? Is something bad gonna happen to me if I if I don't? If, if worst case scenario, it's just a slight waste of time for me and inconvenience. It's... I don't, I don't, I, I think it's worth the risk if, to, you know, get, I, no, your logic is stupid. No, I don't think so. Kay isn't lying, and my investigation will prove that to be true. Go ahead and try then, if you're that confident. I can't allow this to continue on this way. I must prove her innocence post-haste. A small personal safe. This was Mr. Cochin's office, so perhaps he stored his most important documents in there. Ah, oh, of course it's locked. It appears we won't be able to open it without the key. All right, let's start getting some logic. It's a safe. Wouldn't it have a combo? Oh. We know for a fact that the Yatsugarasu's key was used at this embassy. Furthermore, we found it in the, vi in the victim, Mr. Cochin's pocket, which leads me to think that perhaps it is the key to the personal safe in this office. Good thinking, sir. Let's go try it out. It appears I was correct. The key that was left to us in the victim's pocket literally turned out to be the key to the next piece of the truth. Hmm, what do we have here? Looks like a fake wall. Because that wall is obviously not what's against the back of the safe. Hey, there's nothing inside! You think the Yatagarasu made off with everything, sir? No, no. Detective, I believe all we need is a closer look. Nook and cranny! What is this here? Looks like ripped corner of a piece of paper, sir. No, I don't think it's ripped. It seems more, to me, like it's stuck in the safe. Hey, you're right. It won't budge an inch. Not even when I tug on it. But I don't think I've ever seen paper stuck on the inside of a safe before. Detective, I think you have it backwards. It's not the paper that's strange. It's the safe. What do you mean? I mean, what I mean is that the secret to the safe is that... Even just eyeballing it, you can see that the inside is a bit too shallow. Furthermore, with the unnatural way the paper is stuck at the back of the safe, I'd say that there is an extra bit of space behind the back wall of this safe. In other words, this safe has a second compartment. What? I suppose that you are correct in asserting that the paper is stuck in an unnatural manner. However, if what you say is correct and there is a second compartment, how do we go about opening the door to it, then? I don't know, I'm just telling you what it is. <laughs> As you can see, there's no other lock or keyhole in sight. Actually, there is one more spot of interest to me on this safe. Oh? Yes, and I believe that spot is the keyhole to our mystery second lock. The safe and its locks. Alright then, since you are so sure of yourself, show me how you deduced your answer. This? Doesn't the shape of this keyhole remind you of something, Francisca? The shape? It does look very familiar. However, I believe it's simply a latch hole for the safe's locking mechanism. I honestly thought that's what it was, too. But it does look strangely designed. 
It's just for keeping the door shut, nothing more. If that's all it was for, it wouldn't need to be designed like that, though. Is that so? The person who used this safe... Mr. Cochin made sure this safe had two compartments in order to hide something. You honestly think someone like that would allow the keyhole for the hidden hat to the hidden half to look so obviously like a keyhole that even the average person person could figure it out? You can't be serious! Are you saying that this hole is the keyhole to the hidden compartment of this safe? That's precisely what I'm saying. And I will prove to you right now that the Yantakarasu's key is the key that will open it. You can just talk to me like a normal person. You don't have to yell objection. We're just having a normal conversation. The Yatagarasu's key? Miles Edgeworth, this had better be a very bad joke. Sorry, but this is no joke. The Yatagarasu's key is the very key that will open the second compartment of the safe. We know that this key opens the first compartment of the safe, but the keyhole you're talking about is of an entirely different shape than that of the key. Let's go over this again, shall we? The Yatagarasu's key was originally made to open Mr. Cochin's safe in the Kenobian Embassy. We confirmed that as fact by opening the door to a safe with it. Now let's take a look at the back end of the key. Looking at the knife portion head on, what do you see? What are you ta? It appears that you've come to understand what I'm talking about. When viewed head on, the key's blade is the exact same shape as the keyhole. The real function of the knife portion is to act as the key to the hidden portion of the safe. But that's preposterous! Actually, pretty baller. Because it looks like a knife and was used like one to kill Mr. Faraday seven years ago, we fell under the misconception that it was always meant to be a knife. But for both the safe and its key to conceal such clever tricks, whatever is hidden inside the secret section must be of incredible importance. Then it's even possible that what I've been searching for is inside! Scruffy, hurry up and open that safe! Ah, yes, sir. Opening it now, sir. These items, there. It's a bunch of funny-shaped things. I guess they're pieces of art, sir. You're in the way! Move now, Scruffy! I didn't think I was in the way. <laughs> These pieces of art. They're identical to the ones that have been stolen from various countries around the world. I figured as much. These are the treasures this section of the safe was to hide from view. I believe a more thorough examination is required. Nook and cranny. Oh, never mind. No nook and cranny. These are the pieces of stolen art from around the world. I wonder how much they're worth. Especially this one. Hey! Scruffy, don't touch those valuable pieces of art with your filthy hands. Why, do you have any idea what would happen to you if one of them were to break? Is it just me or did she hit one of those pieces of art just now? This is the document that we thought was stuck earlier. I wonder what it's about. Beats me, sir. Why don't we take a look at it first before we give up, Detective? Yeah, let's just give up and not even look at it. Mr. Coach's name is written here on the last page. I wonder what the significance of this document is. Well, we're missing page two. Oh, I guess it's written in... Babalese? Or Kadopian? This artwork, there's still something on display in this display rack, sir. Knives, huh? Although the blades are all that remain of them, unfortunately. I guess the handles all got burnt off by the fire. Ah, oh, so even the knives fell victim to the fire. Ambassador Polino, are these knives yours? Why, yes, they are. They are a special set of ornamental knives featuring the national symbol of Bella. These butterfly-themed knives, along with Alabas' own set of knives, are comprised of three knives each. But I can't believe the Babylonese ones have been reduced to this state. Hmm, ornamental knives, huh? Hmm, there's a small release on the tang on this blade. Master Polano, what is this notch here for? Oh, that's... It's a feature of these knives wherein you can freely exchange the handles on them. So that we can change how they look to fit the situation, of course. I see, so these knives were constructed so that the handles could be easily removed. Francisca, when we last talked, you said that you were on the trail of a smuggling ring. Apollo Justice is still mixed, but it was better... That game was also better than I expected it to be. Based on the general opinions on it that I got beforehand. Which is why, to me, like... People say, oh, I really like them. Okay, good for you. I'm, I might, I might not. I generally don't let other opinions persuade me as to what I feel like I should think, nor should any of you. You're, own, you're, own, you're all your own individuals. I suppose the reason you are here right now is related to that? Yes. After analyzing the intel we've gathered from various countries, this embassy rose to the top of our list of sites to investigate. And this is what tipped us off. Oh, there's page two. This accounting document? 
only one page of the whole thing, so we're not sure all about, about all the details. However, it's enough for us to grab onto the tale of the beast. For you see, this type of paper was made only in the kingdom of Kadopia. It's A4, and I swear to God, it is the worst type of paper to ever- Why is it so long? No, using A4 is so stupid, it fits in no folders. And the folders it can fit in are too big for bags, so you have to- You have to carry around with you bigger bags just to fit these bigger pieces of paper. I hate A4. I hate A4 so much. I just- I despise it. Why? Why is it used? It might be the best four, but it's the worst paper. Which means that somewhere in the countries of Abelas and Babao is the head. The one pulling the string behind the entire smuggling ring. Man, that rhymed. That's Francisca for you. She's amazing. Pursuing this case with all she has. Oh, I have to deduce. Okay, yeah. Tell me, is it not possible that your page was taken from the set of from this set of three? Well, well, it certainly looks that way. By putting our multi-part puzzle together, we seem to have arrived at an answer. And it seems that you have now found what you were looking for. Yes, and with this has become crystal clear, that Mr. Cochin himself was responsible for the mass smuggling of Babylese Ink. Babylese Ink? Babylese Ink is a special product of the Republic of Bebao. However, due to a special reason, only a limited volume is ever exported. Dude, just... And that reason is? That's all you had to say. You, why, why hold it? It's so unnecessary. That's classified. It's on a need-to-know basis, and you don't need to know. In any case, it seems that the head of the smuggling ring was our victim, Mr. Manny Cochin. His base was in an embassy, thus it was hard for both our country and his to interfere, making it the ideal conditions under which to run a smuggling operation. Ah, but it's so frustrating. I lost the person I was to rain judgment down upon with my whip of justice. Well, even if he is dead, we still have a responsibility to look into him as his misdeeds. You expect me to whip a dead man? Well, I'm not interested. Francisca, you must know that Manny Cochin was the suspect in the KG-8 incident. Of course I know, on top of being the head of the smuggling ring. There is the matter of what really happened in that case that needs to be resolved. Hey, it's another butterfly. I believe it is the symbol of the Republic of Baba. Drawing this big on the lawn of an embassy definitely conveys a sense of overwhelming patriotism. I've got a lot of patriotism too, sir. The reason I became a cop in the first place was because I wanted to protect our country. You may want to, detective. However, I have yet to see the fruits of your desire. You don't have to be so blunt about it, sir. Get wrecked. design of the, of the knife's handle. It greatly resembles the special babbly species of butterflies. It does, doesn't it? Plus, it says right here. This knife is property of the Republic of Babao. Perhaps this means that the knife used in the crime was found in this, right in this room? It must be one of the primitive statues Kane was talking about earlier. Who just mirror does this man look like the steel samurai? They could be twins. The ceiling fan was stupid. Not only did it prevent you from looking at, like, a vital piece of getting through this investigation easier, it added nothing but a really stupid comment by Edgeworth. Are you done investigating? You realize now, don't you, that this girl's the only one it could be. Now come along quietly, Yatsugarasu K. Faraday. You are under arrest for the murder of Manny Cochin. Mr. Ed Mr. Edgeworth! Uh, Mr. Edgeworth! Please, you don't have to- you have to believe me, I didn't do it! I chased the fake Yatsugarasu in here, and he- he was already- You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you. I'd like to help you reduce the number of mistaken arrests Interpol makes. What is that supposed to mean? The fuck do you think it means? Use your brain. I believe I told you that Kay Faraday is not the culprit of this crime. Very well, I suppose I have no choice. I'll show you just how foolish your claims are. Even your police confirmed that the Yatsugarasu infiltrated the Babalese embassy tonight. Utilizing the confusion caused by the fire, the Yatsugarasu snuck into this embassy. Furthermore, this girl claims to be the Yatsugarasu. Shouldn't claim to be something or not. And most importantly, other than her, there was no one else in here with the body. 
Your reason for suspecting K is because you think she is the Yatagarasu? Exactly, but it isn't just me. She calls herself the Yatagarasu. Look, how many times do I have to tell you? I was only out to capture the fake Yatagarasu. Imposter or not, it matters not. The Yatagarasu is a Yatagarasu. Very well, then I shall prove that K is not the Yatagarasu who killed Mr. Manny Cochin. Go ahead and try. Show me what the prosecutors of this country are made of. We may have confirmed it, but are you telling me that no one could catch the thief? If so, you're basically admitting that the Yatsugurasu that committed murder eluded us. Of course, I chased after the Yatsugurasu and entered the Babylonian embassy right away. And that is also why I'm making this arrest right now. Because at the end of my long chase, there was only this girl. Oh. In any case, this is what I believe happened tonight. Just because she calls herself that, it doesn't prove that she was a killer. No, but it does give her a motive. Yatagarasu sent a card saying, I will be there to steal your dirtiest secret. Furthermore, there are documents pertaining to some smuggling activity in this room. She obviously wanted to steal them. She killed Mr. Cochin for the key. I see. Lundic is very sound. I expect nothing less of Agent Lung's secretary. However, that statement just now didn't sound right. It might just be the opening I need. Your logic is sound, but not exactly. Objection! Agent Sheena, I regret to inform you that there is a flaw in your logic. Oh? Even if you claim that she is the killer and the Yantagarasu, I am certain that securing the smuggling documents is not the motive behind the murder. The key to the safe in this room was found on Mr. Cochin's body. Furthermore, the Yatagarasu would not be so stupid as to leave without the documents. By the simple fact that the documents were still in the safe when we looked, it's obvious that the kill killer's target was not the safe at all. Wow, she is sweating bullets! Holy shit! When your family ask you to smile for your- that's exactly how I look. I hate for smiling so much. Then perhaps she didn't know that Mr. Cochin had the key. If that's the case, then why would she have needed to kill him? Because I can think of no reason for her to kill him if she had not known that fact. Need. Reason. All of this is simply our conjecturing after the fact. It's entirely possible that she accidentally killed him when she was sneaking in. Perhaps she didn't notice the safe secret second compartment before returning the key. But the fact still remains that Mr. Cochin was stabbed to death. You have no definitive proof that it was Kay who committed the act. Actually, I do. I saw her holding the knife she used on the victim with my own eyes. Why wouldn't you have said that long ago? That seems like a very vital piece of evidence. Allow me to tell you a bit more about the evidence that will put her away behind bars. You have to say put away behind bars? Can't you separate the, like, put her away, put her behind bars? They both mean the same thing. It just seems redundant. The knife wound on the body is consistent with the blade of the knife. The knife with the butterfly handle is the murder weapon, which was the kill which the killer was holding. I assume she obtained the knife from the display rack and used it on the victim. You assume? Hmm. I assume you're an asshole. Are you gonna tell me that I'm right? The knife is a part of a special three-piece set, which has a design like no other. The evidence and testimony, it all points to the girl. There's no counter-argument. Ah, uh, I love conclusory statements, don't you? There is no counter-argument, as though there is no counter-argument. That is your definitive evidence? You see now that she's definitely the killer, right? No, Mr. Edgeworth, you gotta believe me! And you came in here because you weren't chasing this suspicious person? That's right. I ran into this office only because I was chasing after that person. But when I entered the room, it was pitch black. I couldn't see a thing. I felt something on the ground next to my foot. So I turned on the lights, but then... Ah! Who's there? This is... This is... I came to this room upon hearing the girl scream. Ah, yes. And I'm sure the girl screamed in order to get your attention after she murdered somebody instead of not screaming and you perhaps not ever looking in this room and the body just burning.
and when I saw her holding the knife, I immediately restrained her. The only object Kate felt by her feet on the floor was the murder weapon. I had the knife analyzed right away, but we failed to find anyone's prints on it. But the suspicious person in the black coat who came into this room before me! You continue to insist there was such a person, but if there was, where did they go? That, I don't know. But I know they came in here. That sounds like the desperate excuses of a suspect killer, not a trustworthy testimony. That's conjecture. You understand, don't you? We can't trust this girl's words, Mr. Edgeworth. Uh, she has a point. Even if Kay's words are the truth, I must show that they are with some show they are with some solid evidence. Mr. Edgeworth, I really didn't. Kay, don't worry. If you didn't do it, then there must exist a way for me to prove that. Still not giving up, I see. In that case, try to counter my argument if you can. Don't worry, I can and I will. Why were there no handles on these knives, though? Would she take the knife off and put the handle on it? Or did she use that knife and then took the handles off the other knives? I don't know. That seems weird. So I have a feeling it's not the damn knife because I don't know where else you would use this that it doesn't work. Every once in a while, I just get into one that just throws me for a loop. So the murder weapon was the knife with the butterfly design on it. But is that really the truth? What are you getting at? I'd like for you to take a look at this. Oh, so I was right. I see. It was, it's, the design is not, it's one of the other places knives, right? The, the other embassies. Okay, where's he going with this? I thought I knew, maybe I don't. There is blood on the blade and yet there's not a speck of blood on the handle. This signifies that at the time of the crime, a different handle was attached to this blade. Yes. Is the design on the blade the same as the others? Because those are individually done too, right? Specifically, like between the two sets of three. The knife that Kay was holding and its handle switched and was in fact not the real murder weapon. It wasn't the real murder weapon. This knife can be taken apart. Shall we give it a go? As you can see, the Babali's knife has now been disassembled into two parts. The killer must have pulled the murder weapon out of the victim's body and proceeded to swap the knife's original handle with this butterfly one. All, it was all to create the illusion that Mr. Cochin was killed with the butterfly-themed knife. Ugh. Ah! This should clear up any and all suspicions surrounding Kay. The argument isn't airtight yet. How so? It's possible that the girl herself is the one who switched the handles. Don't be ridiculous. For what purpose would you do such a thing? I don't care to know how a criminal thinks. That's what motive... That's why motive matters. The way they view the world is beyond the comprehension of a normal person like myself. Okay, so it's just fuck motive, right? Therefore, I wouldn't put anything past them, no matter how odd it may seem. Huh. The truth is right there in front of you, and this knife will show you the way. It will continue to see that Kay is not and could not have been Mr. Cochin's killer. What is this mark on here? It's the mark of a flower. Right, so one, yes. I assume you know what this means, so I was, I was right. I just misunderstood where the mark was. No, not really. Butterflies rest on flowers all the time to drink their sweet nectar. And so they do. However, will this butterfly really drink the nectar of this flower? The answer is clearly not a chance. Now to prove the relationship between the butterfly and the flower with this. Just just show the pamphlet because they're divided? I guess that makes sense. You can't be serious. Hmph. It appears that you've made the connection. The flower on this blade is designed after a certain country's national symbol. That's right. The Kingdom of Alabast. In other words, this blade is from one of the uh, one of Alabast's ornamental knives. Ah! This part of the knife handle has Babal's national symbol on the butterfly of it, of the butterfly on it. Therefore, it is undeniably Babali's in origin. But as we both know, you can't kill someone with just a knife handle. Incidentally, when exactly did the murder occur again, Agent Shina? After the fire had broken out. That's right. Kay entered the Babali's embassy after the fire had taken place. Furthermore, she had not been to the Avalastian uh, side of the building before then. On top of that, not a single person passed between the two countries during the fire. 
which means that Kay could not have transported an Alabastian object over here. That This makes it impossible for her to be the true killer. Stop headbanging. You hurt yourself. Whoop! There it is! Way to go, Mr. Edgeworth, sir! What a great victory! Huh? Hey, why is everyone so quiet? I'm happy we got this far and cleared Kay's name. But what worries me now is what will happen next. What is the meaning of this? An Alabastian knife here? Do you mean, how did this find its way to the Republic of Babal? It didn't just find its way over, rather we should focus on how it was smuggled over. You know what? My brain hurts thinking about it while we're just standing around, thinking, of, thinking while you're on the run. Now that's the way a great thief operates. Okay. Oh, thanks a bunch, Mr. Edgeworth, for proving me innocent, I mean. You believed in me the whole time, right? Tell me you did. Um, not really, but... Haha, <laughs> come on, you don't have to be so shy about it. Your argument is still not airtight. I want your argument to suffocate me. Would you care to elaborate? I understand now that the girl didn't commit the murder. However, there is still the possibility that she is the Yagaturasu. That again? Look, how many times do I have to explain it to you? I am the real Yagaturasu. I'm not like that fake one that goes around setting fires, okay? Whether you're the real deal or fake, it doesn't really matter. All I have to say is this. I have my suspicions that this girl is the one who started the fire. Objection. Preposterous. On what grounds do you suspect her of such a thing? The fact that she calls herself the Yatagarasu, that in itself is a most elegant proof. I'm the President of the United States! Is that elegant proof? Fucking stupid ass art. She is terrible. She is god awful at arguing. Yeah, she could have flew over as the Yaga Tarasu Raven. Why else? Why else would she use that symbol? The fact that she uses that symbol alone is an ele is elegant proof in and of itself that she can become a Raven. She could be Godot. Bang 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 bang. That is what we call a circular argument, as Mike just very clearly demonstrated. The reasoning for my premise is the premise. Mishina, you are a fucking idiot, and I have no intention of taking back any of what I've said. I am the great thief Yatsugarashu. Shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. Just zip the lips. Zip it. Zip it. Zip it. Do da. Zip it. You got that key, right? Close your mouth. Lock it. Throw away the key. The path of justice that my father pointed me towards, I will walk it the best I can. It's not good to be so stubborn. I hope you can understand that. Thanks a lot for the concern, Miss Sheena. Let me share something with you too as a token of my appreciation. Those sunglasses totally do nothing for you, so I'll steal them from you next time, okay? What? I agree, she looks better without the sunglasses. Well, I guess we better get going. Going to where? To the Kingdom of Alabas. If we don't go, we won't know for sure, right? I suppose not. We won't go get anywhere simply by standing here thinking. I don't know. Have you seen Phoenix's time travel machine? I assume Apollo was just sitting there thinking that the entire time. Or Phoenix, one of the two. See where the Alabastian knife came from. We'll have to pay the Alabastian embassy a visit. Let's go, Miles Edgeworth. As you are my subordinate, I will not tolerate you bringing the investigation to a halt. Oof. Understood. So let's just go. Chat's chilled. Let's just fucking... Count off. One, 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 what? Why don't you just get... Oh, okay. Chifu, 99 callouts. So all 99 members are most likely here and accounted for, sir. Hey, you, yeah, you. The second number one from, the, from my right. Sir, yes, sir? Here, a birthday present for you. What? Shifu, I don't know, I didn't know that you knew all of our birthdays. What a kind heart you have. Shifu, you are more of a man than we'll ever be, sir. I'm really sorry, but it's not my birthday. Long she says, a cub who disrespects others soon feels the disciplinary bite of an elder. That present isn't for you, it's for your younger brother's wife's younger brother. Tell him I said hi and happy birthday, won't you? Yes, sir. Shifu, I can't believe you remember... I can't remember you remember that much about each of us. Shifu, I'm, 
I, I, I'm so moved that I can't stop crying. I should probably leave them to their alone time. All right, meeting's over. Everyone head to your po head, head to your posts, from your posts, to your posts. Dismissed, sir. Yo, were you guys there the whole time? I got a call from Sheena, and she's already filed me, filed me, and filled me in. <laughs> oh, I really need a nail file. File. Sorry, it's on my mind. It's been on my mind all day. It sounds like you're out to get in my way again. I have absolutely no intention of interrupting your investigation. I simply request that you grant me permission to investigate the Alabastian Embassy. <laughs> then what if I say no? Agent Long, this man is my subordinate. As I have received permission from the ambassador, he is to be extended the same rights. Sorry, sis, but it's not that simple. Alabas has the strictest immigration regulations in the world, or don't you know, or didn't you know? I somehow doubt that. Even among my elite men, only about half of them were admitted into the country. Besides, any more cooks in the kitchen, and we might spoil the soup if you get what I mean. That's a stupid way to put it. How dare you make such assumptions? Don't take this the wrong way, but I thought I was in charge of Alabas, Miss Von Karma. Yeah. Look, try to understand, okay? Things over in Alabas are a bit of a mess right now. What do you mean by a bit of a mess? No one told you? We had an incident in Alabas as well. This is what we call a decision based on the investigation, Mr. Prosecutor. Look, Wolfie, just let us in already. Is there a problem here, Agent Lang? Oh, I don't get there. I just... No, I can do it myself, don't worry. Not really, just having a discussion about whether or not to let these guys in. Ambassador Alba, I ask that you please allow these people to join the investigation. That is not the Alba I was promised. If I thought about Jessica Alba and tried to think of literally what the opposite of Jessica Alba would be, it would be this man. Oh, it's literally the name for the, the white oak. Oh, that's cool, that's neat. I mean, it definitely looks like a tree. Having a debate because of my country. He's really old. He's like decrepit. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry for placing you good people in that kind of situation. It's all because I lack the strength to govern well. Oh, not a good man for him. Shouldn't make fun of him. He's just a nice old man. Please, it is nothing of the sort, Ambassador. You weakling, Quarkus! Quarkus, your frailty and inability to ch affect change in your country! What, what, what are you? The thing is, investigations conducted in my country have been under Agent Long. It is my judgment that in order to minimize disruption in the investigation, I should leave everything up to Agent Long. There, you see? Oh, no way! Oh, we about to fight here? Ambassador Alba, I ask you to please reconsider letting them into Alabast. What's, what's that? Who's talking to me? I can't see anybody. Wait, is that Plano? A uh, fucking Plano. I do not want to talk to you right now. My day's already been shit enough. Oh, God. If I have to hear any more of your insufferable tourism bullshit. My very own secretary has been murdered in the Babylonian embassy, and he was apparently caught up in some very shady dealings completely unbeknownst to me. Yeah, sure. So I ask for your cooperation in our investigation. These aren't much, but I hope they can cover your travel expenses to Bama. Hello, oh, someday. Uh, why would the fuck would I ever go to that country? We split for a reason, damn it. All right, all right, I get it. He's probably giving it to Long, right? Not the fucking other ambassador. Even if you beg Ambassador Elba, I still have to give the final okay anyway. All right, you hear that, Mr. Edgeworth? We're in. Not so fast, my little cowgirl. You're still a witness in the Babal murder. So I'd like you to please stay in the Republic of Babal. Detective Gumshoe, please take good care of Kay for me. Yes, sir. Sounds good to me. The fewer troublemakers, the better. Ah. Ha. Oh, God, okay, now I gotta walk. So many stairs. So many stairs I gotta walk up. But, sir, you can use the other... I, hi, D-Dan, if I ever get into one of those confounded electric death box traps things. Sir, I, I think it's... I think it's time for you to go to bed. Probably time for me to go to bed soon. <laughs> hey, Mr. Edgeworth. Yes? So I wanted to ask you for a while now, but that lady over there, is she who I think she is? Oh, that's right. I didn't introduce the two of you yet. Francisca von Karma, the prosecutorial prodigy. It's nice to see you again. Oh, I knew it. You're the whip lady. You may address me as Miss von Karma. 
This Von Karma might leave the investigation of Alabas in your hands. Thanks, rest assured, I will outsmart both the smuggling ring and the Yatagarasu. The smuggling ring, huh? Perhaps I should ask Francisca a bit more about them before I head into Alabast. Uh, and I mustn't forget to thank Ambassador Polano for all that he has done for me. You've made so much progress in your investigation in such a short period of time. It's truly amazing. Agent Hicks, whose help I had requested, was cut down before he completed his task. Yes, I remember. I was there. There is no room for further failure in my perfect investigation. In spite of that, I believe you were able to obtain some insight into the ring, correct? It was nothing. I simply made some deductions based on the smuggled item I was following. You mean the Bobbley's Ink? But why are these restrictions on the export of Bobbley's Ink to begin with? That's classified Interpol in- Francisca, as your subordinate, I'm a part of your investigation now. Don't you think it would be beneficial if I was as well informed as you? Point taken. Very well. I'll fill you in. Recently, we discovered some very well-made counterfeit bills circulating in Changfa. Counterfeit bills? Yes, as you may have deduced, the counterfeits are being made with Baval's special Babelese ink. And it's virtually impossible to distinguish bills made with Babelese ink from real ones. Thus, it was only natural for Interpol to keep an eye on the Republic of Babel. That's where this document comes into play, correct? Correct. Mr. Cochin was smuggling large amounts of Babelese ink. Furthermore, he was charged with running the embassy's printing equipment. That's all the evidence I need to know that he was the head of the smuggling ring. Well, I mean, I think it's strong evidence to point that he was a part of the struggling the, the struggling ring. I mean, I, it doesn't sound like they were struggling much to me. They had Interpol after him. Um, but the head? Does it really suggest that he was the head? An integral part, but the head? <laughs> However, there remains one tiny problem. Let me guess, you still have yet to find the counterfeit bills or the smuggling ink. Yes, and while we're, list we're listing things, I might as well add the counterfeit plates to the pile. If we haven't been able to locate any of these items in the Babylonian Embassy, we're looking into the Alabastian Embassy next. It doesn't matter where they're hidden, mark my words, I will find them. Alright, I have to thank you, I guess, because you did come through in the clutch. Ambassador Polano, I am in your debt. No, no, it's nothing. Just promise to come to my country and spend lots and lots and lots of money. It's because it's all about I can do for you, I'm afraid. I only ask that you please bring Manny's killer to justice. I will, Ambassador, on my honor. Wow, you're so sensational. You've really piqued my curiosity. I know there aren't these aren't much, but I'm giving them to you wholeheartedly. God. No, that's quite all right. Oh, well. How about this, then? What? Why would you give- And what exactly is it? I know what it is, it's the ink! It's found- fountain pen ink. Notice Babylonese ink, it is made exclusively in Babel. This is Babylonese ink. We made it from... Wit crystal- Wit crystal oil? Is that supposed to be white crystal oil? Wit crystal oil. Which is mined through our mineral mines. Please accept this ink, one drip of your fountain pen in this. And you can write for hours in your organizer. How fortunate for me, the ink in my pen just happened to have run out. I gladly accept your gracious gift. Dude, this is worth like a hundred times more than that fucking coupon. This is a little bottle of ink. How do you go from, oh, you don't like my cheap gift? Well, here's an extravagant gift instead. Great, wonderful. I guarantee to you that writing with our ink is an unforgettable experience. And since we don't export it, if you run out, you're always welcome to come back and visit our fair nation. Talk about cornering the customer along the, along with the market. Yeah, you've reeled me in. Well, shall we get going? Bruh, weren't you two supposed to be gone? What's wrong, Kay? I didn't get permission to enter Alabas. We're going to go gather whatever info we can over the, the on the Babali side, okay? All right, I'm counting on you two. Right, and I'm counting on you and Miss Von Karma to sniff out clues in Alabas. Oh, and Mr. Edgeworth, if you happen to come across my phony, you let me know, okay? Yeah, just yell over for you. You can come right over. You tell me, I'll rush on over straight away no matter where you are. I was joking. You can't actually do that. I'll let you know when the time comes. Hmm? Blah! What do you think you're doing to my subordinate?
Your. I really want to stop right now. I really want to stop right now. And do you think the heavens are here? I'm in a really, really big pickle, your lordship. The raven, it appeared, poof, and then disappeared, swoosh. And though I am the steel samurai, my sword, it... Whoa, I'm so confused, I don't know what anything means anymore. Who is this f <laughs> Ho there! Ho there, ho there, ho there, ho there. Oh there, oh there, hold up. Woo! I don't know what it was like where you guys came from, but fruitcake was used as a derogatory term for homosexuals when I, where I came from. I'm Larry of the House of Butts. First of his name. Married man of near old Tokyo, milady. Now I remember this person is one of your friends, isn't he, Miles? Hey, what's up with that answer? Your best bud is in a bind. You act like it's no big deal. What sort of bind are we talking about here? The suspect kind. I accidentally became a suspect in a murder. I see. That is quite the bind. How unfortunate for you. Not that we're in the least bit surprised. Yes, I pretty much expected this news. From the instant I saw this unlucky face. Hey, what, what kind of introduction is that? You're so mean to me, Edgy. Get out of my head. If you're not careful, you might find your tiny number of friends go down by one. <laughs> that was uncalled for. Besides, you're... Wait, hold on. Larry! It was you? You're the one who wrote my Steel Samurai autograph? Hmm? Oh, you didn't notice earlier? I even winked at you through my headpiece. What's going on? And why are you beat red? Sorry, but could you not speak to me right now? <laughs> Don't. Say. A word. Yeah, I'm surprised Edgeworth didn't go, Fred might be a stretch. Oh, sorry, am I interrupting your comical yet melodramatic play? I don't think there's anything melodramatic about what's going on right now. It is comical. Uh-huh, so this is the incident you mentioned earlier. Mr. Prosecutor, this man, this childhood friend of yours, is our prime suspect. Of what, you ask? Of the murder of a man who had snuck into this embassy, masked... Oh, Ron better not be fucking dead. Oh, it's the second. I didn't see that. I thought those were all exclamation points. Okay, fair. Who just calls them? I'm Mask to Mask 2. Like, just call yourself Mask to Mask and do like what Kay does. Like, I'm the new one. Like, I took over the, the name instead of calling herself the Yatagarasu 2. It sounds so dumb. Mask to Mask 2? The second. Oh, wow. Yeah, that is uh, indeed Mask to Mask's uh, uniform, kind of. Only Larry could get himself into yet another mess as fine as this. But no matter what the facts seem to say, Larry is not the type to commit murder. Still, it's a rather daunting stroke of misfortune I've struck. I have to prove that Larry Butts is innocent of all wrongdoing. Chief Wolf, we've identified the victim. Good work, I'll take that report now. Agent Long, would you mind if I took a peek at it as well? What did I tell you earlier, Mr. Prosecutor? Don't get in my way. There's only enough flesh here to feed one wolf, and that one is me. That's the stupidest fucking thing I've ever heard in terms of an investigation. So no, you may not take a peek. But Agent Long, that's just asinine logic. Agent Long, are you being an asshole again? Will you allow an investigator such as myself to take a look? Ah, uh, yes, of course. You let the detective see the file. You're a detective bad. Who's bad? That's meeting you here, detective. You weren't expecting me. Ever since that day seven years ago, I chased after the Yatsugarasu nonstop. I even pressured Interpol into keeping me in the loop in case a card was ever found. But Detective Bat, I must ask, are you going to make an ally out of this prosecutor? That's none of your goddamn business. My only goal is to arrest the Yatsugarasu. So if that means making an ally out of this prosecutor, then yes, what the fuck are you gonna do about it? Well, if he can get to the bottom of this case, then I'm willing to share info with him. 
I'm in your debt, Detective Bad. Man, his theme's so awesome. About the murder of Damas too. Would you be willing to fill me in on a few of the details? When the Yatsugarasu showed up, Agent Mong and I took ourselves off guard duty and put ourselves in charge of directing things at this crime scene. Taking advantage of the chaos, Damas too, he broke into this embassy. Probably to steal some treasures or another. I suppose he lost his life when he was forced to fight someone else in this room? Why exactly was that man placed under arrest, Detective? That samurai? He was born looking suspicious, but not for the reasons you suspect, I assure you. And you can plainly see he is completely harmless. Well, it was just a random guess. It's not like he's actually under arrest. Tonight, here at the Alabastian Embassy, Ambassador Alba was to give a commemorative speech, and that's when the Yatagarasu showed. But keep in mind, the Yatagarasu isn't who I'm talking about right now. Those seats, for the guests who had been called to sit in them, were empty. A no-show? Who was it that failed to take their seats? The Steel Samurai. Until the speech was to begin, each member of the entire Steel Samurai family was to wait in a separate room. However, for some weird reason, that man was spotted in a different location than his assigned room at that time. And where was he? He was on the roof, with one of his legs down a chimney. The fuck are you doing, Larry? Uh, who saw this? That chimney leads directly into this room. Ugh, Larry Butts, you've really outdone yourself this time. What were you thinking? In any case, I believe it's high time for me to start my investigation. Larry, there are a few things I need to ask you about. Hey, how about that? I've got a few things I gotta ask you, too. What is it? It's like, both you and him... How is it that the two of you always manage to have some cuter hot girl by your side? And Franzi, what about that promise you made to me? Promise? What promise? The one where you said you would model for my next book, Franzi's Whippity Whip Trip. Thank you. Yow! I made no such promise. Just He's just like an annoying little cousin that, you know, you have to be around sometimes, and you have to be polite to him when you're around your family because... You know, you don't want your family thinking you're a gigantic douchebag, but, like, you don't really want to be around them. You don't ever say that to them, so because you're so nice, they think that you want them around them more often. Be nice to this guy. He has money. Ah! <laughs> now I remember, you're that nude, pale imitation of a real artist. Oh. <laughs> Francisco with the Freudian slip. No, 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 you get it all wrong. I gave up on that whole Larice business. Besides, when Bangelina left me in my heart in pieces, that's when Mindy walked into my life. She'd been so good to me that I wanted to help her in some way. I figured I could throw this two samurai, steel samurai outfit. Your inane, your inane blathering makes less and less sense each time we meet. I believe he's saying that he picked up this part-time job as the steel samurai so that he may attempt to capture the heart of the actress who plays the pink princess. You got it. I knew you'd know what I meant, Edgy. Not really, it's not so much as I understood. But a simple deduction based on your usual modus operandi. Larry, I'd like you to confess right now to everything you did tonight. Confess? Hey, don't tell me you suspect me too. Nonsense, I don't believe you have the mental acuity needed to plan and execute a murder. However, we are talking about you here, so I find it hard to believe that nothing happened. Her past experience has taught me that you are always at the center of some insane event. Edgy, how can you be so mean stabbing me with your words like that? Unfortunately, I don't have the time to search out a key to unlock your heart this time. So I suggest that you cooperate and tell me what you know. Okay, okay, I get it. Just stop Randy from whipping me from behind. So, I guess, you know, what I did, right, Edgy? I can, can't even begin to imagine. However, I imagine whatever, that whatever you were up to was probably beyond my imagination. So you won't tell me exactly what you did, Larry. Nope, not yet, Edgy. It'll take more than that to reach my lips. A lot more! Confess. Now. Oh, Okay, well, I was up on the roof. And why exactly were you up there? Oh, you know, that wintry custom in the legendary hero. Legendary hero? Santa Claus. Santa Claus. <laughs> That's funny. I wanted to do that thing he does, so I climbed up to one of the chimneys. But when I got there, there was smoke pouring out of the chimney. So I went down anyways, because I'm an idiot. And? Well, I couldn't go down the chimney with smoke coming up, right? So I gave up. 
Larry, you do realize that Santa Claus does not exist, right? Of course I know, I did graduate from junior high, you know. Then you should also understand this. If Santa was real, he would be the biggest unlawful trespasser in history. <laughs> is that true? Is that true though? Or is it an implicit invitation to put out milk and cookies for Santa Claus to eat and drink whenever he were to come to your home? I would say that's an invitation. And then, and then, let's say it happens for a few years. I think you could make the argument that Santa Claus then would have a reasonable expectation that he could continue to do so on a yearly basis. Let's not judge the conclusions here, Edgeworth. And so, you have the defense of Santa Claus. Come on, man, what's the wrong with pretending to be Santa? Dude, you can just, like, say your words. You don't have to yell that. Well, let's start with the fact that it will be the Ides of March in a matter of hours. Santa only visits homes on December 24th. That's in December, you nitwit. Um, another debatable point. It is quite possible that he has visited those homes in the wee hours of the 25th. Edgeworth just all over the place with in misinformation right now. No! Hey, wait a sec, you're not in court. We're not in court, fuck you. All right, I think we need more evidence before we can speak to him further. There, was the exact same statue sitting in that Babylon's office we examined. It's the Primaduck statue. It was the national treasure of the Principality of Kadopia. There was only one of these statues, meaning that one of the two is a replica. But both Alabas and Babel claim that to have the real thing. What an incredibly childish fight to have. But I mean, isn't that an issue? Santa is really basing his evaluations off his own, like, subjective judgment, right? And is that really okay? What's bad or good? Who is he to determine that? I think somebody's a little full of himself and his own opinions. I won't rest until I've exposed. Nook and cranny. Now, what am I missing? I won't rest until blah, 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 blah. The seal samurai's primary weapon, the samurai spear. Is it awesome until you fail for this thing? It's sleek and shiny, just like my heart. It comes at you like whoosh. However, speaking of spears, aren't you supposed to use them by thrusting the point straight into your opponent? I'm not entirely convinced this spear is up to the task. What's wrong, Eddie? You stand it there off in the distance. Oh, I get it. Tell you what, I'll tell the studio to make you one, okay? But this one's mine. Did I say anything about wanting one? Maybe I can shut him up if I show him the that piece of evidence that will point something out about the spear. I suspect these are the counterparts of the Battle of these knives. The blades of these knives should match the blade of the knife that killed Mr. Cochin. Well, well, the knives is missing its blade. Let's see if the two pieces, the blade and handle, fit each other. Perfect. It would appear that they fit together quite well, almost seamlessly. And this means that an alabaster knife did find its way into Babel. But how? Larry Butts does not have bad luck. Larry Butts does stupid things to get him into bad situations. If he had never tried to climb down a chimney because he wanted to imitate Santa Claus, he would never be in this situation. Is it still kind of unlucky that stuff unraveled as it did? Yeah, I suppose. But I feel like that's a lot of luck that he created himself. Luck, after all, it's but the residue of design. And his design, tonight at least, was very flawed. Maggie is the one with like legit bad luck. I got hit by a car and then my boyfriend died. And then my Bitcoin stock plunged. I just bought it at 60 grand. <laughs> I don't think I looked at anything over here. I think I just looked at the left side. The person shaking hands with the steel samurai in this picture is Ambassador Alba. It was taken just before the murder. The Steel Samurai must be very popular. They're even using the National Treasure as backdrop. I just don't understand. What exactly is so great about Top Knot there? Top Knot. <laughs> Clearly there is a depth to the story that a young person like you can't fathom. Speaking of young people, aren't young children the target audience of this show of costumed actors? Edwards just says nothing. Leon? Okay, we should probably check out this dead body here. It's just kind of sitting here. Nook and cranny and all that. 
So this was a victim to mask too. He couldn't even go with like dark Damask and like do the same thing, but with a darker color palette or something like that. Or like a, a weird color scheme and calling yourself Neo, Neo Damask. No, he's wearing the exact same stuff and just called himself Damask too. What is with his gaudy outfit? Wow, why are you so offended by it? Are, and are you, are you fucking serious? We both have gaudy outfits. You don't know about Mask Star to Mask. A few months ago, this thief caused a lot of havoc on the populace. So this thief is separate from the Yatagarasu? I thought they were for a while because their MO and targets were different. Your mask likes high value trinkets and jewels and being gaudy is his signature. Gumshu was in charge of that investigation, so he'd know more about the mask. That's all right. All I'd probably hear are tales of his failure anyway. <laughs> Damn, that's that's harsh. You haven't changed a bit, I see. In any case, let's get started here, shall we? Nook and cranny time! Well, this is the murder weapon in this case. Well, alleged murder weapon. There's blood on the blade. It's a rather sweeping sword, isn't it? Why do you say it like that? What did you expect? It's Steel Samurai Daddy's sec secondary weapon. Idiot. I only call it a secondary because although he uses his sword in most of his battles, it's his trusty samurai spear that he turns to in a real fight. Oh, actually, Francisco. <laughs> you sure know quite a bit about the Steel Samurai. That's only because I saw the stage show earlier. I swear. Oh, don't, don't, don't mind this passion. I just thought I really enjoyed the stage show. The owner of the sword is the Steel Samurai, or in other words, Larry. Should probably ask him about it, as detrimental as it is to proving him innocence. What do you have here? What is he holding? Looks like a piece of paper from a notepad. It would appear that directions on how to reach this room were written by hand. Hmm? There is something written on the back as well. I'd like you to steal the Primaduck statue in this room. What is that supposed to mean? Who writes a note to themselves like that? I had to guess from the text. I would say that this is actually a request from someone about what to steal. Just who is the person that requested the theft of the Primaduck statue? Initial guess, it was the other ambassador who realized that his statue was fake. That's also possible that they're both fake. His real identity is an out-of-work guy by the name of Kashino. Is that supposed to be cash no? Because he has no cash. Oh, casino? Okay, that makes sense too. He's 29 and wanted on lot larceny charges. From his clothes and what he was carrying, we determined that this guy is the real Damask II. The cause of death appears to be the loss of blood from the back of his head. It seems that he was struck with something very hard. In other words, he was bludgeoned to death. Larry, about the samurai sword that was used as the murder weapon. Oh, that. <laughs> well, sucks, sucks, doesn't it? <laughs> well, I shook hands with the ambassador in his room, you know. Yes, apparently you did. Yeah, well, I totally forgot about it and left it behind when I left afterwards. You had to talk about shock. I was the most shocked of all when I heard it killed someone. Oh, shocked! Foolish fool looking especially foolish for foolishly stating such a foolish excuse. You forgot to take something that big with you? Who would believe such a tale? Sorry, Miss Von Karma, but I believe him. Because if anyone could forget something like that, it would be Larry. Edgy, you believe me? I just knew that our friendship is so special. Mm. Two gorgeous flowers are in full bloom here. I'm sure flowers as lovely as these must have an equally as lovely name. Miles Edgeworth, are you done staring? I should hardly think passion flowers are all the rare, all that rare. Passion flowers? That's a rather unusual name. It was named by priests in the 15th century from, for the passion of Christ. Uh, wow, really? Hmm, as they say, you learn something new every day. Indeed. This seems like a reach. That's a reach. It's not entirely wrong, just a reach. Cause like, Edgeworth even mentions that it's bent. 
well, he doesn't say specifically that it's bent, but he says it looks like it's seen better days, telling me that he already notices that this is a problem, so then why would you have to then actually... Okay, whatever. I thought there was something strange about this spear. Tell me, Larry, is it just me, or is the spear a bit bent? What? No way, it's exactly as it should be, yo. Don't ever call me yo again. I have here the autograph you wrote for me earlier. Clearly here, the spear was not bent, thus... This spear was not bent when you had it. That is just rock solid evidence. It wasn't bent and now it is. No, you guys understand why this is dumb, right? Now take a good look at this which you drew with your own hands. You can see that the spear is clearly of a different shape. Cause what he drew is binding to anything. I mean, I, like duh, that's a spear, right? But like, again, it's so duh. Why would you even fucking need to, okay. What do you have to say to that? Smarty pants. I'm sorry, I should have drawn it better in the first place. This isn't really a good representation of what the spear actually looks like. When I hold the spear in my hand, all of a sudden I feel super powerful. And then during practice, I was spinning it around and around, and bam, it hit the wall. You unbelievable! This is an embassy! You know, it's funny because she's right, and I would actually expect Francisca to act like this, but it's funny that she's like, how dare you swing a spear around and hit it against a wall in an international embassy? Also, how dare you use a whip to batter a judge in a courtroom? <laughs> That's arguably worse. Samurai spear is made of metal. I somehow doubt that a move as simple as spinning it around would cause it to bend. Man, Edgy, you're so naive. What? Where did that come from? Well, you keep calling it the samurai spear, but it's not real. You can't really fight someone with it because it's hollow on the inside. You could hit it against practically anything and it would bend. Is, is, is that so? Yeah, I knew that. I honestly can't believe that he's just like... <laughs> You have this, like, titanium metal adamantium spear. There's no way it would bend. And it's obviously so, because that's what they say in the show. Uh, Edgy, I, uh, have some bad news for you. His hopes and dreams have been dashed. Don't tell me you thought it was real. <laughs> but don't take it the wrong way. I just think that part of your personality is cute. Oh. Is there anything worse as Miles Edgeworth than to have Larry Butts refer to part of your personality as cute. I wouldn't be surprised if Edgeworth just walked off the scene here. He's like, I'm done. I can't be a prosecutor anymore. I, my life is over. I see, your friendship truly is something special, Miles Edgeworth. Oh, that's not friendship. It's utter humiliation. Yeah. Utter humiliation has been added to your organizer. Hey, it's an official steel samurai weapon. Oh, what? You want me to do it? Oh, you have no idea how many fans asked that of me. What are you prattling on about? Do samurai sushi slice. How is that? I bet it sent shivers up your spine. Ah! I let myself get caught up in being a spectator. How could I have failed myself? <laughs> This is why Edgeworth is like, definitely has the potential to be a better protagonist than Phoenix. I think Edgeworth has a much stronger personality than Phoenix, so when shit like this happens, it's way funnier. Look at this photo and tell me what you find odd about this scene, Miss Von Karma. The apparent joy on the ambassador's face as he shakes that top knot's hand. Wow, she's savage. That's not it. I was trying to point out that the statue in the photo is facing a different way. You're right. This statue is a national treasure. As such, only an ambassador or secretariat level person is allowed to handle it. The fact that the statue is facing one way in this photo, and now it's facing a different direction in this preserved crime scene, is proof that someone touched this statue around the time of the crime. Not only touched it, but moved it entirely. I tried to show that before, and I guess I just didn't do it the right way, and then I died. Hmm, I guess that about wraps up my investigation. Hmm, that's... Yo, Pink Princess, how you feeling? Still feeling ill? Hey, 
and yet another strange character comes out of the woodwork. And so the Pink Princess also comes to pay the Alabastian Embassy a visit. I believe I may need to speak with her as well. Miss Pink Princess, if it... Jesus fucking, are you kidding me? I don't think I've done this since the Danganronpa playthrough. I'll give the game credit. Did not see that coming. Using her a second time. And isn't Larry like into her? He is, isn't he? Couldn't have known. He just, he couldn't have known. None of us could have known. That's, that's just how she is. God damn it. Hey, this must be with a coffee. Fuck you. Don't you dare suggest that I'm fated to always run into you. How could this happen two days in a row? What the? Are you, aren't you Miss Opeg? Why are you so surprised? I ah, so you're the one that got to play this new samurai. It's too bad I didn't realize that until now. You are acquaintances with Larry? Yeah, didn't he work for her? Well, yeah, she worked at the same company for a little while, you know? That's why it's okay, my edgy poo. You don't need to be jealous. Ugh! I was in the next room, you know, trying to get in some beautiful sleep. But it was so noisy in here that I couldn't fall asleep. So I came over to complain. So imagine my shock when I saw my precious Ezzy Poo waiting here for me. I mean, who could have imagined you'd ever come in a show like this? I guess I mis I've misjudged you, Ezzy Poo. You misjudged him? I thought he was trying to avoid me, you know. There was no misjudgment on your part. That was precisely what I was trying to do. Looks like the winds have shifted and he's now willing to be chased after. I'm simply overwhelmed. Don't you worry, Edgy Poo. I'd chase you forever to the edge of the earth. Isn't that just peachy? This is one of those rare times in Francisca and I actually see eye to eye. Yeah, is, th is this the case where she's finally the killer? And we get to lock her up? So basically, you received the stand-in request th this morning, correct? You've got it if you need to see it. I've got it right here. Look. It appears that she is telling the truth. I tell you, my fine acting moved the entire audience to tears. As tears of laughter, as I recall. Being famous has its problems too, you know. Here, take a look at this. It's a letter from a stalker. I was just taking my break when I found this stuck under the door to my room. Wendy, I'll be descending on you from above tonight. Your loving night. Honestly, you really have to watch out for these kinds of things. Look at what it says. I mean, you think you could get my name right. There's no accent in my name. Wait, this horrible handwriting. Where am I seeing this before? Oh, but now that you're here, Edgy Poo, I feel 100% safe. Ugh. I... Where do I factor into this? You must that evil stalker man for my sake, wouldn't you, Edgy Poo? Well, if you allow me the liberty to handle this on my, in my own way, I'll gladly dispatch a detective to your house later. Oh, come on, Edgy Poo, stop being so dismissive and playing hard to get. Francisca's unusually muted. After the show was over, I had nothing but free time on my hands. So I used the fireplace in the room next door to keep my bad hip warm. So Larry wanted to descend from above upon her. So that's the room he was in, not this room. Well, but he was still in this room, right? Well, a murder occurred in the room right next to yours. Is that right? Oh, Edgy Poo, I'm so scared. Hold me, caress me. Thank you. If you could please not cling on to my personage. Edgeworth single-handedly does make me want to use the word personage a lot more. In any case, I take it then that you failed to show up at Ambassador Alba's speech? Oh, that. No, I didn't go. I mean, I may have the heart of a young, tender maiden, but my body just refuses to cooperate at times. As soon as the show ended, my hips started acting up and got stiff. Couldn't move at all. Can you provide proof of your condition? Oh, you just go ahead and ask the doctors in the infirmary. They're the ones who carried me from the theater all the way to the embassy. Well, you see, there's something called HIPAA. And I can't just go around getting your information without your consents. I have to admit, the thought of her not being able to leave that room is rather pleasant. Ah, uh, Prosecutor Von Karma. I brought the police dog as you requested, sir. Oh, look at the little doggy. Look at the little doge. Good work. You may leave now, officer. Hmm, this doge. I requested the assistance of a doge in our search for the Yatagarasu. Why are you all calling it doge? It's clearly a dog. Whatever. Looks like you guys have some pretty bright dogs in this country, too. 
Hey, you're a real cute cutie, aren't you? Yeah, that's a good boy. That's a police dog Gumshoe's been taking care of. I think its name is Missile. What a fitting name for a police doge that dashes out in front of t and attacks. That action alone isn't exactly what's going to solve this case for us, you know? Now, Missile, I want you to find some clues. Go! Wow. That was efficient. Good dog. You really are quite bright, aren't you? Unlike a certain someone I know. Now, what do we have here? What is this? It looks like a small hot dog, but... Mm, wait, Francisca, isn't that an official, uh, an official samurai dog? <laughs> ah, no bad missile. He ate it. <laughs> I wonder if it's all right for him to eat that. If it's sitting in the fireplace? I can't imagine that's great for it. It's just a meat substance snack featuring the steel samurai. I'm sure it'll be fine. That's quite a bit of information you gathered there in a single, single quick glance. We should really be focusing on why there was a samurai dog there in the first place. It looks like that snack was an all-missile found. How do you carry all that dress in his mouth? Oh, what do we have here? It appears to be a lady's undershirt. I wonder if Ambassador Alba might have an interest in cross-dressing. I somehow doubt that. It doesn't look like the shirt would even fit him. Samurai dog in a lady's undershirt. What are these two items doing in a room like this? Given the circumstances, the lady's undershirt can only belong to one person. I suppose I should get this over with and ask the owner of said undershirt about it. The shirt was found here at the crime scene. What? Come now, why don't you just confess and explain what it's doing here? I know nothing. Nothing, I tell you. What? Oh, I admit that I used the fireplace to dry that shirt. But I can't really help the fact that I had to, you know. Wearing that pink princess costume is like being in a sauna. And on top of that, I get, I get fingered as a suspect? You're too cruel, Edgy Poo. Are you claiming that you never once set foot inside this room? Of course I am. I have been the one to find the body. Do you think I'd be as calm and as relaxed as I am? I tell you, it's always like this tablet article. Missy, Cameron's missing. They're missing. Speaking of missing, it's a matter of when we get married. He said, I'm going to propose to what? It'd be done. I deserve you, but I can't help it. Will you marry me, honestly, men these days? Um, well, I don't believe she's lying about her actions. I can safely assume she really was drying her shirt by the fireplace on her break. And somehow the undershirt managed to move from the next room into this one. Or maybe the room moved! I assume the samurai dong was also yours? Uh, that really a mind of yours? You really can't see through everything about me. Studio Bigwigs basically told us to play delivery boys. We were supposed to hand the dogs off to the embassy people and tell them hi. I had to pile them all into the push cart just to move them all. Those studio guys should have delivered those things by themselves. Right, Edgy? So did you deliver the samurai dogs to the embassy staff as per your instructions? Hey, Edgy, don't just ignore me in my question. Aren't you going to stick up for me? How oh, about that? See, after the show, I went to rest the spell in the dressing room because of my bad hip, you know. And there were the samurai dogs just sitting there on the dressing room floor. I suppose you had to make preparations for distributing them after the show. But if by preparation you mean sampling them as well... Excuse me? Oh, I tried one and thought, hey, these, they're actually quite good. Sorry, but I just had to find out. I know it was silly of me to think this, but I figured that since they're for a kid's show, the taste is probably for kids too. They were so good that I couldn't stop. Before I went back to my room, I just had to help myself to a half dozen or so boxes. As I sat there by the roaring fire warming them and eating them, I thought, ah, this is... Hmm. <laughs> What is it now? Oh yeah, I know. Bet you want a box too, don't you, my Edgypoo? Well, who am I to say no to you? But I only give you one. The rest are all for me. Looks like the lesson for today is that when the Steel Samurai and the Pink Princess take off their masks, they transform into a pair of annoying troublemakers. There is no trace of this room's fireplace being used. And your point is? Uh, the smoke was supposedly pouring out of the chimney connected to the fireplace. At least according to Larry. This is a contradiction of facts, is it not? Are you sure he wasn't just disoriented or something on that roof? There is testimony from an investigator that puts Larry at this particular chimney. 
So no, I don't think it was a mistaken impression on Larry's part. On the other hand, the fireplace in the next room was being used at the time. Where do you suppose the smoke from that fireplace was? Ah, I see. So what you are proposing is this. The smoke that came out of the chimney was actually from Miss Oldbag's fire. So basically, the fireplaces of the neighboring rooms share one chimney. Is that what you are implying? Precisely. The lady's undershirt that missile found. Ah! Why are you getting all excited over holding on to a lady's undergarment? It's a shirt, Jesus Christ. Miles Edgeworth, you uncouth sea slug. If you know the owner of said undershirt, then hurry up and return it to her already. You have it all wrong, this is evidence. The owner of this piece of evidence was in the room next door. And yet despite that, Missile found it in the fireplace of this room. This lady's undershirt. Are you seriously claiming that it somehow passed through a solid brick wall? Not quite. The fireplace in this room is connected to a chimney. The other fireplace in the other room is also connected to the same chimney, leading us to the possibility that the two fireplaces are connected to each other. Perhaps a closer look at the back of the fireplace is in order. Let's see if I can't get a better look at it. What the? The wall separating this room's fireplace from next door's fireplace apparently turns. As I suspected, this fireplace does indeed connect this room to the neighboring room. Why would it need to turn, though? The neighboring room. There appears to be nothing particular about the next room. The fact that there is nothing special about the next room isn't what's important. The fact that there is a secret passageway through the room's fireplace. We now know that the fireplace connects the two rooms, but how exactly is that significant? I guess we're supposed to have emotional attachment to Larry being accused, but I don't. That's a big problem. I was motivated in the prior room to get K cleared. I mean, some of some of Larry's stuff's kind of funny, but I don't find Old Bag funny. What the funniest shit about Old Bag's actually Francisca's reaction to her. How muted and subdued she is is like creepy. Like, what the fuck's going on? You aren't going to suddenly name the old lady as Damask the second's killer now, are you? No, she couldn't move at all because of her stiff hip. No, she could not have been the one. Unfortunately, I believe that this fireplace has nothing whatsoever to do with Mass the Second's the Mass the Second's murder. You're making quite a confident face there, Mr. Prosecutor. Bring it on. I'm ready to counter any argument you may have. Very well then, if you are prepared, I'll show you exactly where my deductions have led me. Good, I'm counting on you, Edgy. Leave it to me, Larry. My first attack will be to expose your lie for what it really is. My lie? I know that there is still something you are keeping from the rest of us. What's wrong with you? Why is it you won't believe me no matter what I say, Edgy? Curse you. I should just hurry up and die already if that's how it's gonna be. Oh god. Fucking get over yourself. I'll convince every murder in the whole world and then kill myself. God damn, dude. And then throw everything into mass confusion. Hey, you made some wonderful friends as a child, I see. Mary, I only have one thing to say to you. Even if you make that face at me, it's no use. What, that face? You've managed way to die a strong will, you know. Mary, it doesn't matter what sort of harebrained trouble you cause. I only ask that you do not lie to me. If you cause an innocent person to be judged unfairly because of some insipid lie, I will never forgive you. Edgy. Although, allow me to say that I consider you to be among the innocents in this case, and that I will draw the real killer out. You can trust me on this. All right, I, I, this time, this time I'll tell the whole truth, okay? What happened, what didn't happen, the works. Just what happened will do. Now then, if you would please testify as to what you did up on the roof tonight. Oh, God. After the show, I left the push cart in the Rose Garden and came to the embassy. Then they took a picture of me shaking hands with the ambassador. After that, and until my next appearance, I had some free time. So I wandered around. That's when I spotted a chimney. A chimney like that is a rare thing, you know. And then I wanted to play, I wanted to play Santa and decided to give it a try. Larry, I thought I'd just finished telling you to not lie anymore. Um, but it's kind of ultra embarrassing. You're just gonna have to reason it out of me. Why? You're literal. Oh my god. Or I could not, and you can just go to jail for murder, you fucking idiots. Hold it. You suddenly wanted to play Santa? 
Oh, well, actually, I dressed up in Santa once before already. That was down at Gord Lake. Ugh. I'd appreciate it if you wouldn't dredge up such unnecessary memories for me. It sounds like you guys share a lot of history. A perk to being childhood friends, huh? Besides, it's not a felony to dress up and play Santa, you know? Santa doesn't go around killing people after he comes down a family's chimney, after all. Actually, is it worth delving into whether or not playing Santa is a big deal? Actually, I believe in the, this, the case of this man, playing Santa is actually quite a big deal. Are you saying that your buddy isn't exactly made of Santa quality stuff? Precisely. You hit the nail on the head, Agent Long. The Agent did do incredibly mean. Tell me something, Larry. Do you know that Santa's job is to, live, to deliver presents to people all over the world? Of course I know that. I did graduate from junior high, you know. In that case, it's your turn to tell me something. I want you to tell me to whom you were delivering a present to. I was uh, delivering a present to a child not basking in the glow of love. That must be the most elegant description of you I've ever heard, but a lie is still a lie. You sure know how to kick a guy when he's down, you know that? In any case, the person you wish to deliver a present unto was most certainly this. <laughs> Interesting taste you have there, Mr. Suspect. Don't spread lies about me. I totally didn't want to see this old bag so much that I tried to go down a chimney. Ow! I'd advise you to stop right there in your bashing of a lady. Well, I must admit that I myself hardly ever have ever have the want to run into that lady. However, what if you are misinformed and under the wrong impression, then what? Define wrong impression. I simply mean that the man before you thought to enter the old lady's room without knowing one very important fact. And that fact is best summed up with this. Oh, that's right. I completely forgot we had this. This is something the old lady received from her employer for the night. The girl who normally plays the pink princess, Mindy, was it again? Seems that this man is quite taken with that actress. But that's not true, Edgy. He's the one with the hots for me. I just know it. Like, oh God. I can feel her sexy beam piercing my heart when she's watching me. Sexy beam, I tell you. You filthy, despicable, inconsiderate, fickle, idiotic, cowardly apparition of a man. You haven't matured at all since we last met. Hey, Mr. Prosecutor. Yes? This guy. He's got bigger problems than just getting involved in murders, I take it. I suppose you could put it that way. Hey, what the heck, man? I don't get you guys at all. Why do you all have to make me out to be some sort of bad guy? To return to the original topic, I propose that at least this much has been made clear. Without any knowledge that Miss Mindy had fallen ill, Larry tried to make his way into the Pink Princess's room. That much we know for sure. Hey, Edgy, looks like I've got the hang of this court thing now. Well, we're not in court at the moment. Shut up! I see what's going on here. It looks just like what you do in court. All right, then get ready to listen to me defeat Edgy in a battle of wits. Larry, have you forgotten that I sh should I lose your victory prize will be your arrest? Yeah, Jesus. What? Why? Do you think that all I wanted to do was go to go visit Mindy? Well, I dressed up as Santa and climbed up to the chimney. The smoke is really thick. You have to cause a mistaken identity, and that mistake may be late for the speech. Then, to top it all off, I became a suspect in murder. That's what you really meant. Why would I ever put myself through so much humiliation on purpose? So it was you! You're my stalker! But I should warn you, it doesn't matter what kind of flattery you throw at me. I'm the devoted type of woman who's wholly focused on one man. As long as Edgypoo's alive, I can't just drop and be unfaithful. No, I can't. Earlier, I was tempted just to love my dear Edgypoo, which I stay completely true to my beloved Edgypoo. Uh -huh, I'm, I'm so inspired. You're such an inconsiderate, cowardly, idiotic, and all-around completely worthless man. Larry, don't even think about denying that you have knowledge of this letter. <laughs> hey, why are you showing that thing to me? Wendy, I'll be descending on you from above tonight, your loving knight. Well, isn't that just romantic? But you weren't able to descend on her from above, were you, Mr. Loving Knight? Ah, I have no idea what you're talking about. I don't remember a thing. You can pretend to be ignorant all you like, but it's written right here. This letter proves that you are not out to meet the old lady, but rather that you were attempting to pay Miss Mindy a visit. One part of this letter shows that the person Larry had intended to meet. 
Mary, I suggest you take up penmanship lessons. That is, if you never wish to experience this level of embarrassment ever again. What the heck? What are you talking about? Speak English. You wrote Mindy so sloppily that it became Wendy to the average eye. Hey, stop picking at me. It's so embarrassing. There, there. Isn't that what childhood friends are for? They're the best, aren't they? We're punching. But that will have to wait until we're off of this crime scene. It's a fake. Someone just get me. So they made me fake that letter. It's a shimmy up. Accept your defeat graciously. But you guys are being so mean. Penmanship analysis. Which that? No matter who, all people have certain unique features to their handwriting. Ergo, all we have to do is compare the handwriting in this letter to a sample of yours. And we'll know soon enough who it was that sent this letter. I, I, I'll never write another stick in my life. Tsk, tsk, tsk. It's no use, Mr. Loving Knight. For you've already graciously provided me with a sample of your handwriting. Take that! This autograph and our mysterious letter. If we compare the handwriting, we'll know the answer to our question soon enough. <laughs> Confess now, Larry, to your miserable failure. I'm sorry! I did it. It was me causing trouble again. I admit it. You hit the nail right on the head, Edgy. So he finally confesses. I saw the pink prince princess being carried around in a stretcher and got worried, all right? I wanted to go into Mindy's room, but the doctors wouldn't let me in. So what choice did I have? It was a chimney or bust, Edgy. Your mind jumped from the door to the chimney? What a criminal overactive and... <laughs> what a criminally overactive imagination. <laughs> nice. Larry, you may be a shameful good-for-nothing blight on the face of humanity. However, I always knew you weren't the killer. Dude, this is a... This is a sick rap beat. I told you to trust me, because at the very least I can attest to that about you. Edgy, you're... Ah! We've lost a, a lot of valuable time because of you. Yeah, you get him, Franny. Ow! In any case, I believe we can say that we now know exactly what happened. Mr. Larry Butts sought to climb down the chimney, not for access to the crime scene, but to enter the room of the elderly lady next door. Great job, Mr. Prosecutor, although I still find it a bit unbelievable that two of you are friends. But the suspicion on that guy over there isn't completely resolved yet, so don't get any funny ideas about running off, okay? Oh? Hey, what? Edgy, what does the Wolfman mean when he says I'm not off the hook yet? He may have figured out where he was and what he was doing all night, but the bloodstained samurai sword that was left at the crime scene... As long as there is no satisfactory explanation for that. This wolf will refuse to ease up on his bite. <laughs> now, Mr. Prosecutor, let's see what you've got. I can easily point out the contradiction in this in the supposed murder weapon, but the real problem for me is figuring out what the real murder weapon is. This will be a high-stakes gamble. But this is one game I can't afford to lose. I was the one who found the body of the victim, Damas II. Beside him, beside him was the samurai sword, glittering red and offering up the scent of blood. It was supposed to be in the steel samurai's dressing room, but I found it here instead. Plus, I found the murder weapon's owner. This is suspect Larry Butts in here, too. Isn't it a bit far-fetched to accuse someone simply on the basis of ownership? But this owner wanted to sneak onto the crime scene. I think that's plenty to go on, don't you? If you're alluding to his reason for being by the chimney, we've already established that. Hold on there, Mr. Prosecutor. You two are longtime friends, right? Who's to say you didn't fabricate the evidence to give him an alibi? You're accusing me of fabricating evidence? Think I can believe anything you produce? Forging evidence is all you prosecutors do. Ironic, considering that... Police and detectives get accused of the very same thing quite often. I sense his hatred for my entire profession emanating from his entire being, meaning that the only way I can prove Larry's innocence is to present irrefutable evidence. Hold it. Excuse me, but glittering red and offering up the sense of blood? Do I have to spell it out for you? I mean the sight and smell of blood, of course. According to the test, the blood on the sword belonged to the victim. The sword was made to only be used on stage, so it's not sharp. But it's pretty weighty. It's certainly heavy enough to beat someone to death with. Which leads me to suspect that the victim was beaten to death with the sword. Beaten to death, huh? This last statement is too important to just let it slip by.
Mom, the samurai sword. Have you received a report from forensics yet? They confirmed that the blood on the sword belongs to the victim. All right, but have they confirmed that the outline of his wound is consistent with the weapon? Tell me something. Do you see the dead body right there in front of you? So, if they con were conducting the autopsy right now, shouldn't that body not be here? Well, <laughs> I suppose so. I guess they must still be investigating this room. Meaning that it's possible he doesn't know about that piece of evidence his true nature. Anything else you'd like to chit-chat about? No? Good. Let's continue. Just because he's the owner of the weapon, therefore he must be the killer, is it? No, climbing all the way up to the chimney is plenty suspicious in my book, book as well. Regarding that, I have already drawn the truth out, and the truth is one thing I don't bend. Doesn't matter if it's you or whoever, you prosecutors are all the same. As for me, prosecutors are the one thing I don't trust in. Is that meaning to be your entire argument, that because I'm saying it, and you're, you have a flawed premise that prosecutors are lying, therefore I must be lying? That's a bad argument. Agent who doesn't trust prosecutors, what are you playing at? Sorry, sis, but there are only two things I trust my subordinate. I trust my subordinates and evidence of the crime scene. Angel Long hates prosecutors, but as long as he trusts evidence that has been left at the crime scene, there is something I can show him that he can believe in. Simply not possible that Samurai Sword is the real murder weapon. We should focus on proving that point to Agent Long first. Objection! Do you know what this is, Agent Long? It's a long spear, right? We used to we used to use those a lot in my country a long time ago. Piercing moving people down. Piercing mowing people down. Spears are the weapon of heroes throughout history. It's the next most effective weapon after the whip. I think the whip is in a slightly different category. So what's your point? Are you going to tell me that the spear is the real weapon? No, I simply want you to take a look at this section here. The way it's bent? Precisely. Apparently a certain troublemaker hit it against the wall in the embassy earlier. And you can clearly see the inside of the steel samurai's weapons are hollow. In other words, they're replicas that aren't strong enough to deliver a damaging blow. Let alone the multiple strikes necessary to bludgeon someone to death. And yet, there is not even a dent in the samurai sword. How do you explain that? Yeah! Ayah! This is where the real gamble begins. I don't have a real strategy, per se. But all I can do now is let the chips fall where they may. Using guesswork and taking risks in place of real logic is hardly the Von Karma way. It's neither smart nor very clever. Miss Von Karma, as you know, unlike your father, I am not a genius prosecutor. Plus, I doubt his record of a 40-year win streak will ever be broken, especially considering he cheated for most of those. Well, for some amount, at least, making it illegitimate. At best, there is an asterisk next to it, like Barry Bonds' home run record, or perhaps it is for the best if it remains unbroken, for no one should have conceived of the notion to convict all defendants in the first place. What a foolishly foolish statement from a foolish fool who hates to lose. It's the job of a prosecutor to make sure that all defendants are found guilty in court. No. It's the job of prosecutors to make sure that the guilty are found guilty in court. There is nothing more important in this world than a perfect victory. That may be your opinion, however, I don't believe that's all we are. Oh, he definitely cheated in his world record speedruns. For real. 100%. As a prosecutor, I, what I pursue is not the perfect victory, but the perfect truth. And if that means that the bridge I must cross will crumble beneath my feet, then let it crumble as I walk on towards the truth. That was... well said. Well said. You're good at keeping me entertained, Mr. Prosecutor. But you know, humans are de delicate creatures. The slide is bump and we expire. I'd like you to consider, if you will, the possibility that the sword was used in such a way that the attack killed Damask the second without bending it. So what do you think of my hypothetical scenario? I think you know what to do here, right? And what you need. Of course, what I need is evidence even Agent Long can't refute. This is it. It's time to bring this to a close. It's possible to use the samurai sword to kill someone. And under these circumstances, it's the only logical conclusion. We searched the embassy, top to bottom, but the victim's blood is only on that weapon. So isn't it only natural that suspicion would fall onto the owner of said weapon? 
How long do you intend to cling on to that preposterous theory? As long as I want, because we examined every corner within the walls of this embassy. There's no stone we've left unturned, and we managed to come up with only one logical conclusion. That the only place inside the embassy with the victim's blood on it is this sword. You left no stone unturned? Is that a fact? If you got something to say, then say it in the only way I respect, Mr. Prosecutor. Yes, of course. In that case, allow me to make it all crystal clear to you. I will say, uh, Long's, uh, reasoning and argument skills in this case are significantly improved over the last case. Like, I totally get why he believes what he believes here. It's pos quite possible that Gumshoe always remains an idiot. You would think he would start showing some amount of competency at his job just based on experience, though, right? Like, he's had character development, but it's been more like, oh, you just learn more about him, and you see more sides of him, as opposed to progression. You don't really see any progression in his abilities. You see progression in his salary being cut. Yep. Hold it. The only place that you could find blood was on the samurai sword? That's right. Even with Luminol. Which means that there are no other possibilities outside of what I've already outlined. Do I have a problem with Agent Ling's assertion, assertion that the samurai sword is the weapon? You believe that there is no other door possibility left to open? Then allow me to force one open for you. Hmm, but how do you plan to do that? By showing you what may possibly be the real murder weapon. <laughs> the real murder weapon? I hate to repeat myself, but my men have already searched every last inch of this embassy, and they've concluded that nothing else could have been used as the murder weapon. Knowing these facts, do you still want to press forward with your little hypothesis? Of course, because it's not possible that your men inspected everything in their investigation. What are you talking about? I don't appreciate my games, and I don't appreciate it when people like you slander my men. I'm not slandering them, I assure you. I'm only pointing out that Investigative Dragnet has a few holes in it. Namely, that there is something your men couldn't even lay a finger on. And that item is the real murder weapon. Alright then, I'll play along for now. This real murder weapon that killed the mass too. What exactly is it? The real murder weapon with which not a single person is yet to touch is this. The National Treasure of Alabast. You mean the Primaduck statue? Yes, and as you know, only the ambassador and his secretariat may touch it. Which, I believe, means that neither you nor your men were able to examine it, correct? <laughs> you know very well that if we did that, there'd be an international incident between the Kingdom of Alabast and the Republic of Bilal. The two countries' pre precarious relationship teeters in the balance over a stupid fight related to a sovereignty statue. But I'll be damned if I let something go unexamined. Agent Long, if you could take a look at this. The direction the statue is facing just before and after the crime are different. There is only one conclusion I can draw from that. Go look for Ambassador Alba and get him to give us the okay to examine the statue. Shifu, you cannot listen to the, this infidel's words. He is most definitely trying to trick you. Shifu, please, let's be rational about this. Ugh. Long, she says. Just go already. Yeah, yes, sir. Shifu. Yeah. I'm really sorry, sir, but I was unable to convince the ambassador. I was unable to obtain permission for us to examine the Primadex statue. I see. Wait! But then the investigation is at a standstill. Agent Long, I will go and speak with the ambassador personally. Save your breath. You may act all weak and frail, but that old man is one tough cookie. But I guess you gotta be tough when you represent the whole country, you know? Agent Long? What do you want? Let's just hurry up and examine the statue. Well, but Shifu, what about causing an international incident? Quiet. I'll take the fall if I have to later. Agent Long, the hypothesis is mine, so if someone is to take respons the responsibility, let it be me. Responsibility? If we're going to talk in such heavy terms, maybe I should let you. It'd be a real problem for my men if something were to happen to me. Alright then, let's talk in more investigating. We want to know the truth, we can't stop here. Action must be taken. Agent Long, I'd like you to run a luminol chemiluminescence test on the statue. A luminol test? Ah, uh, good thinking. The statue is the murder weapon, then some of the victim's blood should be on it. Okay, let's get the forensic team in here. Hey, looks like you hit the jackpot, Mr. Prosecutor. I guess this means that the real 
weapon with that killed Ma Damas too? Indeed, but I wouldn't celebrate yet if I were you. This doesn't let your friend off the hook. It doesn't prove that he didn't kill Damas too. So the charge remains. We are hardly done examining the statue, Agent Lung. Knowing that it is the real weapon, I believe further examination is required. Ah, uh, you think so? Okay, then knock yourself out. Ugh. What do we have here? This dirty smudge. It's, looks like a handprint? <laughs> What's a definitive bit of evidence like you doing under here? Looks like we've got some fingerprints to analyze. Ugh. Worst case scenario, these prints belong with Larry. But it looks like it's too late for me to do anything about that now. Hey, forensics guy, I want results on these fingerprints ASAP, you hear me? Agent Long, I, I, ha I have the analysis results, sir. Good, and Sir, about the prints we lifted from the bottom of the statue, well, um, you know the victim of the murder in the Babylese embassy? The prints belong to him, Mr. Manny Cochin, sir. That's... What's going on around here? No, that's impossible. Each Primadoc statue can only be handled by someone of that country. But by the very fact that Mr. Cochin's fingerprints are on this one, it leads me to only one conclusion. This statue is actually Babao's Primadoc statue. Impossible, it can't be. Who called that like three hours ago? Ah, yeah. Larry never once set foot on Babylon's soil, so he was free to go. However, this new piece of information only served to confuse us even further. The ring leader of a smuggling operation was killed with an Alabastian knife in Babal, and Damas II was killed on Alabastian soil with Babal's national treasure, and the mystery of the great thief Yata Garasu, who visited both countries. The pieces were there, but I had yet to see the big picture they were to bring with something. The big picture. I have left the Damas II investigation to Francisca and returned to Babal. I suppose my first order of business should be to look into Babal's statue. Mr. Edgeworth! It's okay, what's the situation? Oh, it's great! Investigating is so much fun! Sarcasm. <laughs> In other words, they've made absolutely no progress. We weren't goofing off. Honest, sir. We've been investigating our hearts out. Very well, then. Would you care to give me an update on your investigation? Um... Oh, we've had a really fun time, sir! I knew it. Zero progress. In any case, Detective Gumshoe. Yes, sir? You have permission to enter the Alabastian Embassy, is that correct? Yup. As a local detective, I'm helping out with investigations on both sides, sir. Good. In that case, I can leave these pieces of evidence with you. If I happen to run into her, I'll give them back to her. And if I don't, then I guess I'll unload them somewhere. Doesn't seem all that enthused to go find her, but I can't blame him. Evidence that has lost their value given to Detective Gumshoe. Now then, I don't believe I'll be needing this anymore either. What? Are you really gonna th throw that autograph away? Yes, because the Steel Samurai was a fake. Wait, what? What do you mean by fake? Now then, I believe it's time for a little housekeeping. Ah, oh, so you're back now, are you, Mr. Edgeworth? You must be tired here. With these, you can eat whatever you'd like. And these are, oh god, coupon. Discount tickets for our cafeteria. They open tomorrow at 10 in the morning. That doesn't really help for me right now. I really pre I appreciate the concern. However, these coupons do nothing for me right now. This open-air stage, what function does it serve exactly? Well, normally we use it for a variety of events. It's all to attract that extra bit of attention to Babao. Heard that tonight over in the Alabastian Rose Garden? Ambassador Alba wants to give a speech. And you know what? Manny told me that I really should give a speech too. Mr. Cochin told you that? Yes, he did. Which is why I thought I should give a speech of my own. But unfortunately, I wasn't able to because of the fire the Antigaransu started. Exactly. Well, the Primarch statue belonged to the founders of Kidopia. At least, that's how the story goes. It was bequeathed unto the king of Kidopia as a symbol of the country's wealth. It was meant as a symbol of sovereignty and the right to rule, I take it. Yes, that's right, which is why both countries are so adamant about their claim. We hold the real statue, therefore we hold the right to rule, is the reasoning. It's pretty petty when you think about it, though, I suppose. But if Alabas and Babal were to re-establish relations, wouldn't that put an end to the squabbling over the statue? I have no reason to believe so. Primark's like statue is even more important now as a key to diplomacy. I wonder if Ambassador Polano knows about what has happened to the very important key to diplomacy. 
I'm just gonna try showing him this key and see what he has to say about it. Manny Cochin, I'd like to ask you about this man who was your secretary. Sure, I'll tell you what I know. Thank you for your cooperation, Ambassador. He was, well, if I had to put it in one word, he was an able man. If there was ever anything I needed as an ambassador, he was able to get it for me. To think that a man like that had a hand in a smuggling ring right under my nose, going completely unnoticed. Actually, I suppose because he was an able man, I was able, unable to detect his dirty dealings. It sounds like Mr. Cochin had a very sharp mind. Recently, Manny had been really busy. Since I became the Babylese representative at the, con count the Country Unification Council, he'd been working tirelessly to cover my work for me. I'm sorry, but what is this Country Unification Council? Oh, well, you see, had tonight's events proceeded without a hitch, our two countries were to reunify and become one again. But I guess with how things turned out, that dream won't be realized anytime soon. I suppose not. Ambassador Polano, if you could please take a look at this for me. The Primax statue sitting in Alabaster right now actually belongs to Baba. So it would appear I received a call from Miss Von Kummer about this earlier. And you understand why I wish to inspect Babal's Primax statue immediately. Because the statue currently in your country's possession. Yes, well, I've already inspected it myself. It is definitely Alabaster's statue. I know because it's the real statue. And you're saying that Babal's is a replica? I'm embarrassed to say it's true, even though I knew that someday it would be exposed. I received my orders from the leaders of Babal, and I was to negotiate with Ambassador Alba at this event. I was to negotiate with him and fix the results of the evaluation tonight, to say that we could not determine which statue was the real one. Why are you telling me this? Well, because you already figured it out. Our statue is just a hollow gold shell. Even if Babal were to lose face, the reunification of the country is what's important. I'm right in thinking that, aren't I? I'm not making a mistake, right? If you don't know yourself, then I won't pretend to know either. I never thought by being betrayed by my own secretary the real symbol of wealth would be given to me. Isn't that simply ironic? Hmm, a ladder. Actually, that's a step- <laughs> Oh god, they're the exact same thing. No way! From the structure up, they're totally different! But of course, from a thief's perspective, the best kind of ladder is the rope ladder. The ladder is much too heavy to carry around, after all. From a pr prosecutor's perspective, any type of ladder is guilty of being dangerous during an earthquake. Hey, Mr. Mr. Edgeworth, I got something really interesting from Ambassador Polano. Oh, and what is this something interesting? This, sir. Oh, that's so pretty! I'm so jealous! That's a real treasure there! Why does the flame burn green, Detective? Well, apparently, if you burn the special wit crystal oil that they only make in Babao, it burns this green color, sir. Interesting, so it's a special property of the oil. I suppose this is a ploy to force people to visit Babao should the oil run out. Hey, Gummy, what about these silhouettes? They stuck some cutouts on the outside of the lantern so it'd protect the images. Project the images? Oh, silhouettes, huh? They're rather pretty, aren't they? Wait, what am I doing? I was supposed to be asking for an update on the investigation. Hey, what's wrong, sir? Something I want you to investigate for me. Do you think you can do that much? Uh-huh. You got it, sir. Hey, that's not fair. Why does Gummy get to do all the fun stuff? Oh, well, that's because I'm Edward's partner. I can't believe you took advantage of the confusion and stole my role as assistant. I expect the two of you to get along and work together like professionals on this. Now then, where was the Yatsugarasu first spotted? I believe it was in the Rose Garden on the other best side, the embassy. The garden is just on the other side of the boundary, where Ambassador Alba was to give a speech tonight. At least that's where I heard the Yatsugarasu had appeared. In that case, I believe it's vital that I investigate the Rose Garden. Post haste. Hey, before you go, take a look at this, Mr. Edgeworth. What is it? I picked it up just now over there. Do you think it'll be of any use? There's a little water on it, but how'd the water get on it? Doesn't look like there's anything it could get wet from around here. I was thinking, they have concerts here at this open air stage from time to time, right? Alright, I'll find its owner later. Oh yeah, there's one more thing. Stranger, would you be willing to hold on to this? What is this? It's misused perfume. It's the bottle that woman left behind and I found seven years ago. Thought that one day it'd be of some use in tracking her down. So I kept it safe all this time. Thank you. I'd be honored to hold on to it for you. That's vengeance. I see your back, Miles Edgeworth.
How are things in Babao? Although I can't really say I expect much from Scruffy and that girl. The investigation into Manny Kuchin's death hasn't really progressed any. However, the investigation into the Yatagarasu has. Ah uh, yes, the Yatagarasu. Even now I find it hard to believe a person who can freely traverse between the two countries at will? Preposterous. Well, that's what I came here to investigate. I heard that this is where the witness... The witnesses claim to have seen the Yatagarasu. That's correct. Ambassador Abel was to give a speech tonight here in Alabama. That's when the Yatagarasu appeared. The shadow of the mysterious thief appeared, and just as suddenly it vanished. After that, there was the fire at the Babylese Embassy that the Yatagarasu started. I vow that not a single feather from the Yatagarasu shall escape my diligence. There are roses scattered on the surface of the water, creating a pleasant fragrance. Not just for aesthetics. This pool's water is also used for putting out fires. I see. Oh. The pool stopped filling itself automatically. The fountain spouts are set to stay open until the pool's water reaches a certain level. This water is used to put out fires, I suppose it must be refilled to its normal level. Which suggests that this pool was recently used somehow in this embassy. I guess I'll take some notes about it just in case. Why? Ah, how dare you surprise me like that! I'm sorry. Oh, hey, Angie. Thanks for what you did back there. Your gratitude alone is enough. Seriously, get out of my face. More importantly, Larry, that pool is not for your personal enjoyment. I know that. You really think that I'm the type to just jump into a pool and swim around for fun? Yes. <laughs> Alright then. Did you, by chance, fall into the pool? Nice guess, but no dice. So you know my son, right, Edgy? You want son? I guess I kind of lost sight of him when I shook my hands with the ambassador. And I'm pretty sure he was around here when I last saw him! You imbecile! How can you be so flippant at a time like this? What are you going to do if your son fell into the pool? And how old is this child of yours anyways? Huh? Oh, um, how old is he again? Oh god. Larry can't be this bad, can he? Who allowed him to conceive a child with them? Larry, this is the first I've heard of a son. Who exactly is the mother? The mother? Oh, that chick. The Pink Princess. What's his, what's his name? Iron Infant. The Pink Princess? Miss Von Karma. I was a bit confused by this man's words for a bit there. However, I believe that he is looking... F what he is looking for is the doll of the Iron Infant. Yep, because I'm the Steel Samurai through and through, heart and soul. The Santa and the Iron Infant is my cute little son. You have given a whole new meaning to the phrase, an astounding fool. Larry, we have not seen hide nor hair of the Iron Infant. But rest assured that if we find him, we'll let you know. Now get out of there. Sounds good. In that case, I'll go search over there. Hey, wait! Oh, well, it's not as if he'll get very far swimming around in that pool. And though he's unrelated to the murders, he sure knows how to create a, cause a lot of trouble. Goodness. Hmm, a statue of a woman. I wonder if the lady is pouring water. It says that it's a statue of the queen who spoke of love to King Primadux. Hmm. Well, Miles Edgeworth, it seems that you are lousy at reading a woman's heart. I opened my mouth about a statue and she somehow made the leap to that? That was quite the leap. I suppose Ambassador Alba sat in this chair? Ambassador Alba is very elderly. The chair was prepared for him should he have gotten tired during his speech. In that case, why didn't he plan to make his speech sitting down in the first place? The ambassador is also quite prideful, that's why. Sounds like my old principal from grade school who'd speak at assemblings. Alright, let's talk to Lang. Have you finished checking out all the bystanders? Yes, sir. And we found 14 counts of pickpocketing, 16 counts of illegal parking, and one person ran a light, sir. Don't tell me you didn't find out anything related to the case. Sir, not a single thing, sir. <sighs> well, for now, let's just get those other lawbreakers down the precinct. Agent Long? Well, if it isn't Mr. Prosecutor. I would just like to thank you for your assistance earlier. Make no mistake, it's not like I was trying to help you with what I did. After I left, did you receive word from Ambassador Alba? We're to wrap up our bodyguard assignment at the end of today. Oddly enough, we received word from HQ to return home on an urgent matter. <laughs> As if, it, if I could be so easily called away from this case after I've come this far. 
I swear that I'll find the truth and drag it out screaming into the light. You're with me on that, right, Mr. Prosecutor? We were working as Ambassador Alba's bodyguard at the time. So naturally, you witnessed when the Atsugarasu appeared, correct? Yeah, I saw the thief, all right, with my own two eyes. Well, more like its silhouette. The Atsugarasu was always there, lurking in the shadows. But when the spotlights were turned on for Ambassador Alba's speech, the shadow appeared. That's when the cries of, It's the Atsugarasu rang out. The next second, the spotlight went out. And by the time we got to the area again, the deaf thief had vanished. Oh my god. When we investigated afterwards, we found that the reason the lights went out was because someone had unplugged the extension plug for all the outdoor electronics. Jeez. Whether it was someone doing it on purpose, or simply a guest who had tripped over it, we don't know. But one thing is for certain. The Yatsugarasu was here. So you're saying that basically all you saw was the thief's silhouette? Yes. If all you saw was a shadow, then it's entirely possible that the shadow belonged to someone else. Ha, <laughs> good thinking, sis. You just might be right. If it weren't for the fact that there was no one else with that shape. Not among the staff or the audience members. My men have already done a thorough check of everyone, so I know I'm right. Someone else's shadow? That sounds like a plausible hypothesis. The sudden appearing, appearing and disappearing shadow of the Yatsugarasu. I believe I figured out its true origin. I expected no less from my subordinate. Now let's hear what you know on this subject. What really cast a shadow? I'm, I'm right? Are you telling me I'm right? Oh god. Oh, I didn't save. This is gonna be a problem if I get it wrong. The sun appearing and disappearing shadow of the Yatsugarasu. Is not possible that it was- Is it not possible that it was created by this statue? Are you playing me for a fool, Miles Edgeworth? This statue bears absolutely no resemblance to the shadow of the Yatsugarasu. You are correct. However, this statue is but one part of the whole picture. What do you mean by only one part? What is the other part to the real form of the Yatsugarasu's shadow? Take that. Francisca, if you could take a look at this, don't you find it to be a bit suspicious? Not at all. As I thought. Well, you see, I was merely testing you just now. Fuck! <laughs> I was too cocky. I was like, I got the first one right, and I'm like, ah, don't worry, I got this. And then that other thing happened, I'm like, fuck, god damn it! I quit my job and turned to drinking. Oh. The overlap, okay. Hopefully we are done with irritating Larry. Although I will say the Iron Infant part was actually pretty funny. <laughs> like in retrospect, I don't know where my kid is, like, what? What? <laughs> heart attack. Right now the spotlights are all over the place. This is because they were moved when the guests were in a panicked state. However, if we were to restore the lights to where they were when the thief appeared... You believe that the two statues will create the Yatsugarasu's shadow? Precisely. Now then, watch as I reveal the true form of the Yatsugarasu. First, if we set up a spotlight to cast a shadow of King Primadux and, and the battlefield... The shadow of the king's statue would appear on the backdrop of the stage. Likewise, if we set up set a light up on the queen who spoke of love to King Primadux, her silhouette would also appear on the backdrop of the stage. Ha! So, if we were to combine the two shadows... It looks nothing like the Yatsugarasu shadow! Ah, if we were to combine the two shadows, it looks nothing fucking like it. <laughs> Just look at me, yeah. Miles Edgeworth, how do you explain this grotesque shape? C calm down, Francisca. The way the light needs to be shown on the queen's statue is wrong. What do you mean by that? I believe that the whole of the king's shadow needs to be used for this to work. However, in the case of the queen, I don't believe her whole shadow was needed. Rather, the person who created the shadow only used one part of her shadow. Only one part? Yes, and that one part alone is enough to fill in the rest of the Yatsugarasu's shadow. Why don't you say that in the first place? You're right, I apologize. Now, what part of the queen's... Is it the... The hand? Oh, I have to go... Ah, oh, damn it, I couldn't save. Think back to what is missing in our shadow. Five long, thin areas, correct? Now, what does that remind you of? Toes! I mean, fingers! No, I swear to God, I don't have a toe fetish. Francisca, 
Ah, uh, well, this is awkward. That's right, it can only be the shadow of the queen's left hand. Francisca, can we please adjust the spotlight's position so that it only shines on the queen's left hand? All right, let's give it a try and see what we get. No, they don't look anything like fingers. Unless the fingers were like claws instead of actual fingers. Are you telling me that the, the shadow is somehow revealing that the way the statue was made was historically incorrect, potentially? Because <laughs> that'd be pretty interesting. The shadow reveals what everything actually looked like. See these dinosaurs? They had feathers on them. Hmm. Yeah, this is exactly like the shadow I saw. The culprit must have changed the spotlight's position beforehand, and then pulled the plug after people saw what the culprit wanted them to see. In their panic, the guests must have moved the spotlights around, which we can assume was also part of the culprit's plan. By the time the lights came back on, the Yatagarashu shadow had vanished, which means that the shadow was a construct from the very beginning. So you see, the Yatagarashu never did visit Alabas tonight. The only country that thief visited was Babal, although it can be assumed but the Yatagarasu had an accomplice in Abelas. Accomplice? But who? I haven't figured that out yet, but I assume it was the person who set up the Shadow Show. Seems that the biggest clue yet to solving this case is the existence of this accomplice. Give me some health! Hell yeah! Oh, I feel so refreshed. Who's this? How's the investigation going? Detective Bad. Have you come to join us in investigating the Yatagarasu? I left the murder in Agent Lang's charge. Long, sorry, sorry, Agent Long. I said your name wrong again. And my only target from the very beginning is the Yatagarasu, so yes. So, what have you found out? You and your badass OST. I got a piece of evidence. Thank you, by the way. May I see it? Sure, but you might regret it. We're here because we are ready to face whatever may come. So if you please... When people heard the commotion, bystanders started gathering, and one woman claimed, I'm telling you, I'm a gent. And here I thought she would just be a cameo. Okay, I'll say the line. I'm telling you, I'm a genuine international journalist. She gave me an interesting picture. A journalist? Well, actually, she's a freelance cameraman. This is the photo I got from her. That looks like an actual bird. Or smoke. What in the world? Like, there's no way that's an actual person, right? The Yatagarasu is flying through the air! Oh my god, Francisca, are you... Are you fucking kidding me? Are you actually shitting my nuts right now? The times, they are changing. It's not just man. But evidence, even they lie to us now. When was this photo taken? Apparently, right after the fires, on the fourth floor, fourth and fifth floor, duh, God. apparently right after the fires, on the fourth and fifth floors were put out. It was taken from a nearby building that you can see the embassy from. I see, so this was taken after the fire. The blur in this picture took off from the Babylonian embassy, flew over the boundary, and headed for the embassy of Abelast. Abelast. This is simply not possible. People are incapable of flight. <laughs> yeah. The, the existence of spirit mediums in this, like, game world makes it so that when shit like this happens, you're like, well, I mean, spirit mediums exist, so... Maybe. I've had the pleasure of dealing with a case involving a flying person once. Actually, come to think of it, I've come across a case like that as well. Two, actually, and then we're people! Maybe it happens more often than we think. Francisca, I need to return to the Babal investigation for a bit. All right. I'll continue investigating on this side of the building. All right, I'm counting on you. Welcome back, Mr. Edgeworth. Now, come on, let's get back to our investigation. Ha ha, ha ha. Yes, let's. Right? They can update autopsy reports on the day in the middle of the trial. For attorneys, that's almost more implausible than flight. <laughs> To think, after all that running around, we're right back where we started. It won't appear that way. Mm, hi, Mr. Edgeworth. Have you found out Maddie's killer yet? I'm terribly sorry, Ambassador Polano, but I have yet to find his killer. But I guess his murder really was the work of the Yatsugarasu. Let's get one thing straight. It was the work of the fake 
Yeah, Takarasu. Is that really a fucking distinction we need to make right now, young lady? Do you really? Okay, okay. The real Yatsugarasu is a noble vigilante who is only out to steal the truth. Again, who cares? But anyways, because I'm a nice guy, Miss Faraday, please don't make such a sad face. If there's anything I can do for you, all you have to do is ask, all right? I actually really like his, uh, like his sideways glance. It's like a really, like, really excellent foil to his please come to my country i'm begging you face which is this one it just it just works so well I, I i don't know it's just a little thing like that actually there is one thing you can do will you allow us to take another look around we didn't have enough time to conduct a thorough investigation earlier oh sure P please feel free to investigate your heart's content also there are a few questions i'd like to ask you personally ambassador it will bring a smile back to miss faraday's face then i'll gladly answer anything Thank you, Mr. Polano. You're you're a total gentleman. Ha ha ha! You don't have to wait. Just waste such nice words on me, little miss. Hey, Sir Polano. Those two sure got chummy awfully quickly. You know, it's easy to say we're going to investigate, but where should we begin? We should probably start by comparing the state of this room before and after the fire, and then we should look into the matter of the suspicious person you spotted. Yeah, when I came into this room, the person was already gone. But I'm willing to bet that person I was chasing is Mr. Cochin's killer. We don't know that yet. However, it's hard to believe that person is unrelated. Speaking of the Yatsugarasu mysteries, I received the most mysterious photo from Detective Bad. Uncle Bad, he's taking part in the investigation too? Yes, he has been chasing after the Yatsugarasu for all these years. Uncle Bad. Now then, I was told that this photo was taken just after the fire. What? Th this kind of looks like the person in the long coat I was chasing. Does this mean that I was chasing the fake Yatsugarasu after all? I don't know the answer to your question. But I don't think people can fly either. This could be how the person escaped. Well, we'll need to investigate a bit more before we can say anything about that. In any case, let's not dawdle anymore and pick up our investigation where we left off. All right, something we haven't seen yet here. Nook and cranny. <laughs> what do we have in here? It would appear that this desk also fell victim to the fire. But it doesn't look too damaged. Oh, I think we can rifle through the drawer a bit. Hmm, I suppose we really should take a look. That's a rather unusual shape for a notepad. Isn't that the same paper from that note that we have? Yeah, there it is. Which is dumb. Why would you use such a, like, recognizable type of paper? Like, they if we find this, we're gonna be like, dude, who the fuck else has this? Like, he obviously is the one that wrote that note, right? There is a bottle of Bubble E's ink on Mr. Cochin's desk. And it looks like there's still a lot of ink left inside. The seal is unbroken, so the fire probably couldn't get into the bottle to burn up the ink. Hey, Mr. Fileno, it looks like your precious Bubble E's ink is all right after all. I mean, not your assistant. You know, he's still dead, but this ink survived. What? That's odd. Ambassador, what do you mean by that? Um, well, it's just that there's something strange about the ink. Would you mind elaborating on that statement for me, please? Yes, come run over here. I'm not even looking at you. Now then, Ambassador, I'd like to ask about your movements before the fire broke out. Excuse me? Before the fire? Who, which fire are you talking about? Which one? There was more than one tonight? Huh? Oh, I see. I guess you didn't hear about it. We had two fires here at the Bebelese Embassy tonight. What a bother all that was. Wait, but the only fire we know about is the one after the Jammin' Ninja show. Oh, uh, well, the first occurred at the start of the Jammin' Ninja show. Luckily, only the fourth and fifth floors of our embassy caught on fire. Not wanting to cause a panic among the theat- the theater goers, we decided to keep it internal. Then the fire after the Jammin' Ninja show was the second one of the night? Exactly. So the fire I witnessed was the second one. Come to think of it, didn't Detective Bad make reference to the first fire? I suppose this means that the photo was taken just after the first fire was put out. The second fire contained to this floor the third floor. I think it was leftover embers from the fire on the floors above that caused it. That's, how should I put this, a very bad stroke of luck. My office on the fifth floor, Manny's office, is he Manny Manny's office here, and Manny himself all gone in the blink of an eye. I feel so sorry for you, Mr. Polano. Oops, look at me going on and on. Now then, what was it that you wanted to ask again? We were discussing what your actions and whereabouts for today were. And if you happen to know what Mr. Cochin's actions and whereabouts were as well. 
Yes, very well, let's see. I've been quite busy all day from morning until now. First I woke up and then I brushed my teeth. After that, I had a roll for breakfast. Fascinating. How about if you just skip to the relevant parts for me? Oh, you'd like... You'd like a condensed version? All right, I can do that for you. So what did Mr. Cochin and you do this morning? Well, originally we were supposed to meet and shake hands with the Gem and Ninja. Would you like have that on the schedule? Like meet and shake hands. But Manny and I wanted to turn it into a photo op, so we were here tidying up his office. You helped clean Mr. Cochin's office? Why were you not cleaning your own? Oh, I think I forgot to mention this, but my office is currently undergoing renovations. Which is why both the Prelux statue and the Babylonian knife set are down here. I see. Oh, but the tidying didn't take much, really. We just burned some files we no longer needed and expired coupons in the fireplace. I bet cleaning up the fireplace must have been a real pain, though, huh? Ah, uh, about that. Kind of forgot to clean the ashes out. Ha 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 ha. I guess I'm up a creep without Manny here to get angry at me. An ambassador like yourself has been on the receiving end of a secretary's anger? Oh, he was very good at being very mad. Why, even just this morning he got mad at me. I spilled some babbly zinc onto the back wall when I was burning the files, you see. And he got mad at me, saying that I should treat the ink with more respect. Apparently orders go up the chain of command around here. That's about it for what we did this morning. Just some cleaning. Don't tell me you had no other work to do. Being an ambassador and all. Now then, if you could tell me what you and Mr. Cochin did this afternoon. Well, Manny and I went down together to the... Theater Neutralis. We had to be there for the start of the Steel Samurai stage show. After the show started, I went back to my office on the fifth floor alone. They were together until the start of the Steel Samurai show. A little while later, after I straightened myself up a bit, I returned to the theater because I was to take part in the photo op on stage at the end of the show. Hmm. There was a commemorative photo op at the end. It was a fantastic photo of the three of us. Ambassador Elba, the Steel Samurai, and myself. After the photo shoot, I went back to my office on the fifth floor to prepare for my handshake photo op with the Jammin' Ninja. Seems to be rather overworked for an ambassador. When I got to my office, that's when the first fire broke out and I escaped down the stairs. My office was completely destroyed, but thankfully no one was hurt. I admit I ran away from the first fire as fast as my legs could carry me. But during the second one, I pitched in and helped the embassy staff put it out. So you didn't see Mr. Cochin again after the start of the Steel Samurai show? Yes, that's right. The next time I saw him, he was lying there in an eternal sleep. Let's see. Master Polano, I thank you very much for your help. I'm sorry I couldn't be of more assistance, Mr. Edgeworth. If there's anything else, please don't hesitate to ask, alright? I wonder if you might tell me what you noticed about Mr. Cochin's bottle of ink? Um, I just thought of it right now, but... During the second fire, Manny was worried about his office, so he came rushing back to it. I called out to him, and when I received no reply, I used my spare key to open the door. When I did, I was greeted by roaring green flames. The flames were so big that I wasn't able to see into the room at all. The fire was green? What was the cause? Well, wood crystal oil burns green when it's lit, as you can see by this lantern. And Babylon's ink is made from the same oil, which means it will also burn green. You know, I too had thought it was Maddie's ink that had caught on fire. That's why I was surprised to find out there was still a bottle of ink left on his desk. The case of the perplexing green flames. Talk about a mystery. What exactly was it that caught fire in here? Ah! Deduce! The shape of this notepad matches the shape of this note we found. Hey, you're right. What is it? Looks like something straight out of Monument Valley. Oh, yes, that notepad is a souvenir from somewhere in your country. You've been collecting them for the purpose of studying them, you see? Yes, I do. You do seem to be quite passionate about it. Oh, would you like to see my souvenir collection? I'd love to show it to you. Are you sure they haven't been burnt to a crisp by the fires? Ambassador Polino, I wonder if you might recognize the handwriting on this note. This looks like Manny's handwriting. I see, in that case. Oh, did you figure something out? This note was found in Alabas. Specifically, it was found being firmly grasped by the murdered Damas II. Damas II in this note? Yes, it was a request from Mr. Cochin for Damask to steal the Prima Duck statue. What? Manny, trying to steal Alabaster's Prima Duck statue? Yeah, I believe that fucking face. I had no idea! We would know for sure if we could run a handwriting analysis. Ambassador, do you have any documents that were written by Mr. Cochin? Handwritten. Sorry, not just written, but handwritten. Yes, I can gather a few and give them to you. I'll have to ask Detective Gumshoe later to run the analysis. 
can't believe that Manny would ever think of doing something like this. You have any idea as to why he would have requested the theft of the statue? There is one possibility, but mind you, it's just my personal speculation. Anything you can tell me would be of great help, Ambassador. I believe that you said you might have an idea as to why Mr. Cochin hired Damas the second. Actually, I fear it might be my maybe my fault. I was telling you earlier. We were to determine which statue was the real one as a part of today's event. But because of the Atsugarasu and the fire here, that got cancelled, didn't it? <laughs> I'm actually relieved the rest of the event had been cancelled. For you see, Babao's statue, well, it's just a replica. And did Mr. Cochin know about know that about Babao's Primadux statue? Of course he knew. That's why he was the only person I could consult with. We'd have to do something once our statue was revealed as a replica. As to be expected, I was very nervous today, as this would impact our own country's authority. Yes, I understand. Authority is based on who owns that stupid statue. Makes total sense. Well, when I told Manny my concerns, he said, Let me handle it, it'll be alright. I'll find a way to make sure you're the ambassador of the reunited Kenopia. At the time, I thought he was just trying to cheer me up. When I saw that note, I realized he was serious. Mr. Cochin conducted a lot of business behind your back. I assume he did all that to ensure that you are the next Kenopian ambassador. But why was he trying so hard, I wonder? Smile. XD. He was so much better at getting things done than I ever was or would be. I don't know the answer to why he was trying so hard yet. But I suspect he had an ulterior motive in mind beyond just simple kindness. Oh, here you are, Miss Edgeworth. Detective Gumshoe, have you collected the information that I requested? Yep, got it all right here, sir. Here you go, okay? Feel free to take a look. It's for you, after all. What is all this, Gummy? It's all the information on this room that I got from the embassy and Interpol people. Now we know exactly how this room was before and after the fire. Good work, detective. Ah, uh, it was nothing, sir. I'm an expert at getting people to talk. Wow, you two remind me so much of my father and uncle bad. What do you mean? As prosecutor and detective, your dynamic is just like theirs back in the day. Well, don't you worry. I'm going to find my own wonderful partner someday. And when I do, I'm going to become a good Yatsugarasu, just like my father, right? Please don't ask me questions to which I have no answers to, K. However, I can say that it is a truly wonderful thing to find a partner you can trust. And when you actually have felt that feeling, let me know how it feels, because I still have yet to feel it. Haha, <laughs> you bet. So what now, Mr. Edgeworth? Well, I'd like to ask you for a favor. Yes? That gadget. Mr. Thief, is it? That thing you call your secret weapon. Oh, you mean Little Thief? Heh, <laughs> you're coming to rely on it, aren't you? Well, I don't need a crutch like that. I'm only asking because I need it for the investigation. From the information Detective Gumshoe gathered in the, amb the Ambassador's testimony, I'd like you to please recreate this room as it was during the third floor fire. You got it. All right, here we go. Dark skies of evening when no other bird dares take wing. One alone remains all-seeing. Now witness the true power of a real modern day Robin Hood! Seems there are other things besides what the ambassador mentioned that have changed. It's possible that we might find the escape route the person K saw used as well. Oh, what is this? Is this some sort of light show I was not told about? This is the power of a true vigilante. It's recreating the room with the info I input it. Really? That is certainly one interesting device you have there, Miss Faraday. It'd be a shame if something were to ever happen to it. Uh-huh. I believe it's about time we return to our investigation. Grandfather clock. Was apparently in a different position before the fire. According to staff members, the clock was flush against the wall before the fire, sir. Which means that most likely it was moved by someone during the fire. Speaking of which, it's totally 11 o'clock right now, but I don't hear any chiming. Oh, that's odd. It was still chiming right on the dot of every hour this morning. Maybe the fire damaged its internal mechanisms or something? Ambassador Polano, may we take a look inside that clock? Sure, go right on ahead. Detective Gumshoe, if you could please inspect the insides of this clock. Yes, sir, I'm on it. Yes, Hydra, I found this inside, sir. It looks like a length of wire. So this is what caused the clock to stop chiming? So what was a long length of wire going inside this clock in the first place? You know, I'd really love to take a trip. Hey, why don't we take one after this case? You already have a destination in mind? Well, I'd like to go someplace where I can continue my thief training. Uh, prison. <laughs> uh, well, if you want to learn the fine art of stealth, 
Perhaps you should visit the studio where they make the Jammin' Ninja TV show. Hey, that's actually a really great idea, Mr. Edgeworth. Can't believe she took me seriously. Yeah, I mean, he was... <laughs> okay. Appearance at the desk is largely unchanged from before the fire. Yeah, it just got a little burnt, that's all. It's a very fine desk. I'm sure that even now it's still usable. It's that great. Why don't you trade your desk with it? No. It's just a suggestion. You don't have to get all monosyllabic with... <laughs> monosyllabic on me? <laughs> oh, that's really funny. I've never heard that ever said. Don't you get all monosyllabic with me? I'm going to use that someday, and the person I'm going to be talking to are going to be like, What the fuck did you just say? <laughs> These must have been the large green flames Ambassador Polano saw. The flames like these, it's no wonder they couldn't get in. I knew it! That person I saw was definitely up to no good. I mean, that person could even be Mr. Cochin's killer. And that's very likely to be the case. After all, that person came into this room before you. They must have chosen this room precisely because they knew no one would be in here. Okay, then maybe the green fire was where it was to prevent anyone from coming in? But then, what did the person set on fire to make the green flames? Hmm, well, whatever it is that person burned, it made a rather sizable fire. And since the fire's green, well, we've seen something that burns green, right? Use it in court? <laughs> don't get all monosyllabic with me, witness. What? What, what did you say? Yeah, you know what? I don't, even, I don't even want you to repeat it. Bailiff, you're being held in contempt. Bailiff, take the... Take the, the good attorney away. I think we've now established that the green flames were caused by wood crystal oil. Furthermore, we know that there is only one other thing made from wood crystal oil. Oh, you mean that thing Mr. Palato was mistaken about, right? Yes, precisely, as we found out earlier in our investigation. Um, what? I don't get it. Can you fill me in, sir? Fine, I suppose I'll explain it in a way that even you can understand. Take that! zinc is made from wood crystal oil. Oh! So it should burn the same color as the flames in the lantern, right? Yes, precisely. However, the green flames in this room were not from a bottle of Babylon zinc. Because he found the ink Mr. Cochin used on his desk, right? And there's no, absolutely no way he had more than one thing of ink in his desk. That would make no sense. I'm pretty sure the game's just assuming that all ink etiquette, desk etiquette, is to only keep one cartridge of ink at a time. I know it's, it's rarer or whatever, but it's, it seemed like they had a rather abundant supply of it. I'd always keep a backup, so when I'm done, I can just go to the next one and then go replace the one that's done with another backup. Because we found the ink Mr. Cochin used on his desk, right? Yes, however, we know that Mr. Cochin was smuggling the ink in massive quantities. Now, what do you suppose he made using all that ink? I believe what he made with that ink is the answer to what gave birth to the green flames. Oh yeah, I'm beginning to really feel the energy coming from you, Mr. Edgeworth. Made of babbly ink, this is the source of the green flames. Cash in hand. Take that. What would consume that grain of volume of ink to make? That would be the counterfeit bills that the smuggling ring made and are circulating in Chung Fa. You're kidding! You're saying that it was Mr. Cochin who made the counterfeit bills? I am. I believe you could even go so far as to say that he stole the Val's printing press. Ambassador, Mr. Cochin had permission to freely use the printing press, correct? If he used the same ingredients and use the same machine that the real stuff comes from, is it counterfeit? I know this seems like a really dumb argument, but like, so it could still be illegal, but is it counterfeit implying that it's fake? It's not fake, it's just not authorized, right? He He's not the Cheng Fa Mint, but are they circulating? I thought they were circulating Babylese uh, money because they don't let other countries use their ink for that purpose. It would be illegal either way. It would just have been a very interesting distinction. Why, yes, and I do remember seeing him use it in the middle of the night. But never did I think he was using it for such a foul deed. Can't you tell by the face I'm making? I'm so surprised. Ambassador, because of your secretary's crimes, you will need to be investigated as well. Ah, uh, yes, I suppose so. We've caused a bit of trouble for a few countries, haven't we? It's my duty to search out all who shielded Mr. Cochin and concealed his crime. I will check out every nook and cranny of your personage, sir. For they are the ones who started the fire in order to destroy the evidence. Detective, you took part in the initial Babel investigation, correct? Yep, sure did. I also helped put out both fires, sir. That first fire took me by surprise. I had a tough time escaping the fifth floor. First, I tried the elevator.
you guys know this this matters to me this this really matters to me you guys know not to do that in case of a fire right i always use the window in times of fire i mean if you're on the first or second floor okay good i'm glad you guys know that first i tried the elevator but i guess someone else had the same idea because it was in use if i hadn't remembered to use the stairs at that point i'd have been burnt to a crisp wait that's odd we always warn our staff that in case of a fire it's dangerous to use the elevator oh Maybe someone wrote it in the fit of panic? Like gum she was about to? That fucking idiot. Detective, did you see the Yatagarasu that came into the Babylese embassy at all? I didn't personally, and the other staff members told me they never got a good look at the person either, sir. Hmm, I wonder if you could tell me a bit more about what you discovered, Detective. The second fire broke out around the same time the Yatagarasu was spotted in Alamas. That's also when a suspicious person was spotted in Babao, which caused a panic. So no one was able to get a good look at this young Atarasu that entered Babao? Yeah, all they saw was a mysterious person, wearing a long coat. That's not enough to make a positive ID, you know? I mean, you're, you're, you're wearing a long coat. Still, it was enough to make the people who received the calling card panic even more. Person in a long coat! Sounds like the exact same person I saw. The Atarasu that appeared in Alabas was proven to be just a fabrication, a shadow. In light of that fact... <laughs> The Atsugarasu that appeared in Babao is also suspect. You can't be serious! Not when we're this close to capturing the fake! I mean, Kalisto Yu! So the Atsugarasu appeared, caused mass confusion, killed Mr. Coach, and then disappeared. By the way, Detective, why did you not chase after the Atsugarasu? I did, but, well, this embassy is huge, sir. I got separated from the other staff members I was with, and was lost for a while there. You didn't even memorize the layout of the building you were to guard, Detective? I'll be sure to do that from now on, sir. But you know, it was thanks to me being lost that I was able to come to Kay's rescue. Oh, is that a fact? Yeah, it was when I was lost and wandering around in the third floor hallway, sir. When I heard a scream, I headed towards it right away. Oh, that's probably from when I found Mr. Cochin's body. Smile. XD. Yeah, I thought it sounded like her, so I got real worried and ran as fast as I could. It was thanks to Gummy that Miss Sheena wasn't able to take me away. You covered for me until you got here, Mr. Edgeworth. Oh, I see. So he can be useful once in a blue moon. Still, it's too bad that Agent Shina got here before I did. Hmm. I wonder where Agent Shina was before you found her here. Well, just before I got to this room, I saw her coming out of the room next door. I still think there's a chance Shina is just Callisto with colored eye contacts. Agent Shina mentioned something about chasing the Yantagrasu herself earlier. Well, she apparently helped in putting out the first fire. Then, during the second fire, I heard she was busy chasing the Yatsugarasu. She seems to be a very dedicated agent. You would do well to learn from her. Why are you pointing at me when you say that, sir? I've examined everything in this office, but there is one thing that bothers me. Perhaps I should ask Ambassador Palano about it. About this office, it appears to me to be very similar to Ambassador Alba's office. For example, the location of the fireplace and the position of the grandfather father clock. Oh, that's right! You've also paid a visit to the Alabastian side of the embassy. Our two embassies actually used to be one. Yes, I know. Even the pamphlet mentioned that, as did everyone else we've talked to. Which is why the building is bilaterally symmetrical. This? The Alabastian and Babylonian sides of the building are symmetrical to each other. As we know that to be a fact, then this room's fireplace may also hide a secret passageway. Secret passageway? In Alabas, the fireplace turned out to have a revolving brick wall. A revolving wall? Sounds like something out of a ninja house. Wow, there was, was, there was a trick like that built into the fireplace, sir? What? This embassy holds that kind of secret? There seems to be a lot about this room that you don't know about, Ambassador. I guess it's time to pay, pay the bill for letting Manny do so much work for me. Please, I really want to know about the real Manny and what you know about this room. What are you waiting for, Mr. Edgeworth? Let's get to the bottom of this. Agreed. And my first thought is that it's likely the killer used the revolving fireplace. In Alabas, I had to push where the X was on the far wall of the fireplace. Oh, I see the- I see an X back there, sir. Let's see what happens when I push it. Ah! You scared me, sir! There's something about this fireplace that lies in contradiction to the facts. Uh, but we found an X where you thought there would be one, right? We did, but that's not what I was referring to. Something is missing from this scene. Nook and cranny time! Okay, so there should be ashes here. Except there are not. Ambassador Polano, you said that you burned some old files on this fireplace today, correct? Yes, I burned quite a few files this morning, actually. 
And after you did, you forgot to clean out the ashes from the fireplace, correct? That's right, but why are you asking? And why are you making such a scary face? I'm sorry, I admit I'm a bit intimidating when I'm serious. In any case, take a good look at this fireplace and tell me what you find out about it. Let's see... Huh? Where did all the ashes go? The reason as to why the ashes are missing is simple. It's not because someone cleaned them up, right? No, because even if someone did sweep them up, the fireplace is too clean for that. Ambassador Polano said that he spilled some Babylon's ink here while he was burning the files. And yet, there is not a trace of the spilled ink on the back wall anywhere. Well then, I don't know what happened. Well, I'll tell you what happened. The two sides were switched. By using the revolving fireplace wall, the ashes were moved to the, into the neighboring room. Which means that this is a clear indication that the fireplace was used. Then you mean, the person I was chasing disappeared from this room through there? Yes, I believe the person you were in pursuit of is Mr. Kunchin's killer. And after committing the murder, escaped through the fireplace. The killer used the fireplace in this room to escape to the next. Then it's only logical for us to talk with the person who was in the neighboring room. Well, the person that was in the next room was... Oh, well, the person in the next room was... Oh, it was that person, sir. Yes, Detective Agent Shina. Wow, I feel fucking fantastic. It's looking more and more like Miss Shina is the killer, isn't it? Let's not jump to conclusions yet. We may need to go through what we know so far. She came running straight into this room from the next one and instantly accused you. Furthermore, she claimed that it could only have been you that killed Mr. Kochin. I don't have any proof yet, however, I know she is hiding something from us. Okay, then why don't we go ask Miss Shina herself? No, not yet. There's something that needs to be done first. Detective Gumshoe. Sir, is it my turn to do something, Mr. Edgeworth? Yes, I have a two-part special assignment for you. First, I need you to run a handwriting analysis on Damas the Second's note. Okay, I'll get the lab boys on that right away. Just a second, I want you to see if you can fit through the revolving fireplace wall. Right now, sir? No, next decade. Of course right now. We need to test our hypothesis first, don't we? Go on, Gummy, you can do it. All right, I'm going to do this like a real man. Here I go, through the fireplace and back. Shouldn't need to psych yourself up that much for such a simple task, detective. Hey, hey, it's a lot of shit talking for somebody who's not walking into that fireplace. Wow, the wall inside the fireplace really did turn. That's so neat! Now I want to try going through there, too! There really is a secret passageway through here! I had no idea! Hmm. It would appear that the ash really, was really pushed into the other room. Furthermore, the Babylon's ink you spilled, Ambassador, is there on the back wall. Okay, here I go, sir! Detective, I'd like you to go through there under the same conditions as the killer. Ah, but there's all ash- all that ash and stuff. And your point is, now that we're short on times, now we're short on time, so if you could please hurry on through. Yes, sir. Okay, so now we pretty much have the whole picture, right? No, not yet. There remains a few more mysteries to solve. Such as the Yatsugarasu's whereabouts, the other smuggling ring members, the two weapons that made it across the border, the key Miss Yu stole seven years ago. In fact, we haven't figured out a thing regarding how Miss Yu is related to these em embassies. Mr. Edgeworth! A number of pieces connect in a very complicated way in this case. It's almost enough to make one completely mentally exhausted. What are you saying, Mr. Edgeworth? I thought you were the one who said that it's easy if you follow the leads. <laughs> Was that supposed to be an impression of me, Kay? If it's info gathering you need, Gummy and I can help with that. Then all you'd have to do is show off your fancy schmancy logical deductions. Show off? Does it really seem like I'm being boastful when I do that? I don't know, what, is your, what do you think your cocky smirk says? Let's not overcomplicate matters, okay, Mr. Edgeworth? You've been so focused, like a laser, on only what seems strange and out of place. It's no wonder no nothing's clicked and we haven't unlocked anything yet. But if we think things through calmly, the answer should come to us, okay? That's the sort of thing I say to myself. When I'm practicing how to unlock padlocks, you know. That is something that I hope practice doesn't make perfect for your sake. Haha, <laughs> yeah! Yay! Looks like you're back to your straight lace self again. Hey, Bezor. Wait. With the handprint analysis? Hey, Mr. Hey, Mr. Edgeworth, I'm back, sir. Yes, I can see that. Good work, detective. 
<laughs> Looks like you can use that fireplace like a door, sir. Oh, okay, he just came back from the other room. That makes a lot more sense. Are you all right, Gummy? Oh, I'm okay. It's just a bit of ash and dust, that's all. Your jacket has gotten quite filthy. I see the, the hem has practically turned black. Yeah, well, quite a bit of unburned ink got on it, sir. Hmm, let's see. Thank you, detective. You did a fine job. I'll even pay the cleaning bill for the trench coat. What? Oh no, sir, I could never. This is just my old coat, sir. If it was a coat I actually cared about, then I'd get it clean, but you know. I see. Very well then. As you wish. Dude doesn't want him to know that it was actually brown, like beige in the past. So because Gummy was able to climb through the fireplace, we know it can be used, right? Yes, but that's not all we learned. We actually learned one other important effect. And that is? I will have to explain it to you later. Right now, we need to deal with the handwriting analysis, Detective Gumshoe. Yes, sir. I'll be back before you know it. I'm back, sir. <laughs> like, holy shit. The handwriting analysis on Mr. Cochin's handwriting will take a lot of time. Let us go and wait in the theater. The H. The H. The Neutralis, along with Agent Long and Agent Shina. Agent Long. Long T said. Little, little cubs never do know the real fury of the Elder Wolves. These quotes are definitely becoming increasingly difficult to decipher. And what does that mean? It means that you'll never really know how angry I can get. Mr. Prosecutor, the counterfeit bills made with Babylon's ink, they were all of Cheng Fa denominations. There we go. There we go. Got our answer. Yes, yeah, so I heard from Miss Von Karma. But we don't know where the play money is gone. They must not have figured out that it was all burned yet. Ever since those things showed up in circulation, my country's economy has taken a big hit. Chang Fa is in financial chaos as we speak. Because we can't tell the differences before our own bills and the fakes. But it's not just the money. The citizens are also worried. I've staked the honor of, this, of the House of Long on this. And I've come to this land to capture the mastermind behind, behind the whole mess. I investigated how the bills were made, and how the ink was smuggled in Chang Fa. And I pursued the smuggling ring all the way here. But tonight, this is where the final chapter was written. Despite my frantic efforts to chase the smuggler down, someone got to him first. And now I'm called to return home without a single answer. Agent Long, I... Don't start. It's not your fault. It's not anyone's fault, Mr. Prosecutor. Ambassador Alba, I'm sorry for all the trouble tonight. Oh, no, no, it is I who should apologize. It's all because I was not strong enough. If only I was able to think of a better solution. Quirkus, you fools! Curse your empty brain! <laughs> You're being too hard on yourself, Ambassador. I take full responsibility for tonight. End of story. Sheena, let's go. Time to return to our den. Yes. I don't like to admit it, but there's not much else for us to do but to go home as well. Agent Long, a moment, if you would. You, Wolfman and the Secretary Lady, hold it. Objection, pal. Detective Gumshoe, have you got the results of the handwriting analysis already? You said it'd take a while. All we did is literally walk downstairs. Yep. And that note was definitely written by Mr. Cochin, sir. Hmm, just as I thought. Didn't work, Detective. Hmm, sorry to have made you wait, but I believe that now everyone is finally here. Agent Sheena, I'd like to ask you something, if you don't mind. Yes? How exactly did you fail to see the Yantakarasu when you were in the neighboring room to where Mr. Kochen was killed? I'd like you to, to explain that to us. What? Hey, Mr. Prosecutor. What are you doing asking her about something she didn't see? Agent Long hasn't touched the Babao investigation at all, so I suppose I will need to explain a few things to him first. Miles Edgeworth, I can't even begin to imagine what's going on in that head of yours. Of course you can't, because I've been the only one over there. The only thing going on in my head is the pursuit of the truth. Speaking of eye roll, good lord. Oh, it sounds like you have some sort of plan. Very well, I'll supervise you until the end. She's seriously gonna treat me as a subordinate for the rest of the day? Probably for the rest of your life. You're not trying to pick a fight with my subordinate on some flimsy guess, are you? I'm not trying to pick a fight, and the evidence is hardly flimsy as you will see. Ha! I should have known that you and I are destined to fight it out to the very end. It won't appear that way. Well, I'll prove her innocence, so let's see what you've got, Prosecutor Edgeworth. Hmm. With pleasure. Okay, if you could please explain what the person you were chasing did for us. 
Okay, you got it. I first spotted the suspicious person near the open air stage on the Babel East side. Called out to the person, but as soon as I did that, the person ran off. I thought it was rather suspicious, so I immediately gave chase. For the sake of argument, let's call this suspicious person the Yatagarasu. Now, please tell us what happened when you chased the Yatagarasu up to the third floor. Can do. I chased the Yatagarasu all the way up to the third floor of the Babelese Embassy. It was a pretty straight chase down the hallway until the sudden turn. The Yatagarasu disappeared around the corner, so I did my best to catch up. When I turned the corner, I saw the Yatagarasu run into Mr. Cochin's office. I gave chase and ran into the room. But when I entered the room, it was pitch black. I couldn't see a thing. I felt something on the ground next to my foot, so I turned on the light, but then... Ah! When Kay entered the room, the person she was chasing was already gone. Why do you suppose that was, Agent Long? What do you mean, why do you suppose? Isn't it obvious? The person slipped out through the door behind the girl under the cover of darkness. Objection! Sorry, but I know for a fact that the person didn't escape through that door. Oh, and how do you know with such certainty? Hmm. That's easy. If the Yatsugarasu had left through the door, they would have run right into this person. I didn't think of her, because she's who I think is the killer. Your answer is Sheena. Yes, because let's consider what would have happened if the Yatsugarasu had used the door. And Kay screamed upon entering Mr. Cochin's body. The Yatsugarasu would have run right into Agent Sheena, who was in the next room over. Ugh. Agent Shino, would you mind telling us if you saw the suspicious person in question? No, I didn't see anyone. You see? Therefore, the Yatsugarasu could not have escaped. It just means that the creep slipped out before Shino made it out under the hallway. Huh, I doubt that as the as there was another person in that hallway, a certain detective. Detective Gumshoe, where exactly were you at that time? Me, sir? Well, when I heard Kay scream... I ran towards Mr. Cochin's office from the opposite direction of Agent Sheena, sir. So, Agent Long, can you explain how someone could have eluded both of them? Even you must concede that under these circumstances, the door was not a viable route. Gah! Way to go, Mr. Edgeworth! You nailed him with just an explanation of what happened. Yes. I've eliminated one of the possi possible escape routes from that room. <laughs> I get it, so that's what you were trying to show me. Hey, Mr. Prosecutor, let me guess. This is what you were trying to say, right? Because the door was not a viable escape route, then there must have been another way out. Precisely. Hey, Mr. Edgeworth, it's time to, bu to bust out with our revolving fireplace wall explanation, right? No, not yet. Huh? But why? I thought this would be the perfect time. The revolving wall on the Babylon side is known only to four people. And if we use this information unwisely, the truth may escape us in the end. What's with all the whispering over there? Scared I'll figure out your tactics? Hmm, nothing of the sort, Agent Long. Come, let's continue where we left off. That smug, haughty attitude of yours. You really rubbed me the wrong way, you know that? Hmm. No, no matter. I figured out you out already. Anyway. The only other possible escape route besides the door is the room's lone window. And since an eerie picture of said escape route exists, are you saying that this photo captures the moment of the Yatsugarasu's escape? I guess Detective Bad must have filled him in on this photo. I have to admit that at first I thought the window to be an possible escape route as well. However, I know that to be impossible. Now I realize you may not know this, but... Humans can't fly! Of course I know that! That's bloody common sense! Besides, I never said I thought that photo to be of the Yatsugrasu's escape route. I suppose not. Alright then, explain yourself. Channel, this photo is not the Yatsugarasu that Kane was chasing after. You can say whatever you'd like in whatever language you want, but there's only one language I really understand, the language of evidence, even though I rarely use it myself. Very well then. I present to you proof that the person Kay saw is not the same as the one in this photo. Take that. Let me explain to you precisely why the shadow in this photo is not the Yatagarasu Kay saw. He spotted the Yatagarasu headed for the third floor during the second fire. However, the photo in question was taken just after the first flyer. Fire. Fire, not flyer. Fucking ambassador getting me done. It's coupons and flyers, damn it. <sighs> yeah, way to go. That's twice you bit him in the butt now. We're not done yet. You still have to explain what the shadow is. 
and how the Yatsugarasu escaped. I don't suppose you can answer both, can you? Regarding the photo, I admit that we don't understand what it means quite yet. Ha, ah, as I thought. However, the Yatsugarasu's escape route? Now that I can answer. You can? Well then, Mr. Prosecutor, go on, enlighten me. He, he, why'd you say hold it? He literally asked you to tell him. Huh. Please tell me then. Hold it! I'll tell you. Why? Even if I explain it, you'll try to find some flaw with what I have to say. You're busy heading up to up, heading up the Alabastian investigation, correct? In that case, I doubt you have much knowledge about the Babalese side of the case. So wouldn't it be best if the lead on that side, Agent Sheena, explained in my stead? Ugh, Sheena is my subordinate. If I don't stick up for her, how can I look her in the eyes and call myself her boss? Long, it's alright. I can take care of him. Sheena, you shielded me a lot as my boss. But it's time for me to prove my worth. All right. If you're okay with it, then you have my support. All right, April O'Neil. Finally, it's down to just Agent Sheena and myself. This is where the battle really begins. Now then, what is it you'd like to ask? Hmm, let's see. Why don't we start with your movements inside the Babylese Embassy? During, during the first Babylese fire, I assisted in putting out the fire. During the second fire, I was searching for the Yatagarasu that had appeared in Babao. Yeah. So I'm like 99% sure that that's Callisto. Which I think, if we go back, I think I called that when we first, the first time we saw her after doing case four, I was like, man, she has literally the exact same lips as Callisto Yu, and they're unique lips when it comes to like the character designs here. I don't think that's a coincidence. But then she took her glasses off, and her eyes weren't at, at all the same. Plus, she didn't have the freckles. But that could be that that's cosmetic stuff that can be taken care of. But maybe that's a red herring. Maybe we're supposed to be thinking that right now. While I was searching, I heard a scream coming from the next room over. Although I was in the next room, I was unable to catch a glimpse of the Yatsugarasu. To be honest, I'm actually very skeptical that the girl's Yatsugarasu even exists. That smile's creepy, by the way. And that is all I have to say. I'm not lying when I say I saw the suspicious person run into Mr. Cochin's office. Like I said earlier, I have no intention of retracting my testimony. I'm... is that supposed to make it truth all of a sudden? Anyways, good. Just to confirm, did you have a partner when you were on your investigation? No. I moved alone. In that case, you have no one to corroborate your alibi, is that correct? Are you calling her suspicious because she was in a room by herself? How pathetic. And it wasn't when Agent Sheena tried to arrest Kay under the same rationale? And how about when you accused Larry because he was the weapon's owner? Grr. Not that it's unexpected for that useless lump to get into such a situation. Although I suppose it's never a good idea to let mistakes go uncorrected. I will make no excuse for what I did in that situation. Then you should have apologized right now for making Kay out to be the killer, pal. I'm sorry. Sheena, apologize. I'm sorry. It's really okay. I mean, I'm not under suspicion anymore. Right, Mr. Edgeworth? <laughs> well, I never doubted you. Not for one second. And the same goes for me. I believe in Sheena. Then let's put that to the test and see if she really is worthy of your trust. <laughs> this promises to be interesting. So you helped with the fire extinguishing effort? I was in charge of the police on the Babali side, so I helped them with their work. At least doing the job of firemen, you really know how to work people. She sure does. That's because she's one awesome woman who knows how to manage. I guess so. She's always, always bringing you a business card or a scroll at just the right time. Prepare everything before I'm ordered to. That is the definition of a secretary. Kinda seems more capable than Agent Long, doesn't she? At the very least, she's certainly more capable than you, Detective. God, d dude, you did not need to put your nuts in his face in a dunk like that. Like, Jesus, dude. Oh my God. Like, okay, I get it. Just don't embarrass the man anymore. Stop, stop, he's already dead. Sheena is more than just a capable secretary, you know. Sheena, tell him what other things you're good at. All right. 
By the second fire, you mean the one that consumed the third floor of Babao, correct? Yes, that was when the suspicious person was spotted in Babao. And you were after the same person in the long coat that I was after! There is no proof that the suspicious person was really the Atigarasu, because no one was able to get a good look at the person's face. Hmm. By the way, how was your team's in investigation? In order to extinguish the fire, water was pumped into the third floor via the windows, so the majority of the investigators conducted their searches on other floors. Maybe they did, but there was one person who was wandering around lost on the third floor. When the fire was pretty much out, I moved to investigate the third floor. And you did that alone? Yes. I don't think it's time for this yet. I feel like I'm skipping a step. But hey, let's give it a try. Objection! Being in the room next to Mr. Conchin's office is the problem with your testimony. Mr. Prosecutor, I don't see what problem you're talking about at all. Agent Long, do you recall the secret we discovered about the Alabastian office fireplace? Huh? Oh, you mean how it connects the office with the room next door? What about it? Well, Alabast isn't the only country with secret connecting fireplaces. What? The fireplace in Mr. Cochin's office holds the exact same secret. What? The Atsugarasu didn't escape through the door to the room or the window. Escape route was through the revolving fireplace wall and into the next room over. Now do you see? The Yatagarasu had escaped into the next room, and the thief would have run straight into Agent Sheena. Meaning that, it's impossible for her to have missed the Yatagarasu. Ah, uh, yeah! What is the meaning of this, Miles? Well, would you care to explain, Agent Sheena? How you managed to completely miss the fleeing Yatagarashi, or shall I? Your claim that you were in the next room was a lie all along, wasn't it? The truth is, you were the one Kay saw on the coat. Pretending to be the Yatagarasu, you were the one she chased after. And as you tried to lose her, you ran into Mr. Cochin's office and headed for the fireplace. Then you shed your coat in the next room, leaving it there to emerge as Agent Sheena. After that, you came back around to place Kay under arrest. Does that sound about right? If not, then speak now or forever hold your peace. How dare you make Kay look like the bad guy when you're the suspicious one, pal? Sheena? fucking hysterical. I remember this irritating laugh. Urgh, I'm getting chills down my spine. It can't be. But it has to be. Sheena, what's wrong with you? <laughs> I'm sorry. It was so funny that I couldn't help but laugh. Funny, you say? Yes, yeah, so you, you would accuse me of being the Yatsukarasu. The prosecutors of this country really are also very strange. Do you think you can get away with this by simply laughing it off? <laughs> you think I'm taking things too lightly? I think not. It's that prosecutor who is. Look, everything you said earlier is nothing more than mere speculation. That's That was the same look she had, too, where she's like, huh. The Yatsukurasu fled through the fireplace? Do you have any proof to back up your claim? You don't? Then you haven't proven a thing regarding the Yatsukurasu's escape route. The tone of voice you're taking with me now has certainly changed. <laughs> That's because it's been a while since I've had this much fun. I think I'll let loose and then we can have a real battle of wits. For an agent of Interpol to show me the true power of the mind, it is a great honor. <laughs> Don't underestimate me, I'm not some foolish broad, you know. I know, and that is why I won't hold anything back either as I answer your question. My question? Here is your proof that the revolving fireplace wall and ba babble had been used recently. I just show her the. Take that. Yes, according to Ambassador Polano's testimony, he said that he was burning some documents in the fireplace with Mr. Cochin. Oh. 
she had I, I that was one thing that I found really interesting. I'm like, man, she must be laughing internally so hard, like excellent discipline to have been able to hold that back for so long. Cause she could not contain herself the last time we saw her. The ashes of what they burned were left in the fireplace, so they should have been there. However, when we went to investigate the room, the ashes weren't there. Why is that a problem? Maybe someone cleaned them up. Objection! Hmm. Unfortunately for you, Ambassador Polano said that he forgot to. And so the question remains, why were the ashes missing? The answer is simple. When the Atsugarasu went through the fireplace wall, the ashes were pushed into the next room by the wall as well. The movement of the ashes that were in Mr. Cochin's office is my proof. <laughs> and just one is so funny. Ash as proof? Are you even allowed to submit such flaky evidence in court? Get it? <laughs> you still wish to fight us? Of course, why wouldn't I? You're accusing me of, like, murder after all. Well, no, actually we're not. We haven't said that she killed Mr. Cochin. Would she have even had time to? With her being chased after? I don't think so. But she did see the body. In that case, let's hear your counter-argument. <laughs> My counter-argument, huh? This really is just like being in court. Well, to me, we're simply continuing from where we left off all those years ago. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. It doesn't matter if we're at a crime scene or in court. Let's finish this here and now. I suppose I've had a lot of fun today, but I grow weary of this game of cat and mouse. Oh, you still say the same things you said back then. That's original. Let's make this the last testimony and wrap this up this absurd case once and for all. In my eyes, all you've proven is that the rotating fireplace wall was used. But you can't really call that proof that the Yatsugurasu used the fireplace now, can you? So then, who was it that used the rotating wall? Show me your answer with real evidence. Remember, we've already, we've already finished our very thorough investigation, and we found out a single suspicious thing in Mr. Cochin's office. <laughs> and there you have it, my counter-argument. Argh! That's very impressive. She has seen through to the fact that I have yet to gather that one piece of evidence. What is it, Kay? I haven't heard a peep out of you in quite a while now. I literally want to murder that woman. If you don't think you can handle it, feel free to leave the rest of it to us. But I literally want to grab those women's eyeballs out of their sockets and feed them to her through her own asshole. Okay, pull yourself together. That's very graphic and unnecessary. You are the true heir to the Yatagarasu name, are you not? If you want to steal the truth, then you must never take your eyes off of it. Miss Chase, you're running to catch the truth. You must see it through to the very end. Mr. Edgeworth, you're right. I... I will see this through to the end. So, you go get her for me, Mr. Edgeworth. I'll see to it through the end. So go do everything for me. Hmm, with pleasure. It's like a lack of evidence has left you wide open, doesn't it? Sheena, please... Show me you're someone I can trust. Don't worry, this will be the deciding match, you'll see. I'm truly sorry, sorry, Agent Long, but I simply can't allow her to escape me again. Very well, Agent Sheena, shall we begin? I'm ready whenever you are. Hold it. Sounds to me like you're saying my explanation is not good enough. <laughs> That's exactly what she's fucking saying. But I was able to go through the revolving door myself. So that should be proof enough, even for you, pal. Huh. Looks like you don't quite understand. But by your looks, I, I can guess that you're not all that learned. Youch! Talk about rude. You should watch what you say, pal. That way, I can't say I disagree with her on that one. But you know what I mean, right? You may have proven that the fireplace was used. Hold it. It's possible that the Atsugarasu left fingerprints inside the fireplace. Not if it was her. She has gloves, doesn't she? Sorry, but I had the forensics team check that already. All they found were prints belonging to Ambassador Plano and Mr. Cochin. Curses! Um, produce the documentation? Dude just took her word for it. Curses! I should have known better than the thing the Atsugarasu would have been so careless. Well, especially since she's actually wearing gloves. But there must be some sort of evidence that we still have yet to find. <laughs> I take it you have no further objections? Maybe, maybe you're not done yet. So Interpol has finished examining the entire Babal Babylese embassy? Uh, yes, the investigators who weren't allowed into Abeles were incredibly helpful. 
They all put in great efforts to search for any sign of the Yatsugarasu. And yet, despite all that effort, it appears that they failed to notice the lack of ash in the office fireplace. Furthermore, you were the one who inspected the room next to Mr. Cochin's, correct? I didn't notice the ash there in the fireplace of that room, and for that I'm sorry. You don't need to apologize, Sheena. As your boss, your mistakes are my mistakes. So allow me to apologize for you. I'm sorry. He's a good boss. I mean, that's never in doubt. Dude always had his employees' backs. It was obvious why they were so dedicated to him. However, he does not have as much loyalty to the actual law, which is a problem. Only his version of the law. He apologizes for his subordinates and everything. What a great boss. You hear me? Mr. Edgeworth? Nudge, nudge. Are you saying that I don't do anything for my own subordinates? I mean, other than cut my salary? No, you do literally fucking nothing. Ah, no, nothing of the sort. I mean, no, really, you don't do anything for us. You offered to clean my coat after you made me go through the dusty fire, the city fireplace. You're someone I really respect, sir, even if you are a bit too strict sometimes. That is, only, that is only a problem on your end. Of course it, Of course it's only a problem on your... If somebody's strict, it's not a problem on both ends. Unless they're strict with each other. Which is not what he was implying. Wow, way to be super hard on him in response, jackass. Am I really too strict on everyone? Anyway, Sheena, you didn't find anything in Mr. Coach's office, right? That's right. We finished our investigation. Because that's something they didn't find. Maybe that's what we're, where we're supposed to go first? Yeah. Hmm. While you say that you and your agents have finished your thorough investigation, are you absolutely certain that you didn't overlook anything? Well, aren't we full of ourselves standing there insulting Interpol agents? You better not be insinuating that my men are not in are incompetent, Mr. Prosecutor. I'd never do that. However, it doesn't change the fact that they did overlook something. I'd like for you to take a look at this length of wire. What exactly is this supposed to mean? A length of wire? So what about it? I'll tell you what. We found this in the Babelese Embassy not long ago. What? And we found it wound up inside the grandfather clock in Mr. Cochin's office. You found that at the scene of Mr. Cochin's murder? But this wire wasn't all we found. We found one other very important thing. There's more? In Mr. Cochin's office. There were signs that someone had burned counterfeit bills there. What in the... Aya! That evidence was something you found out through the girl, that girl's machine, right? So what if it was? Ah, oh, that's what I thought. Unfortunately for you, a recreation made by a machine is hardly concrete proof. Among the ashes you found in the room, did you happen to find any counterfeit bills? No. You see? So there was nothing in that office. Nothing you can call evidence anyways. I'm sorry, but I seem to have given you the wrong impression. How so? I don't recall saying that I was presenting evidence of any sort. But rather, I was pointing out that your investigation was incomplete. And that this throws doubt on the purity of your investigation into the Yatsugarasu. You still suspect me, I see. All right then, I ask that you point out what part of my investigation is incomplete. The other import agents worked under the command of Agent Shino. And is it not possible that the reason the person Kane was chasing chose the third floor? Because that person knew there would be no other agents on that floor? Furthermore, we've come to see that Agent Shina was only pretending to be investigating the Atsugarasu to the point of arresting Kane. In that case, there is one location that no one has yet to inspect. Their team's investigation was incomplete because they failed to inspect this location. This room. It was only her that did. The location, Agent Sheena, is of course the room you claim to have examined. I believe the room next to Mr. Cochin's office warrants a thorough inspection. Even if you do that, I doubt you'll find anything of use for you there. Hmm, I will be the one to decide that. Detective Gumshoe? Yes sir, I'm on it. I'll be right back after I check out that room next to the office. Now we'll just sit here in awkward silence. Hey, Mr. Edgeworth. Do you really think that Miss Sheena is the Yatsugarasu? Yes, if my logic is sound, I believe she is. And I'm not going to let her get away with ruining the name of the Yatsugarasu. Or killing my father. Miss hey, Edgeworth, I found some things you really need to see, sir. Oh, so what are these things that you found? Um, some makeup, a coat, and a pair of sh shoes, sir. Where's the makeup? You found a coat? 
You hear that, Mr. Edgeworth? Maybe it's the one the one the person I was chasing was wearing. Yes, the possibility does exist. Agent Shinon, were these pieces of evidence not in that room when you examined it? <sighs> Unfortunately for you, those aren't suspicious items of any sort. They all belong to me. They were getting in the way, so I stored them in that room. Aw. Thank you for bringing them to me. It saves me a trip. May I have them back now? These items that the detective brought back are incredibly significant. I request that we be allowed to examine them. They're my personal belongings, so you have no right to touch them without my permission. Objection. Not actually true. But I don't know what procedures Edgeworth would actually have to go through in this circumstance in Japan to have to do that. I wish to examine them for the sake of the investigation. But if you wish to deny us access to them, Agent Long, let's hear your opinion on this. I say let them look at your stuff, Sheena. Long! Sheena, let's put it all out in the open. If you're really innocent, then you have nothing to worry about, right? I guess so. All right, go ahead and examine whatever you'd like. After all, I have nothing to hide. Hmm, good. Now let us begin. So which of Agent Sheena's belongings are you going to examine, sir? Let's examine the coat. Yes, sir. It appears you managed to stain your coat rather badly. Agent Sheena? You know, it's a that Kay saw was wearing a coat. I'm beginning to wonder if this stain wasn't created when you went through the fireplace. <laughs> no, you have it wrong. That soot probably got on my coat when I was helping the police put out the fire. What about this dark substance around the hem of your coat? Oh, I didn't realize that the hem was that dirty. I'm sure it's just some water mixed with soot when I was helping with the fire. I don't think so. You think you can get away with such a transparent lie? Yeah, don't lie to us, pal. This is the same pattern of dirt that got on my coat when I went through the fireplace. Your words ring hollow in the absence of evidence, you know. So unless you can prove that the dirt on my coat is from the fireplace, which I can. Wh how? You did a great job, Detective Gumshoe. Huh? Me, sir? What did I do? This coat is exactly the piece of evidence I was searching for. I had been hoping to find the coat that the person Kay saw was wearing. And thanks to you, we proved that going through the fireplace would sully a coat. I don't quite get what you're saying, but I'm happy for the praise, sir. All that remains is for us to show what the dark substance on the coat hem is. Oh, and you think you can do that? Of course I can. This is the dark substance that sullied the hem of this coat. Boo! Ya! Beverly Zink? Yes, this is what will prove that the coat went through that fireplace. According to Ambassador Polano, he burned some files in the fireplace that morning. You told us about that already, so I don't really see the point in mentioning it again. My point is that he spilled some ink onto the back wall of the fireplace at that time. If the dark substance on this coat turns out to be Babbley's ink, then it would prove that you and this coat went through the revolving fireplace wall. Ah! Sorry to have clipped one of your wigs, Yatagarasu, but we're not finished yet. Your w <laughs> your wings! I'm thinking wigs, because I'm really like, take off the wig! But you have no way of proving whether or not this is Babbley's ink on the coat hem. Oh, but I do, and I intend to show that it is ink in a few seconds. How? How, you ask? Well, since you don't seem to know, allow me to show you. This is how I will prove that the dark substance on the coat is Babbley's ink. Wear the coat. We can find out whether it is Babbley's ink or not by lighting it on fire. That's how you're going to prove that it's Babbley's ink? Yes, if you could please cut off a section of the dark stained area for me, I'd appreciate it, because I will show you here and now what the dark substance is. Sheena, sorry to do this, but I'm going to have to cut off a bit of your coat. Go ahead. I wasn't planning to wear it anymore anyway. Now then, if someone can loan me a lighter or something. Oh, I've got some matches. I always carry them with me so I can light smoke bombs. Then if you could please have... If I could please have one, okay? We can get this experiment otherwise. Excuse me? What you have on your personage? The flame! Wow, it disintegrated very quickly. It's the same color as the flames wick crystal oil produces, which means... Babylon's ink is a product of wick crystal oil. And when lit, the ink produces a green flame. <laughs> I believe the time has come to clip the Yatagarasu's other wing, not wig. Wing this time. Miss Sheena, you're the fake Yatagarasu. You're the one who killed my father. It's about time you came clean, Agent Sheena, or should I say, Callisto, you. Hey, Mr. Prosecutor, you're not serious, are you? Do I look like the joking type to you? This is my funny face! Haha. <laughs> Callisto, you? I've never heard that name before in my life. 
The ma that matter of speaking and that attitude, you haven't changed in a bit in seven years. You're that offense attorney that killed Mr. Faraday and then turned to frame me for it. Oh, really? And you have proof? You insist that I am Miss Callisto, you woman, but you can't prove it. You absolutely can pr Okay. I mean, we would have to detain you, but yeah. If you have no proof, then I'm afraid you won't be able to lay a single finger on me. The raven is a very unique bird, one's, one that flies by the darkness of night. However, the light of dawn has arrived and it will reveal your true ugly form to the world. Enough poetry. I want to see some evidence. You really have something that can prove that she is Callisto Yu? I do. It's something that the second Yatsugarasu had preser has preserved for us these last seven years. Do me the honor, Mr. Edgeworth. I will, Kay, for we have finally come to the end. For some reason I don't feel like that's probably true. We'll prove her to be Callisto Yu with this and clip the Yatsugarasu's wings for good. You just not fucking say that over and over again? Take that! This perfume, this will prove you to be Callisto Yu. It will? He has preserved it perfectly for us. Surely you remember this bottle? This belonged to Miss Yu just before she disappeared seven years ago. Naturally, this means that a few of her fingerprints are on here as well. This is that bottle of perfume you spilled, which I have preserved ever since. I heard from my father, Burn Faraday, that if, that if stored under the right conditions, a fingerprint can be preserved for decades. Which means that your fingerprints are still on here, every last one. We can clear everything up if you were to compare the prints on this to your own. Now come, Agent Sheena. Will you submit yourself to a fingerprint test? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. She is. That is a maniacal laugh. <laughs> Looks like you've seen right through me yet again. Ah, you're sending the biggest chill down my spine, Edgeworth. Is she getting aroused? Also, this music is not at all appropriate for the current situation. You caught me. Just like before. Like, what the, what the fuck? Yeah, who, who is question mark, question mark, question mark? Ah, you're already, you're sending the biggest chill down my spine, Edward. Callisto, you. So you've shown your true face at last. This feeling of thrill, it's even greater than the death that time seven years ago. Sheena, you're... Long, I really enjoyed our days together. You're an insanely strong, nice, kind-hearted idiot of a man and a fantastic lay. So you were a spy all along. A mole sent by the smuggling ring I've been chasing after. Someone who has been feeding them intel on Interpol all this time? Ah, very good. Maybe you're not as big of an idiot as I thought. Callisto you, the woman who killed my father seven years ago. You're her, aren't you? The fake Yatsugarasu. That's right, Callisto you. That's just one of my many names. But even that is just a facade. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am the great thief Yatsugarasu. Let's tell you, this time you won't escape, or this is the end of the road for you. And you, and we have you surrounded, except we don't. Francisca, please ready your whip in case she tries to run. Now, come along quietly. You know, you're the one who's left the strongest impression on me, Kay Faraday. Had you not used the Yatsugarasu's gadget, I might have never known who you were. But here you are, being a thorn in my side, just like your father always was. Kay, don't! Ha! Come on, Ed. Come on, Mr. Edgeworth. Let me go. Round one. Fight. You, I'll never forgive you for what you did to my father. I mean, understandable. You really are just like him. Mr. Faraday, too, possessed such laughable honesty. Didn't he say don't do it? If you, Can you whip that gun just, like, right out of her hand? It's, Francisca's like, um... This might surprise you, but I'm actually not very skilled with this. What? How? K. Ah, you let K go right now, pal. You despicable. Let go of me, you filthy. Uh! You think I'm a fake, don't you? Well, unfortunately for you, I'm the real Yatsugarasu. But that's impossible. My father was the one who created Little Thief. <laughs> hey, Edgeworth, the Yatsugarasu has three legs. Do you know why that is? Why it has three legs?
No, it can't be! Did you finally figure it out? Do you finally know the real identity of the Yatsukarasu? The real identity of the Yatsukarasu is... The real identity of the Yatsukarasu is neither Burn, Faraday, nor Callisto you. By that same token, they are bo also both the real Yatsukarasu. Haha, <laughs> very perceptive of you. No way! The single person known as the Great Thief Yatsukarasu never existed. Mr. Edgeworth, I... No, I refuse to believe this. She has a gun pointed to your head and that's what you're concerned about right now? The Yatsukarasu is known to have three special skills. Skill number one, the Yatsukarasu always knows the exact location of the target object. And a lawyer would have the opportunity to learn the layout of client corporations. Skill number two, the Yatsukarasu always knows exactly how to disarm the security system. And a good prosecutor will be well versed in the ways of a criminal. And skill number three... Yatsugarasu doesn't leave a single shred of evidence behind, ever. Oh. Ever. That's not- sorry, I was- I, I was doing an impression of her voice. It was pretty good, wasn't it? <laughs> Detective Bad! It was only natural for the Yatsugarasu to never leave evidence behind. Because the lead detective on the case hid it all away. You're the third member of the Yatsugarasu? That I kind of figured. I I had a feeling. I'm not sure. Did I mention that? I don't remember if I actually voiced that or not. I might not have. I had I had a feeling that with them working together that he might be. But I, I thought they'd be a pair. Before we did, before we realized that it was Chris, this is before I realized that it was Callisto You, You, I've been looking for you for a long time, seven long years, but I finally got you. Huh. Why, Mr. Bad, no long time no see. What happened to us? You used to be such a great team. You were such a great team, then why did you kill my father, Seven? Oh. I'm sorry, I was doing an impression of Detective Bad. If you were such a great team, then why did you kill my father seven years ago? <laughs> why indeed. It was nothing personal, really. He was just another person I had to kill. How can you say that? I grow weary of this, and it's about time for everything to come to an end. And this time, I won't miss. Stop! You! Kay! It's over, Sheena. Your leg! Wow, what a badass. Agent Long! Grr. You idiot! What were you thinking jumping in front of my gun like that? What are you risking your life for? Okay. Okay. I guess maybe? He was aiming for her leg. He had to have, right? Because otherwise, like, why is that rec Whatever. I'm sorry, Detective Bad, but no matter what sort of past she may have had, or even if she is a spy, it doesn't change the fact that she is my subordinate. As long as she is, I can't allow any harm to come to her, not even from you. You really are an idiot, you know that? <laughs> That's fine with me. You should know by now that this is just how I am. I am whatever you say I am. If I wasn't, then why would I say I am? In the paper, the news, every day I am. Radio won't even play my jams, cause I am whatever- Anyways, hey sis. Yes? I want you to conduct a full body search. Sheena might have another weapon on her. All right. Detective Gumshoe, your assistance, please. Sir. Hey, I found something. What is this, sir? Looks like the blade of a knife. Doesn't, but it doesn't have a handle. This is a great find, Detective. Huh? Is it, sir? Let's try pairing up this blade with this handle. I believe this blade actually belongs with the handle that was on the murder weapon. Hey, they fit together perfectly. This blade must have been taken from the crime scene when the knife handles were switched. Dude is a simp! <laughs> I'm going to return this Babylese knife now. Alright, I trust that you'll make sure that it is returned to M Ambassador Polano. I believe this makes it perfectly clear who did it. Callisto you. But the only time the handles could have been switched is just after Mr. Cochin's murder. <laughs> Which means that you must be Mo Mr. Cochin's killer. You killed Mr. Cochin with the alabaster knife. 
Switch the handles and then took the original blade of the Beverly's knife with you. Later, you allowed yourself to be spotted by Kay near the open air stage. You used the fireplace to lose her, and then you went back to accuse her of the murder. Does that sum, sum it up? I forgot, her voice is so like, objection. Huh, you craft an engaging tale, Edgeworth, but there are two problems with it. Problems in what respect? Why do you think my real reason in allowing her to chase after me? <laughs> it was all so I could capture Kay Faraday. What? When I saw you using that device at Gatewaterland, I knew right away that you were Burn Faraday's daughter. <laughs> I became curious, so I researched a little into your background. That's how I found out that you were on the trail of the Yatsugarasu. So that's why you tried to pin Mr. Cochin's murder on me? Yes, I knew you would show up at this embassy tonight, so I thought to use you, but pinning the murder on you wasn't my only goal. You had another? <laughs> yes, once I had you under arrest, I had planned to search you and take back the device that rightfully belongs to me, the true Yatsugarasu. You were going to take little thief away from me? Seven years ago, it was thanks to that device that Faraday was able to infiltrate this place. But he stole more than he should have. I had a tough time recovering that precious key. Then the person who stole the Yatsugarasu's key was Mr. Faraday? You, that incident seven years ago, what was the catalyst behind it? In the eyes of the smuggling ring, the Yatsugarasu was become a bit of a problem. It wasn't an especially pleasant assignment. Then why? Why did you become a member of the Yatsugarasu? Why? There's no why. I was destined to betray everyone from the very beginning. From the beginning? What is that supposed to mean? The person I take orders from hasn't changed, even now to this day. Does this mean that the leader of the smuggling ring wasn't Mr. Cochin? And the real ringleader is still out there pulling those strings. Are you done asking what you need to know? Because if so, we should probably get going. Then you're going to tell me everything you did tonight. Do you understand, Shina? Yes, I should tell you then that I was the one who set the Babylese embassy on fire. And why did you do that? I suppose it was to destroy all the evidence of the counterfeit bills. That was what the smuggling ring was trying to do? But then, why start two fires? Sorry, but I can't tell you anything about the ring. It's your job to complete your investigation, after all. I've had my fun. Now it's your turn to enjoy the ride. Wait! Yeah. I mean, Miss Sheena. Yes? When I fell to the floor earlier, these fell at my feet. What about them? They're such pretty hair sticks that I thought, well, that I should return them to you. <laughs> you can have them. They're of no use to me anymore. If you don't want them, you can always just throw them away. No, I want to keep them. Uh, suit yourself. Oh, that's right. I almost forgot, Edgeworth. Hmm. About the second problem I had with your story. I didn't kill anyone tonight. What? I'm not saying that as a sore loser. Just think of it as a hint, if you will. Mr. Prosecutor! Yes, Agent Long? Mark my words, I'm not done here and I'll be back! And it's got nothing to do with duty or anything because this has become my personal case. I may have been shot, but I'll show you just how dangerous a wounded wolf can, wolf can be! The anger appears to have negated the sensation of pain in his injured leg. It will come back once his anger subsides, though. It's finally over, Kay. I feel I've peered into her heart a little, you know? And it's so cold and dark and incredibly lonely. The person who was giving her all those commands, all these commands. The one who thought my father was a problem to be removed. That person is the real ringleader behind the smuggling ring. Um, Mr. Edgeworth, I have a favor to ask. Can you hold on to these hair sticks for me? They're really pretty, just like the ones they were selling on the Jam and Ninja show. But until this case is over, I don't think I can look at them without being overcome. I understand. I'll take good care of them for you. There's a little bit of soil stuck on the end of these sticks. So, just spitballing. So we know Bad is one of the th three, you know, it's not Long. Long seems like an innocent little puppy, quite frankly. Um, I think it's one of the ambassadors. It would make most sense for it to be Palan, but Alba wouldn't surprise me. More evidence would po po uh, point towards Palan. Oh, I guess it's that time already, huh? So it's midnight, the dawn of another day. Hey, Pops, thanks a bunch. You've really done a lot for everyone all these years. Detective Bad, don't tell me today is the day. Yeah, it is. With this, I can retire in peace. It was down to the wire, and we almost didn't make it. But we did it. We solved everything. And that's just it. We haven't solved everything yet. 
the ringleader of the smuggling ring you, the Yatsugarasu, were chasing after. The legend of that Yatsugarasu is now over. Mr. Edgeworth, that bit of logic earlier, it was brilliant. I feel like I can leave it all in your hands. I'm counting on you. Is, is it really true, Uncle Bad? Were you also part of the Yatsugarasu? As I said to you earlier, Kay, I'm truly sorry. I wanted nothing but a peaceful life for you. Oh, bad. Hey, don't take it so seriously. It's all just one big joke, right? Ha 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 ha, LOL. Unfortunately, it isn't. Oh, come on, sir. She's just shaking on my chain. Isn't she, Mr. Edgeworth? Detective Bad? Wait, no. You are no longer a detective. Mr. Bad, I'd like to ask you about the Yatsugarasu. Not you too, Mr. Edgeworth. Mr. Edgeworth here. I should give you these, these back to you. These are... The pages from my KG-8 case files that the Yatsugarasu stole from my office. Oh, what? Wait, what? Mr. Edgeworth, I must apologize for last night. So the Yatsugarasu stole into my room was you, was it? Wait, then that means what? Tell me it's not true. That's too insane for me to believe, sir. It's true, even if it's not something you want to hear. KG-8 incidents. It was a very emotionally trying case. We stood in that courtroom, Faraday as the prosecutor, and I as the lead detective. Faraday had evidence in his possession that would prove the defendant guilty. However, because it was stolen, the defendant was found innocent. He was the elder sister of the victim in the case. When the defendant was pronounced not guilty, she let out a great wail. That's when we realized that there was a limit to what the law could do. The only way to bring someone like that to justice was to do so outside of the courts. That's what we thought at the time. That's how we formed the Yatsugarasu and vowed to bring to light any dirty dealings companies had with the ring. Including companies that dealt with the Amano group. Mr. Amano's conglomerate? We called ourselves the Yatsugarasu and flexed our collective muscle. We exposed all sorts of shady dealings as a warning to the business world as a whole. By doing that, we were able to stop the higher-ups from covering things up. And then, it was finally time. We had finally arrived at the moment when we'd find out the ringleader's true identity. It was then that you literally stabbed us in the heart, and Faraday, he died for it. But why? Wasn't she the sister of the victim in the KG-8 incident? After Faraday's death, I looked into her past. That's when I found out that she was a phony. The victim of the KG-8 incident, CCU, she never had a sister. Isn't that some really obvious evidence that could have been checked on very early on? What? Then that means... Sheena wasn't the only fake name she used. Callisto Yu was also another pseudonym. From the very beginning, that woman was a spy sent by the smuggling ring. She said it herself. It was I was destined to betray everyone from the very beginning. Anyway, let's return to the real topic at hand. Mr. Edgeworth, this trump card that we, stru we stuck onto this page of the case file. Please use it wisely. Trump card? That photo that we stuck on there. Try peeling it off. Behind it slumbers a piece of evidence that Faraday hid away all those years ago. It's the mark of the Yatagarasu, but why? This is a directives card from the big boss. Take a look at the back. This is something Cochin had on him at the time of the KG-8 incident ten years ago. That blood is from the victim of the incident, Miss CCU. But why is the card adorned with the mark of the Yatagarasu? The reason why we called ourselves the Yatagarasu was because of the three-legged raven mark that the smuggling ring's boss used. Apparently, orders from the boss would come on these cards without fail. The person who received the order was supposed to burn it immediately after reading it. And apparently, it burns a bright green flame when set ablaze. So you mean the cards were written in Babylon's ink? Why, why, why would you... Why would you... Again, make it so... The fact that the card that Cohen sent was made into Faraday's hand at all is nothing short of a miracle. We decided that whenever we stole anything, we would send a card along with it to the police. So that's what those white cards are. The great thief that used the mark that only those within the ring would know. It was our message to the ringleader that we were only a few steps behind. 
And one more thing, Detective Gumshoe. I've been trusting this to you, uh, this lollipop. What is it, sir? This is what I was talking about earlier. During the KG-8 incident trial, Faraday had this in his possession. This important, definitive piece of evidence. But I thought it was stolen. How do you have it? The person who stole it from him, from us, ten years ago, was a man by the name of Ernest Amato. And he had it locked and hidden away for all this time. But we forced him to tell us where it was, finally, after the other day's kidnapping case. This video! Don't come any closer, I'm warning you! This is the same video as the one Mr. Portsman was trying to conceal from me. Yeah, it would seem that even he was caught in the ring's web. Amano was preparing to take on the boss someday. And the video and this video was ins was his insurance. That's where the prosecution the prosecutor comes in. He was to retrieve the video. On top of that, he was apparently instructed to sneak into your office and steal the trump card. You saw it for yourself, right? The card that told him to preserve the evidence. Then that card was not the calling card of the Yatagarasu, but rather a directive's card from the ringleader to Mr. Portsman? The two pieces together make for a strong weapon for whoever holds them. The evidence Mr. Portsman thought to withhold from me, and the one that you stole from my office last night. Both pieces are illegal, and for me to use either one is... Whether you use them or not is up to you. But they will be of help to you when you take on someone who is above the law. Is the boss of boss one of those who cannot be brought to court that Mr. Day spoke of? Like an ambassador? Detective Bad, there is no limit to the law, for it is this person who determines the limits to them. You still insist that? Even now, you really are something else. I leave the rest in your hands. Now then, Detective Gumshoe, the handcuffs. It's time to lock up the last remaining rem member of the Yatsugarasu. Pops! Don't ever lose your directive spirit. Your detective spirit. Oh, sorry. Talking about directives. Pops, why is this happening? This isn't justice. Like I always told you, do not get emotional. I'm emotionally involved. Now let's go. Yes, sir. Is this really the end of a legend? No, because it's to be continued. Ha! Now we know who the Atagarasu really was. And yet, there remains much to this case that needs to be resolved. Like how the weapons cross country lines, for example. The two countries have incredibly strict security systems and entry procedures. Short of a miracle, it's impossible for someone to have smuggled them in. Smuggling them in, huh? Hey, there's a VCR here, sir. How convenient! Now we can see what's on that tape detective bag gave us. This man, it's Manny Colchin. And he's holding a knife in his hand. This looks like footage from a security camera at the entrance of an apartment building. Apartment building? How do you figure that? Unlike you, I actually read the summary file. Read the summary file on the KG-8 incident. The crime scene was the victim's own apartment. So this footage was shot at the entrance to the victim's own apartment building. This seems asinine. Then why would you? It's an apartment building. Of course, there's a fucking camera. Okay. At the trial, Mr. Faraday claimed that this piece of footage existed. However, no one could find it. Yes, somehow someone was able to steal it and hide it through Mis Mr. Ernest Armano. I can see how this would have been a definitive piece, and why someone would want to hide it. But it's a piece of evidence from a ten-year-old case. There's no way it's related to this case we're working on now, sir. Actually, I believe it has everything to do with the case we're working on now. The ringleader went, even went so far as to use Mr. Portsman to retrieve it. Which means that in this video lies a very inconvenient bit of footage to the ringleader. Where? Where? Wait! What was that? Huh? That bit you played just now. Please show it to me again. That is not what a VCR... This car, this is something we cannot overlook. Why is that, sir? Oh, look, look here, Detective Gumshoe. This is the national flag of the Principality of, Cano of Canopia. And because it has the national flag on it, we know this to be an official government car. But the question we shouldn't be asking ourselves is, what was a government car doing there? Ah, Mr. Von Carver, Mr. Edgeworth, so you were here all this time. Ambassador Alba. Thank you very much for continuing your investigation. It was this time of night. Uh, if only I was even a tiny bit more careful, this tragedy would never have happened. I am truly sorry. This wasn't your fault, sir. This had nothing to do with how careful you were. 
You idiot, Quirkus! You certain chase after a simple thief. Now then, let's get down to the real reason why I came looking for the two of you. I would like you to put the investigation on hold for a while. Can you do that? Excuse me? I heard you apprehended that thief that turned his embassy upside down. And we are in the middle of an event celebrating our country's reconciliation. You can't exactly have the police and detectives walking around here forever. They're scaring the visitors away, so I hope that you can understand how I feel. But well, we must finish our investigation and resolve the remaining issues. Why don't we leave the rest of the Alabastian and Babylonese police? Ambassador, we are so close! Just a little more and... This Von Karma, I'm afraid I've made up my mind. Without my permission, you can't proceed with your investigation anyways, right? Well, on your side. That's true, however... As he said at the very beginning. Area can be considered to be Alabastian soil. In which case, we are nothing but foreigners in their land. Is this really where our investigation ends? Shifu, we found Mr. Edgeworth, sir. Shifu, this way. Well, yeah, I haven't fucking left. Yo. It really hasn't been that long. Agent Long, you're back on the scene rather quickly. If I laid back and took a break, I'd lose the sense of my prey, Mr. Prosecutor. Agent Long, why in the, why have you returned? Because I have to solve this case no matter what. Well, I'm sorry to inform you. Uh, don't take this the wrong way, I don't suspect you personally. However, as a member of Interpol was just found to be a thief, and so... <sighs> Under these circumstances, I wish to put your investigation on hold. After all, I believe our own police can handle things from here. They are quite capable. Uh, at this rate, our investigation really will come to a close. <laughs> Master Elba, I get it now. I really do. Oh, I'm very glad you understand how I feel. No, not that. What I was talking about is... I know who the killer is behind tonight's murder. You! No! The... The... Killer? You really mean that, Agent Long? And wolves don't lie. And who is it? I'm gonna say it's you. But let me first say that I'm not talking about Mr. Cochin's murder. That was all Sheena. Long Z says the truth lies not at the exit, but rather shines outside the maze itself. The truth is unexpectedly simple. So let me ask you this: Who do you think was the was the masked the second's killer? I'll tell you who. It was you, Francisca Von Karma. Wasn't expecting that. I was the killer? Hey, wait, but that's impossible. Yeah. Although, that whip is actually quite... Ah! Hold your tongue and that l ludicrous remark you were about to make. Agent Long, are you seriously accusing her of murder? Yeah, I am. He doesn't appear to be joking. Hey sis, I remember that just before Ambassador Elva went to give his speech, he called you into his office, right? Yes, he did. But what does that have to do with anything? I'm getting that. Furthermore, in order to solve both cases, you moved around rather freely between Alabas and Bilal, did you not? And where is your evidence that I am the killer? I was just getting into that. Trust me, I'll show them to you in due time. Master Alba, in order for me to bring this case to a close, I'll need to inspect your office one more time. Will you grant me permission? With things as they are, I suppose I don't have much of a choice, do I? Good, then let's move out. Oh, don't even think about running away, sis. My pack will be keeping a close eye on you. You can bet your bottom dollar on that. <laughs> as if I would have any reason to flee. Just so we're clear, your logic had better be sound. Because I'll accept nothing short of a perfect explanation. She seems rather upset. Not that I blame her. <laughs> I expected that you'd accept no less. But we'll see how long you can keep that nose of yours stuck up in the air like that. Argh. Agent Lung, as someone related to tonight's case, I request that you allow me to take part. And so that I may clean up my superior's mess. <laughs> I guess I should. The more the merrier, especially when it's the peanut gallery. 
Oh, I'm in the I'm in in that case. I want to join in too. I still haven't seen what it looks like in the, in Alabas yet. Yeah, that's the reason you should be fucking. Oh my god. You like can? You gotta let me in too, pal. I can't sit around and do nothing like when Miss Von Karma's in trouble. Hey, Gummy, let's have a competition to see who can save her first, okay? Okay, I'll take you up on that. Oh yeah, I'm fired up and raring to go. As a detective, I don't believe this is something you're supposed to be excited over. Ha ha ha! Sounds like this is going to get real interesting. Ambassador Alba, I'll be bringing these kids along for the ride. Very well. But I'd like you to keep in mind that this will be your last chance. Hm. I'll have this whole mess cleaned up before you know it. Now, let's go. Okay, now, let's first go over the facts one more time. Manny Cochin's body was found over in the Secretariat's office in Babal. The weapon that took his life was one of Alabas's ornamental knives. And then the body of Damas II, Mr. Kashi No, was found here in, Al in the Alabastian's ambassador's office. Dorn, through our investigation, we found that the murder weapon was this Primaduck statue. And that this is actually Babal's statue. This case, no matter how I look at it. Sis, if it wasn't you, then there's no one else who could have pulled this off. Agent Lon, do you understand the full implications of what you are saying? Of course I do, sis, and I'm serious. You were on that trail of the smuggling ring, and you wanted any evidence you could find. And so, while people were distracted by the Atagarasu's appearance, you snuck in here, and that's when you two ran into each other. You and that other thief who took advantage of the confusion from the fire. Even if all that were true, how do you expect- how do you explain the movement of the weapons? <laughs> Don't worry, I plan to show that you're the culprit behind that too. You had permission to investigate both embassies at will. With that kind of free reign, you could have easily taken the weapons across country lines. Hey now! Look sis, I thought I already told you, I'm not messing around here. Arrgh! This case isn't directly tied to the smuggling ring, but she not certainly is tied to the smuggling ring. He's right in saying that she is a member of the smuggling ring. However, the connection between this case and the ring, could it not be deeper than what any of us can imagine? Grr. Let's get this ridiculous circus over with already. Francisca, you need to calm down, because you only know the facts of the Alabastian side of the case. I don't believe you can see the case as a whole, and there it therefore solve it. What? But don't worry, I am taking this seriously as well, and I will prove your innocence. That's the only way to be, Mr. Prosecutor. But can you come up with anything else that can top my hypothesis? Of course, your explanation has to solve the mystery of the moving weapons as well. Of course, and I will. Let us now delve into the truth behind the murder of Damas II. You do understand, don't you, Miles Edgeworth? This isn't just a confrontation against Agent Lung. If you can't figure out how the murder of Damas II is related to the smuggling ring, then it will mean the end of our investigation. As long as I have no good counter-argument to this hypothesis, then the best I can do is walk this thin typewriter and see what I can do. But first, I'm going to save my game. One of, Al one of Alabas' knives was used in Babal to murder Mr. Cochin, and the murder weapon in the killing of the mass second is Babal's premier statue. Somehow, these two objects were able to penetrate the two countries' impenetrable security. The only one who traversed the two countries just before and after the crimes was you. Well, as long as I can't explain how the weapons move about, Francisco will remain a suspect? You got it, Mr. Prosecutor, so why don't you stop giving me a hard time? Under these circumstances, who the heck can carry a weapon across country lines? I've worked through every possibility, but there's only one that's plausible. Your boss. Agent Long, what I've learned from you just now is that you've lost sight of yourself. You're a little butthurt about what happened to your subordinate. What are you talking about? By focusing too intently on that which is in front of us, we become blind to the truth. Don't tell me Long Z never said anything to that effect. You prosecutor, who do you think you are speaking about Long Z's proverb, proverbs like that? I don't need his proverbs because my words are all you need to hear to see the truth. Hold it. So you're saying that the Primadoc statue was also brought over by Francisca? Like I told you before, that's the only way it makes sense. And how exactly did she bring it over? I haven't figured that out yet. Oh, that's a rather weak statement, considering how sure you are. Maybe, but there is one thing I do know for sure. Somehow it happened! It. Impenetrable? I should hardly think so. You've seen the top of the wall between the two countries, right? Who in the world could cross over that? 
Yeah, not even I could climb over that thing with all that barbed wire. The only thing into either, the only way into our embassy is through the doors in the Theatrum Neutralis. So the only way for the knife and the Primarch statue to traverse the two countries is through those security camera equips. Well guarded doors. Oh. Objection! Duh. Agent Long, those two items are not the only two to cross the border tonight. Oh? The Mass II was killed with Babal's Primaduct statue, yes? Well, if that's the case, then tell me, where did Alabas's Primaduct statue go? To Babal? Precisely, and if the two statues really were switched, then this means that both statues were smuggled across the border at some point, which means that a total of three items were smuggled across the embassies. I guess so, but you know what? It doesn't matter the number of items, only that this is the only one who could have done it. Because the only person who went back and forth between Alabas and Bob and Babal is her. Is that really true? Was there no one else who traveled between the two countries? Actually, there was definitely another person, one who paid a visit to both sides of the wall. Is that really so, Agent Long? <laughs> what a lousy time to try and bluff your way out of this. I checked out what the guard said along with the security camera's footage. You're not going to overturn my hypothesis that easily. But suppose there was some other way other than through the theater doors. Other way? The other entity that managed to cross the border unharmed. By pointing out, it would open up a whole new possibility. And though I hesitate to bring this out, as long as this entity exists, the, possible, the impossible road becomes a possibility. Looks like you've got some clever idea in mind. I do, and I can show it to you through a single piece of evidence. Let's see the piece of evidence that will show me this other route. This piece of evidence will show another way to move between the two countries. Oh, dude. Agent Long, I'm sure you are familiar with this unforgettable photo. Tch, <laughs> that supernatural photo, like I said before. Humans can't fly. No, of course not. I understand that perfectly well. And don't start claiming that Sheena somehow grew wings either. I wouldn't dream of claiming that. And I won't allow you to take back what you said, eh, either. I'll say it again, it's not humanly possible to fly through the air without wings. So you'd better have a good explanation for this, Mr. Prosecutor. Uh, how can I prove who it was that flew through the air in this photo? Wait, not humanly possible. Eureka! Very well, you will have your explanation. Sounds like you have a good idea simmering inside that head of yours. Let's hear it. Oh, let me save! Fuck. Take that! Naturally, the shadow is the third smuggled object, the Primadux statue replica. You can't be serious. The Antarasu, or rather Kalisto Yu, dressed as Agent Shino, was inside Baval. She dressed the replica statue up in clothes and launched it through the air. <laughs> that is, uh... That is something. She dressed the replica statue up in clothes and launched it through the air! That is the stupidest fucking thing I have heard ever to come out of your goddamn mouth, Mr. Prosecutor. You left out a very crucial bit in your explanation. I know I did. She launched it through the air? Huh. And how exactly did she do that? Why was that? He was literally baring his fangs at me. So just before the murder, Francisco was called here, right into this very room. If that's the case, then that may be another avenue I can pursue. Agent Long, in order for me to answer that question, I will need to hear testimony from Miss Von Karma. Oh? What are you up to now, pretty boy? Earlier you mentioned something of interest to me. You said that just before the murder occurred, Miss Von Karma had been in this room because Ambassador Alba had called for her. And for that reason alone, you believe her to be the killer. Like, I was saying that I think Polano's the more obvious candidate here to be the ultimate villain but alba really he first put suspicion on himself i mean he was already suspicious because it had to be one of the two ambassadors because of diplomatic immunity which is i'm assuming what bad was referring to and that they're above the law other thing is when he tried to stop the investigation that seemed that seemed really sus really sus to have decided to do that when they were almost done determining what happened mm-hmm yeah, I don't think anything's gonna happen between your two countries at 3 a.m., sir. And for that reason alone, you believe her to be the killer. In that case, I believe it is my duty to ask her what, si what her side of the story is. <laughs> you really think a criminal would tell us the honest truth? How dare you! I've said numerous times there's absolutely no proof that I am the killer. Miles Edgeworth, don't tell me you suspect me too. 
I don't. However, I can't ignore the fact that you were in this room at one point in time, which is why I would like to hear about your movements in this room. Ugh. Francisca, I feel that I still don't have enough information, which is why your testimony is incredibly important to the outcome of this case. Why wouldn't she want to testify? All right. So, what would you like me to talk about? I'd like you to please testify to your movements in this room until the murder occurred. <laughs> All right, let's try this. Let, let's try this your way for a change. But if what she has to say turns out to be a waste of time, I'll place her under arrest faster than you can say no. Or sorry, how? How no? Hmm, as you wish. I'm I'm assuming we're gonna talk. We're gonna use the wire at some point, right? Because we still have it, which means it's relevant. So I'm guessing that might have something to do with how it was transported. As I said earlier, I was assigned to guard duty in the Alabastian Embassy. After I saw the Steel Samurai off on his way towards the Ambassador's office, I returned to the Rose Garden for a bit and checked up on the security station. After all the preparations were in place, I was called back by Ambassador Alba to his office. Francisca, I want us to make this clear from the very beginning. So what I wish to confirm is that the only t time span in which you were in this office was before the murder occurred, is that correct? Yes, of course. I see. Now, the only way that I can see for us to break out of this situation is to ask Francisca about her testimony in more detail. Hold it! I thought your duty was to fact-find anything you could about the smuggling ring. Yes, that was my job. But upon hearing that the Yatagarasu had sent a calling card to the embassy, Ambassador Alba called upon us to protect the, the embassy instead. That incident seven years ago? Or have you forgotten what happened here back then? Ugh. Anything related to that case we're involved in appears to be rather painful for her. Not exactly one I can readily forget myself. Hmm. It looks like you remember the case after all. Yeah, no shit. Somebody shot a bullet at me. Of course I do. I inspected every location, every possible escape route, and every aspect of the police's security detail. I did all that, then after that... Why did you need to confirm the degree of preparation for even the speech? For security's sake, of course. What other reason could I, could I have? No one knew just how the Yatagarasu had planned on getting in, right? Yes, I suppose you're right. And in the end, the Yatsugarasu did choose to appear in the Rose Garden, even if it did turn out to be nothing more than a shadow. Uh, who would have thought that she would use a shadow? Ah! Cal calm down, Francisca! She must still be nursing a grudge over the fact that she couldn't figure it out herself. Huh. Anyway, there was no one in the Rose Garden, and we were aware that the speech was set to start soon thereafter. At that time, the mass the second's body had yet to be found in this room, is that correct? That's right. But Ambassador Alba was there. One could hardly miss his rather large presence. Hmm. A criminal will say anything to get out of getting arrested. How do we know you're not lying? Well, if you need proof, I'd be happy to oblige you. And I mean, let's not... ignore the fact that you had an assistant that lied to you for how many years? To your face? Almost every time you talked. Your credibility isn't at determining who's lying and who's not isn't very good right now, Long. Seriously? Like I keep telling you. When I arrived at this office, Ambassador Alba was already here. He was standing by the flower box on the windowsill, watering his plants. I can attest to that. I remember speaking with the lovely lady around that time here in my office. <laughs> All right then. Add that statement to your testimony and let's hear some details. Ambassador Alba was in this room at the time, was he? When I arrived, Ambassador Alba was watering the flowers on the windowsill. For the sake of being thorough, I'd like to ask you something. How did you know that Ambassador Alba was watering his plants on th at the windowsill? What do you mean by that? Entrance to his room is on this side, however, the window is on the opposite side. If what you say is true, then when you entered the room, his body would have been like a wall. He would have been blocking your view of what he was doing. Isn't that not cur- Oh god, that sentence. Oh. Oh, Edgeworth. Oh, Edgeworth, no. Isn't that not correct? That is a sentence and a half, let me tell you. It's the double negative issue. I get what he's saying, but by saying it the way he did, he made it harder than it had to be to understand. That's why you don't use double negatives. When I do it, it's mostly for effect, as opposed to, like, 
it's because I think this is the best way to say it in terms of people being able to understand. You could have simply said, is that correct? Or in order for it to not be leading whatsoever, as you're always kind of leading when you're doing that, you could have simply asked then, wouldn't he have been blocking your view of what he was doing? Question mark, just leave it there. It's still yes or no. I suppose it was a bit hard to see around him, but fortunately for me, Ambassador Elba is not an immovable wall. I knocked before I entered, and as I did, he turned around to greet me with a watering can in his hand. Though it's only natural to believe that he was watering his plants, right? I suppose. After his greeting, we spent a little time talking about his flowers. He had obtained them himself and is growing them with the utmost care, you know. Yes, yeah, there are plants in this room. They're all like my children. Oh, it's is it because he's a tree? The passion flowers in the flower box on the windowsill are growing beautifully, too. All four of them are in full bloom. She really has a thing for flowers. Miss Von Karma, what did you say just now? I said that the flowers are growing beautifully. What about that statement do you not understand? What do I not understand? I do not understand why a certain thing is the way it is. Oh, that's interesting. An, appending, an, a, an appendage to an appendage? I think that's only happened one other time that I can remember. I'd like for you to append that statement in your testimony. Very well. Only two. Objection! Why are you? <laughs> I, 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 I really don't like it's, it's, it's a minor nitpick. Maybe not. It's not a nitpick, but it's a, it's only a minor criticism. But like, isn't he trying to help her out? And he's sitting here like, <laughs> you stupid fool. It's just proving someone wrong feels better than saving your sister. I, I guess so. Francisca, for some odd reason, your testimony, your testimony contradicts with this piece of evidence. It does appear that way. Wow. That was actually really good. Can we think of another person where they'd be like, you're wrong, and then they're like, yeah, you know what? It looks like I was wrong. Or there's some contradiction here. Ha, I knew it. I knew we couldn't trust your words, sis. Mr. Edgeworth! What are you doing discrediting Miss Von Karma like this? Yeah, sir. This is super counterintuitive. If you keep this up, she's gonna get taken away, sir. I remember the first time that happened in, I can't remember which game it was. Was it two where the game wanted you to essentially fuck your client up on the, like, as a witness? And you're like, why would I do this? This is entirely counterintuitive. All I've done is state what I saw. I have made not a single mistake in my testimony. Okay, that one seems like it was done intentionally. Cause how could, I have made not a single mistake in my te, I have not made a single mistake in my testimony is infinitely better. Whew. And for this, I am still under suspicion for murder. Is the number of flowers really all that important at this juncture, Miles? At the very least, it is a contradiction in this enigmatic case. One that I find hard to dismiss as irrelevant. Ha, huh, then let's hear it, Mr. Prosecutor. What does the number of flowers have to do with anything? What does it prove? I believe the answer to that will become clear if we are to examine the fl that flower box. How did this contradiction come about? There must be something behind the gr this discrepancy. There are my beloved flowers. I've grown them with the utmost care, except I lost two of them, I guess. So I ask that you please be gentle with them as you examine them, Mr. Edgeworth. Hmm, I understand. Nook and cranny. Hmm? This patch of soil looks as though it had something removed from it. This watering can has a rather robust design. Mr. Edgeworth, why are you telling us stuff we can clearly see for us? <laughs> Somebody finally said it. It took five games. It took five games, but somebody finally asked the question. Why are you just stating shit, like easily observable shit out loud? I believe I have just the piece of evidence you require. Oh, you do, do you? You have such confidence in that face of your current, in the, in the face of your current plight. But I highly doubt it'll let it last until the end. You howl like a wolf, Agent Long. But we'll see if you have any bite to back up that bark after you see the evidence. The truth the passion flowers reveal can be seen in this piece of evidence. I have no fucking idea. This? This is supposed to be the statue, isn't it? Even though it still looks nothing like the fucking statue. I don't think that's it. 
but I really want to try it. Sheena, who was supposed supposedly in Babao the entire time had these hair sticks on her. That look exactly like the plant supports in this flower box. Mmm, I guess at the top, but the colors look entirely different. In other words, I believe I believe it can be said that these hair sticks are in actuality. Support sticks for the passion flowers. <laughs> so what? Is this really all that important to the case? Of course it is. It means that we found yet another item that was smuggled in between the countries tonight. Aya! Think about it logically, Agent Long. These sticks were originally in Alabast. But somehow they wound up in Shina's hands, who was in Babao the whole night. So make no mistake, these sticks were smuggled somehow just like the knife and statue. Oh, hmm. Very well then. I want to hear from you exactly how they wound up in the bow. Agent Long, if you would please take a look at this and tell me its shape. It's just another stick, isn't it? Hmm. And so it is, but the shape of the support stick is what is important. For when they are used with something in this room, that's when it all comes into focus. And the object that completes the picture when used with the support sticks is... Um... Statue. This is hollow. Oh my god. You know, it takes a lot for me to feel the exact way, the exact same way as my opponent does in these games. This is one of those moments. Like, you could have looked into my mind and seen those exact words verbatim when I realized what was gonna happen. That's a crossbow. Wait, you're not really suggesting. I am. These hair sticks, or rather plant support sticks, they were made for perfect arrows. Aya! I've done it. I found the common thread that connects the two offices. They both have crossbows. <laughs> but this thread has yet to be completely untangled. Even using the arrows, how does this explain how the statues were transported? Launched on the crossbow, obviously. <laughs> Furthermore, who could it have been who fired these sticks as arrows? There must be a common thread that ties all of these things together. Miss Cute, Miss Prosecutor, hold up a second. I just suddenly realized this is all complete bullshit. You do realize what happens when you tie a statue to an arrow, right? They don't fly at all. So the battle statue was draped in Yatagarasu's clothes and then shot over here? <laughs> Is this making any sense as to why it's fucking stupid? <laughs> I honestly don't think the writers understood how insane this sounds. This is also the stupidest fucking plan I've I've heard of any uh, from any of these games so far in terms of what the villains were doing. Holy shit. Even if you fired the arrows from this side, they wouldn't go far with the statue tied to them. I don't think I need to tell you that the primitive statues don't didn't sprout wings. You're a realist after all, aren't you? It's not testimony. You're a realist, aren't you? Testimony for the official record. The primitive statues didn't sprout wings? <laughs> of course they didn't. Glad you understand. I feel much better already. I was afraid for a second that you were unaware of that crucial fact. That's only crucial because you're under the belief that wings are necessary to this situation. What? You need to free your mind a bit more and let it fly like a bird on the wind. God. Here, Agent Long, I offer you the blue pill. You can take this and go back to your narrow-minded bliss. Or you can open your mind with the red pill. The primitive statues flew, but not on a wing. Allow me a bit of your time and I'll explain this mysterious phenomenon to you. Well, we are in agreement that an arrow by itself would reach the other side, correct? But just the arrow by itself is pretty meaningless, don't you think, Mr. Prosecutor? Because the things they wanted to smuggle were a lot bigger than nothing. No, that's not necessarily true. What? What I need right now is not further discussion of my conclusions, it's the launching of my conclusions. What the shooter wanted to launch with the crossbow was not the statues themselves, but rather something a crossbow can launch that can be used to move statues. If it wasn't the statue that, th that was tied to the arrows, then what did the crossbow launch? Objection! 
don't don't point your head like that right now with this finally finally the crucial and logical piece of evidence the string obviously these villains are all macgyver clones i understand now Finally, we have reached the point, this point in our discussion where I completely lose my mind, for I present to you that which was carried by the arrow from the crossbow. <laughs> I get it now, Mr. Prosecutor. I can see exactly what you were trying to say. You're saying that the wire was tied to an arrow and then shot into Mr. Cochin's office. All the way from the fifth floor of the Alabastian Embassy. Down to the third floor of the Babylese industry, uh, industry embassy. If what you're claiming is what really happened, I can see how Alabas Primadex statue could be moved. Gravity could be used to move the statue down the, down the wire from the fifth to the third floor. But then, what about Babal's Primadex statue? The dark shadow in this photo is clearly flying away from Babal. Going the opposite way of gravity from the third floor of the Babylese embassy up to the fifth floor of the Alabash Embassy. How do you explain that? Ancient Long, the motion used behind this trick. I wonder if perhaps you have yet to envision how it works in your head? I don't, so. Motion, what motion? This is the motion that was employed to smuggle Babel's Primadex statue. I believe it was done via rotary motion. The two statues were transported simultaneously. Simultaneously, get real. The statues would collide somewhere along the way. Did I ever say that there was only one line of wire between the two offices? You shot an arrow with the two ends of the wire tied of a wire tied to it. A circular belt can be formed. Long Z says, "Don't object and call a success what is beyond reasonability." Taking into account the tension differences between the two wires. The top one would sag too much to the point where the statues would collide anyway. Agent Long, as you know, the Primadex statue is a one-of-a-kind national treasure, and the fact that Babal's statue is a hollow replica of the real statue, it would naturally be lighter than the real one, meaning that my idea is very possible. Long Z says, Oh! <laughs> Here is what I believe happened. Miss Yu and her mystery co-conspirator set themselves up in the two different rooms. The co-conspirator bridged the rooms by shooting, shooting the two ends of the wire on down on one arrow. When the two of them covered the statues and proceeded to transport the statues, after the switch was completed, another arrow was fired, carrying the other end of the wire down to Babao, where it was to be disposed of. And to do that, Miss Yu hid it inside the grandfather clock, QED. <laughs> uh, 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 same. This proves it, right, Agent Lo No. It doesn't. It doesn't. Then I'm not the killer? Not yet, sis. I still haven't had my dessert yet. Right, Mr. Prosecutor? The proof is in the pudding, as it were. Pudding is a nice dessert. So, do you think you can do it? Can you prove that what you said is what happened? Because remember, if you can... I'll be taking a certain someone back home with me as a souvenir. I agree that as long as there is no proof, my hypothesis remains just that. However, what I have laid out is no mere hypothesis, for there is one more piece of evidence. One more? This should be interesting. You think you have a piece of evidence that will turn your hypothesis into fact? Well then, let's see it, Mr. Prosecutor. Now then, I believe this is what made the circular belt transportation method possible. Oh no. No, that's not possible. That's not- that's not possible. That's- no. It's not this, right? It, it's not the fan, right? Take that. Wow, looks like you dropped another bomb on us, yeah? The last piece to the trick are two pulleys. Precisely, the ceiling fans doubles as pulleys in this case. And thanks to the fact that there's- I didn't, I got more water. If this were a Saturday stream, I'd be getting fucked up right now. And thanks to the fact that there is one installed in each of the offices, the ceiling fans made for the perfect pulley set for the wire to run on. God, no, it does not. Uh, 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 uh. 
This must be it. This is how the smugglers bypass the impenetrable security. Ha 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 ha! You really are something else, Mr. Prosecutor. I bet you figured it all out already, haven't you? You know how, who the big hotshot that set up this real-life stage show is, don't you? The real mastermind behind this case. Well, don't you dare make this wolf wait for its food. Why are you so hesitant, Miles Edgeworth? You can't say who it is. Why don't you present something like you always do? A single point of the finger here in this case will explode into an international incident. However, it's already too late for me to stop the forward momentum. It appears I have no choice now but to rush in. There's a piece of evidence that will point us to who the mysterious mastermind is. The smuggling could not have been possible without the use of the crossbow. Furthermore, the arrows that were shot by the crossbow were plucked, as it were, from the flower box in this very room. They were planted so long ago that the passion flowers had the time to grow so big that Miss Von Karma didn't even notice the arrows when she visited the room today. On top of all this, the fact that the culprit knew that both offices had ceiling fans tells us that the person has very detailed information on the embassy's layout. So as you may have already guessed, the person I am accusing of hatching this plan is the person who grew the flowers in the flower box with the utmost care. Thus, it can only be you, Quirkus Alba. Are you out of your mind, Miles Edgeworth? I'm certain of what I am saying, and I am sure that he is the culprit. <laughs> Tell me, Mr. Prosecutor, what was the ambassador trying to accomplish by doing all that stuff you just outlined? Why in the world would he need to use a trick like that? I understand your need to doubt me. However, there is one thing that stands out to me as very odd. Just one thing, huh? This one single end result Ambassador Alpha sought to obtain if we were to examine the focus of this complex trick, I believe we will finally find the answer to everything. Everything will become clear once we examine this piece of evidence. Fuck, I wanted to save! Damn it! Oh, I guess it could be this statue? Because all we did was use Luminol. Actually, no, this one makes more sense because this was the hollow one, right? Yeah, 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 I think I just picked, I picked the wrong, well, let's see. So I was on the right track with the statue, but I mixed my statues up. It's kind of weird how they present it. Like, oh, used to be real. If it's the one statue, it's either real or it's not. So you would just have to acknowledge that the Abelas statue is in Babal and vice versa, as opposed to the properties of the statue somehow changed. I don't fully understand the reasoning had the situation been the reverse. However, to go through the trouble of swapping the real Primanek statue for the fake, I sense a very shady reason for such a bizarre action. And who better to ask for that reason than King Primodox himself? I see. Ambassador will be examining that statue now, with or without your permission. Take a look at this area around the base of his neck. It looks like a gap. Hey, you're right. Maybe it's meant to be some kind of secret? Perhaps it's possible to open the statue from the gap in this... in its construction. What? Hurry it up and open it, Miles. All right, here goes. Wow, it really did open up. Hey, what's this thing that fell out? Mm, I believe a more thorough examination of it is required. It's the mints, right? What in the, is this? Hey, is this what I think it is? It's a plate for making counterfeit bills. Somehow it appears that we've at long last arrived at the exit to this complex labyrinth. We finally hold within our hands one of the counterfeit money plates and the reason why the replica was smuggled from into Alabas to begin with. The Primodox statue can only be handled by the Ambassador or the Secretariat. And the replica is nothing more than a hollow shell covered in gold. These two circumstances make the statue the ideal object in which to hide contraband. After receiving the statue containing the counterfeit plate from Sheena, the Ambassador had the misfortune of accidentally running into Bass the Second. Surprised by the thief, the Ambassador raised the replica statue to Bass the Second and... Then, in order to frame the steel samurai of the murder, he covered the samurai sword in blood. Well, Ambassador Alba? You're the leader of the smuggling ring? My country is a mess, and it's all because of you? You're the one who killed Damas II? Answer us. I never thought, never thought you would figure things out to this level. 
However, there is one point I disagree with you on. The head of the smuggling ring was... Mr. Cochin. Quit screwing around. I have no sympathy for someone who would try to pass the guilt onto a dead man. There is one thing I'm sure of, it's that you're the real ringlinger, Quirkus Alba. Not good to speak with such subjectivity, you know, Agent Long. Subjectivity? My conclusion is anything but, and is the result of logic and investigation. Logic and investigation? Seconds ago, only seconds ago, you were ready to arrest Miss Von Karma. I don't think we can give such flip-floppy logic any real weight, do you? <laughs> yeah. Get dunked. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like you still don't get why I came back. Excuse me? You see, the reason I came back is so that I could sink my fangs in your wrinkly old neck. From the very beginning, my real target has been you. Did he just really pull a... Uh, no, that's, that's what, that was always, that, that's, that's always what I was trying to do, ha <laughs> ha, and everybody's just like, oh, that's what I always mean, meant to do, I had you right where I wanted you the whole time, <laughs> I love how he changes it and he gets people to believe him, it's pretty hysterical, Agent Long, I demanded an, an explanation, sorry sis, I didn't mean to put you through all that, you are bullshitting to the extreme, He's like, oh shit, they're actually buying it. All right, I gotta make up something real quick. <laughs> Sorry to have put through you, put you through all that mess. No hard feelings. It was only business. I knew you were innocent from the very beginning. <laughs> you did? Oh my god, no, don't buy this. I knew this. This whole incident had been meticulously planned and prepared for. So naturally, the occupant of this room, Ambassador Alba, seemed the most suspicious. But without the ambassador's permission. He couldn't get in to take another look around. So that's what all this was about. Very well, I will forgive you. But in exchange for using me as bait, you will take some responsibility and help us find the truth. Agent Long for giving me such a great opening. I thank you. You know, I just knew, Miss Prosecutor, that somehow if we were able to find some proof by investigating this room, you'd be able to figure out the real culprit with your special brand of logic. Well, the evidence detectives collect combined with the logic of a prosecutor. That's just as it should be in a prosecutor detective team, right? Now they're best friends. He believes in bullshit lie. <laughs> I don't know about all that. But one thing I do know is that I'm itching to see that old man get what's coming to him. Oh, oh you're quite scary when you ought to be, aren't you? Hey, you were the one who was planning to use me to push all the guilt on the sis. But unfortunately for you, you misjudged me. Agent Long, I wish for you to stop trying to intimidate me. What we need right now is evidence and proof. I wonder if you have what is necessary to prove that I am the head of the smuggling ring? Objection! Don't be such a sore loser. You really are the head of the smuggling ring. And you should acknowledge your crimes with dignity. Dignity? There's nothing more than a fool's ins insincere display of strength. You really wish for me to acknowledge my crimes. And I would like to first see s some of this thing you call evidence. Gah. I tell you, I knew nothing, really. I didn't even know that a counterfeit plate was hidden inside that statue. Objection. You swamped the real statue that vested in your community the authority to rule for a fake? It doesn't make any sense that you didn't know anything. It doesn't make sense? Where, where doesn't it make sense? Can you prove that it doesn't make sense? Yeah. He's really got us. He's turned the entire situation around against us. The proof that Interpol has been after which points to this man as the ringleader. If we can somehow find that proof now, then we can see to it that justice is finally served. Is there nothing I can use to break this case wide open? The trump card and the videotape with those two items. We might be able to finally bring this man down. But, the card is evidence from a case that Mr. Faraday hid away in secret and the tape was stolen by Detective Bad from the police. They're both illegal evidence. No matter what, a protector, no matter what, a protector of the law can't be allowed to use such pieces of evidence. Is this really who you should be thinking of right now? Needless to say, we Von Karmas are commanded to achieve nothing but victory and by any means necessary.
The only way to bring someone like that to justice was to do so outside of the courts. That's what we thought at the time. I no longer follow the path of Manfred von Karma, and I won't follow the path of the Yatagarasu. This leaves me with what? What creed will I believe in? If I want to pursue the truth, then I will sully my hands in illegality. And if I want to pursue justice, then I will lose the truth. What is the law and what is justice? What path is a prosecutor supposed to follow? <laughs> they set up the title for the next game! Oh shit! I I'll give this game credit here. This is probably the least sure I've been about one of these decisions where they've given you either or the, uh, in any of the games I've played so far. I'm honestly not sure. Because if we don't use the trump card, maybe there's some other way around it, but I don't know. But using the trump card is like, just not supposed to do that. Let's be dirty. There's no limit to the law. Any limit that exists was set there by man. Well, the law was set there by man too. When a person goes beyond that limit, then the law too crosses into new territory. For what reason were laws invented? The answer to that is what I must now show. Ambassador Alba, I wonder if you might recognize this. Oh, I wonder what that card is. I've never seen that before in my life. It's a directives card used by the ringleader of the ring to relay instructions to his subordinates. Oh, is that what it is? This card was sent to the real culprit behind the KG-8 incident 10 years ago. A man by the name of Mr. Manny Cochin. Oh, so why do you have such a card in your possession? Because it was hand-delivered to me by a certain great thief, the Yatagarasu. The Yatagarasu gave you that to you? Don't talk nonsense, so let's be serious, Mr. Edgeworth. Do you have any proof that the card contains directions from the ringleader? Well, if you know that the card is not the only thing I was given. What? This contains security footage that was shot just before the start of the KG-8 incident. KG-8 incident? The card in the video. These two pieces of evidence are what will seal your fate. Oh, very interesting. I must admit, I am very curious now. Very curious indeed in these case-deciding pieces of evidence you presented. So, what is this interesting thing that you wanted to show me? Trump card and the videotape. These two pieces of evidence together make for the ultimate hand. And this is where the real meaning behind Detective Bad's words will be realized. Detective Gumshoe. Yes, sir. What you see here is security footage shot just before the KG-8 murder, murder occurred. From this footage, we know that the card is a directives card from the smuggling ring. This is the section that proves the card was used to relay an order. What do you mean? The card itself? As you can see, Mr. Cochin is holding the card in his right hand. I see. The killer is indeed holding a card with the exact same design on it. But that card and the one you have... Because they look the same doesn't mean that they are, does it now? Ah, but there is a very easy way for me to prove that they are in fact one of the same. All we have to do is simply take a look at this. What it actually says, right? A section of the text has been obscured by blood, but it's clear the writing is Kadopian. According to Detective Bad, Silence CCU is what is written here, along with the method to be used and where she lived. The evil intent displayed in this writing will not go unpunished. The dark red, this dark red blood, yes, this is your proof, proof that the orders on this card were played out in that terrible tragedy. The blood belonged to the victim of the KG-8 incident. A bit of DNA testing, we can very easily verify that as fact. You have no objections? I'd like for you to take a look at this next piece of footage. This car that passed by in front of the victim's apartment building. It's an official Kadopian government car. What? Detective Gumshoe, if you could please magnify the footage. This area of the footage directly links the smother the smuggling ring to Kadopia. Either this or this. Take that. The shape of this pocket, and the directives card in it, tells us that without a doubt this person in this car is Mr. Cochin. Grrk! The license plate on the car was also captured by the security camera. And with it, we can easily find out who was sitting in this car on that day 10 years ago. Grr. Which is why I can say with confidence that you were riding in this car on that day. Ah! <laughs> You've done well, boy, to make it this far.
However, about your claim that I was riding in the car at the time, that's going to be mighty difficult to prove. Also, the Principality of Cradopia no longer exists. So naturally, all records from that time period also no longer exist. That arrogance. It really means is that he's already erased all traces of them. Are we finished here, boy? The only weapon I have left for me now is this piece of footage. There must be something here that I can use against him. This is the only other thing that's here! What the? Ambassador Alba. Yes, what is it? Oh, it's his thing, because he's fingering it. I'm sorry. This is my attorney's badge. <laughs> I like to think that with one pip of health, I'm like, I'm all, I'm Edgeworth, but I'm like beat up, dirtied, torn Edgeworth from like anime after somebody's ass been beaten, but they're still fighting. He's like, I will find the truth. And here it is. You were once an army man in the service of Kenopia. It was you who made the many missions you participated in success. This is correct? Why the sudden backhanded praises, boy? Although, to be sure, the brilliant medals on my breast were awarded to me during the area of Kenopia. But now I am the only one who owns this particular medal. Holy shit, the arrogance and vanity. Dude literally just gave himself away. Oh, like, don't say that. Keep your dick in your pants and just don't say it. In that case, the only person who could have it could be who is sitting in this car is you. How do you figure that? By the metal captured here in this footage, dumbass. It clearly, it's, it is clearly the same exact metal as the one on your chest. How did you not notice that, you moron? What? This is how it will be, but I won't look back. For this is the path that I have chosen. The prosecutor's path, like the sequel. <laughs> Uh, you moved me with your devotion to this case, Mr. Edgeworth. Why is he taking such an arrogant stance with me? That was looking possible, isn't it? <laughs> For a lot of you to have come this far. It looks like I just might have to lose our little game this time. You might lose the game this time? You don't get another round, Mr. Ambassador. Is that a fact? Very well. I've decided to confess and admit my guilt. You're going to confess? Yes, didn't you ask me that I'd be dignified about it? Why are you surprised? I will accept whatever punishment that may come as a result. What the? Regarding the Damascus second murder, I admit it. I did it out of self-defense. And claiming that it was justified self-defense? Damascus second, second attacked me and I felt that my life was in danger. If I hadn't done what I did, I might be the one you found dead and shit out of him. You know, that's still true. He could have been doing that and then also it still could have been in self-defense. Um, although, I don't... I'd have to go back and look at the unclean hands doctrine. Because the two crimes are... There's a rule uh, where if you're doing something illegal, that you can't be considered to have unclean hands in the case where something wronged you. Because you shouldn't have been doing that illegal thing in the first place to have put yourself in a position to do that. But I don't remember if it applies in this situation. I don't think it does. Also because even if he wasn't committing that crime, he could have still just been in his office and it was going to happen anyways. <laughs> what a pathetic performance. <laughs> I'm not giving you one. Wow, you two really know how to laugh at inappropriate times. If you wish to claim it was justified self-defense, then we will need some evidence. It's always the evidence with you, isn't it? But if that's what you require, I'll provide it. That man left a mark on me when he attacked. What? I don't particularly want to show it off, but... This is proof that it was in self-defense. Why are you cheesing like that? I'm an old man and sometimes I don't pay enough attention when I should. But the Master Second didn't have a single weapon on his body. What was that? Pshaw. Hold on. There's nothing to get worked up over because I hid the weapon. Okay. That would definitely be used against him. You hit it? I'm sorry, but as you know, a murder is a murder, even if it's in self-defense. I couldn't let it become public, seeing as how I am an ambassador. This is the weapon you see. You seek my special bonsai trimming shears. Oh, it's covered in blood. He was trembling quite badly during our struggle. That's when he grabbed the shears that were sitting in my office and attacked. So you see, it was an act of self-defense. Is he right, Mr. Edgeworth? Since he has both the wound and the weapon that caused it, it's enough to declare it so. 
because there's no way he could have stabbed himself, right? Talk to the talk to the hand. No way! Oh, which reminds me, I guess there's still one more accusation I need to resolve. Smuggling and counterfeiting. Unfortunately, all that is my secretary's doing. I had no knowledge it was going on. Stop spewing nonsense. You're trying to throw my investigation under the bus in your desperation. You want to get real honest. Everything in this case can be connected to you. The murder of Damas II was done in self-defense. In my trials, no man escapes his crime alive. I, I, from what I understand, that's blatantly false. Perhaps so, if you were my opponent in court. However, there is one very important fact that I think you may have forgotten. And what is that? Is that the thing that I mentioned a billion years ago? Ah! Uh, ah! Uh, that's what you mean. Extraterritoriality. That's right. This embassy sits on what is effectively Alabastian soil. The only trial that is to be held will be held in Alabast. Therefore, the crime I just admitted to will never be tried in your courts. Agent Long, what is the Interpol stance on this? Agents investigate. That's our job. The judgment of people who have confessed to their crime. That's the court's job. Grant, I've already confessed to all of my crimes, Agent Lang. Long? Oh, sorry. Furthermore, by the very nature of my position, I have full extraterritorial rights. These rights are effective even on your country's soil. Therefore, no matter where a crime may take place, I will never stand trial in one of your courts. That arrogance and your expression, that's nothing like the face of someone who's ready to accept the consequences. Don't tell me you have your own country's judicial, judicial system eating right out of your hands. These crimes you all speak of so, so seriously of. To me, this has all been nothing more than a game. You may chase me out of this embassy with your accusations, but it's no big deal. Alabas has numerous other embassies in other countries around the world. All you would accomplish is you would change the backdrop of our little game. These two layers of protection that extraterritoriality provides him. This is why he is one of those who cannot be brought to court. You see now, don't you? I live in a whole different world than you. Now, if you excuse me, I need to go and fetch your eviction papers. Ah! Is there nothing we can do? In the end, we didn't have enough authority to bring him to justice. I can't believe that even though we know he's the boss, we can't lay a finger on him. I know. Hey, Mr. Prosecutor, sorry to skip out on you, but I've got some business to take care of. We can't even give an evil guy like him a slap on the wrist. Then what the heck were laws created for? What good are they? The law can't help us. Then I'll go as the Yatsugarasu and take care of this myself. Don't you dare. Mr. Edgeworth, sorry, that was a bit too harsh. I know how you feel, sir. We're trying to take on an ambassador, after all. And he did tell us earlier to get out of the theater. He has... No! 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 This is neutral, right? I was under the impression that neither of them had authority here in the theater. That this was neutral ground. You generally... If there's neutral ground, you generally can't say, well, we can both tell you to get out. No, it's not generally... Well, maybe that's how they've decided it works, but that's not generally how it works. It generally means that neither party would have authority in that area. This is kind of their country, I guess. But I feel like I've been slapped across the face for just doing my job. Should I retreat for now and formulate a better plan, plan of attack? Come on, everyone. We can't give up yet. Okay. I want you to think about something for a sec. We've never let up for even a second, and as long as we don't stop investigating, we might find the rotten treasure hidden here. She's right. Come on, Mr. Edgeworth. You're right, Kay. Very well, let us reopen the investigation and see what we can find. Come on, Kay. Right behind you. Okay, then I'll go check out Babao a bit more, sir. I have something that I need to investigate further in Alabast. Master Alba seemed agitated over something. There are two special circumstances that surround the ambassador. First, the embassy itself has extraterritorial rights. If something happens on, on Alabastian soil, we are unable to legally prosecute him. Cool, it sounds like embassies are the perfect place to steal whatever you want. And murder Damas II, run a smuggling operation, and make counterfeit bills, apparently. It's gotta hit him for something he didn't do on Alabast soil. But I thought all the counterfeiting was done by Mr. Cochin and Babao. Yes, he apparently used the embassy's coupon printing press to do it. Wouldn't conspiracy to commit fraud or whatever, whatever charges you'd be dropping on him for the counterfeit billing, wouldn't it have technically happened on... Just because he wasn't physically present on Baval's soil, he still committed the 
he still violated Babali's crime with an accomplice in Babal. So wouldn't that technically be something that's off of Albashton soil? I don't, I, I know very little about extraterritoriality and immunity and stuff, just the very basics. Well, it's the same story over there anyway. The Val also had extraterritorial rights. Which brings me to my next point. The ambassador's extraterritorial rights. Those rights are effective even in our own country. Really? No matter what happens, he can never be tried in our courts. He retains some very special rights indeed. Basically, no matter what wrongs he may commit, we can't bring him to trial here. I guess we really don't stand a chance, do we? Hmm, might stand a chance if we can somehow nullify either one of his special rights. This was taken just before the two ambassadors gave their bouquets to the Steel Samurai. Wait, is it just my imagination? Or is there something in this picture that I've seen before? Nook and Cranny! The knife was in the bouquet. I see, okay. Bell's national symbol is the butterfly and Alabas is the flower. It would appear that someone is employing the old hide a tree in the forest trick. What are you mumbling to yourself about? Wait, what? The handle on this knife! Ah! Yes, it's the handle that was supposed to be on the blade that killed Mr. Cochin. The weapon that killed him was carried through the Theatrum Neutralis. And the very bouquet Ambassador Alba was carrying. Looks like one of the flower petals is missing. Oh, and take a look at the weapon itself! It's missing the same exact petal! The knife of this phone is most definitely the same as this murder weapon. I feel like there's anything incredibly obvious here. We know that the counterfeit bills were printed using the embassy's press, but the necessary materials such as the Babylon's ink and paper must have been hidden in a secure location. But what do you think would have happened if the renovation had begun? Well, he probably had to find a better hiding place or get rid of it all. Right, so we can assume that the renovation was the cause of the plate and Bill's disposal. The reason Mr. Cochin was killed as the ringleader of the smuggling operation? Based on what we know, who do you think was the one with the most to gain? Ah, uh... The one person who has been erasing all evidence of the smuggling operation. From both embassies, the co-conspirator who was mopping up and mopping up Ambassador Alba. Alba had a very strong motive to kill Manny Cochin. The cause of Ambassador Alba's agitation. The rotten treasure we may find. And the motive for killing Mr. Cochin. Miss Yu said it herself that she didn't kill anyone tonight. If we were to take her words at face value, then the reason for the ambassador's nervousness can only be one thing. He didn't want us to discover the real circumstances under which Mr. Cochin was killed. And you mean Ambassador Alba's the real killer? Or at least the conspirator of to kill. One of the co-conspirators. But I thought the two of them were friends! Maybe they were, but what if Mr. Cochin was the one who first betrayed their friendship? Oh, I get it. Wasn't Mr. Cochin pushing really hard for Mr. Pal Palano to be the ambassador after the reunification? Yes, and that was the real reason why he wanted to steal Alabas' Primadux statue. Oh, that's kind of that's kind of touching, actually. He was so caught up and swayed by Mr. Palano's earnest leadership that he was willing to betray his the leader of his entire smuggling ring just so that Mr. Palano could be the real ambassador, like the the ambassador of Kadopia. Also seems really stupid, but can't help but admire that a little bit. So Mr. Cochin hired Damas II to go steal it for him. But when Ambassador Alba found out what he was up to, he killed Mr. Cochin? There's definitely a possibility at this point. Those two really were thinking of no one but themselves. The question now is how did he do it? Ambassador Alba was an alabast. Mr. Cochin's body was discovered in Babao, right? Right, and that is what we must solve next. A place where the Alabastian ambassador, a ambassador, am ambassador, that's a new word that I just created, was likely to meet the Babalese Mr. Cochin. The place where the where Ambassador Alba happened to have committed the murder is... Oh, I see, I see, I see. Where they were likely to meet would be in the neutral territory. That makes sense. Take that. Fair enough. The only place that makes sense is here at the Theatrum Neutralis. What? Here? The Goodwill event was being held here today, correct? So the only place that both of them would have been in is here. If that's the case, then everything changes. This theater isn't actually Alabastian land. So that wipes out one of those extraterritorial rights he has. 
It makes logical sense in which case, it is a reason for us to investigate further. So what should we check out? Let's see. I believe we should check it. the immigration records for both Abelas and Babel post haste. Babel's records should be easy to obtain, however the problem will be Alabas. I wonder if they would allow us to see their records despite the order to vacate. I already have them, you fucking lame. I'm already one step ahead of you, Miles Edgeworth. Francisca. I have here the security footage from both Alabas and Babal. How did she get over to Babal to get the tape without us noticing that she- Okay. You would do well to take a look at its contents. You move fast. Like, literally, I didn't see you dash through this room. What's your power level these days? Avant Karma strives to be perfect in every way. It's not in my nature to keep on re retreating like this. I took the liberty of looking over the Babal investigation reports as well. From now on, you will make no excuse to back down or say that we can't solve this case. Well, I'm sorry about earlier. We won't be beaten, because my cute little subordinate is going to try his very best, isn't he? Didn't she patronize me enough already for a lifetime? So this video contains footage from Alabas immigration screening er, immigration screening area? I really hope there's something in there we can use. Yeah. I feel like you didn't even need to add that line, personally. Like, no shit. Wouldn't something about this lump's shape strike you as odd? Huh? Isn't it supposed to be this shape? No, there is clearly something odd about this the bulge. I would know. If only we had the push card itself, we could compare and confirm my hunch. Next, let us check the footage from Babel's security camera. I hope it shows us something good. Oh, Jesus Christ. No shit ca No, I I hope it shows us something bad. Louie, there wasn't a single si sign of a suspicious person or anything. That right there is the contradiction. Huh, did I miss something? You didn't miss anything. Because there was nothing to miss. However, that what is missing is the image of Mr. Cochin entering his own country. Wasn't his body found in Babel? It would appear that the true face of our final puzzle has finally revealed itself. Oh dear! Ambassador Alba, and many hired goons, it looks like. I thought I'd ask you and your, for you and your group to vacate the premises, Mr. Edgeworth. Actually, I thought I should let you know that this theater sits on, your country, on my country's soil. You've had your fun, and I've enjoyed our little game. I dare say that you've even achieved a new high score. However, once you've recorded a score, the same game can never be replayed again. You understand what I'm saying to you? Your game is done, and it's game over. No. Objection. Where do you think you're going at this time of night? After admitting my crime, I was overcome with regret. So I'm heading to the airport now to return home. <laughs> what a coincidence. I'm afraid I can't let you do that. There are still too many issues we need to discuss with you. You can't stop me, Mr. Edgeworth, and you know it. Ugh. Oh. Uh, please, may I have a little bit of your time, Ambassador Alba? Ambassador Polano? Even just a teeny tiny bit is fine with me. The already stained relationship between our countries and is in a precarious situation, you know? Very well. If you insist. I'll play just one more round with them and see what they want. Not that they'll get any further. Master Polano. Mr. Edgeworth, all I wish for is the normalization of relationship between our two countries. There is one person standing in the way of that dream. I... I believe in you. You'll do what's right. Thank you for your vote of con- Talk to the hand! Now then, what is it you wanted to ask me about? I do have a flight to catch after all. So I'm afraid I'm gonna have to limit you to just one question. So you know what that means, wink wink. If you have a save feature so that you don't, so you can retry after game overing, wink wink, now is the time to do it. That's more than enough because I ha only have one question anyways. I want to hear your alibi about how you couldn't have killed Mr. Manny Cochin. Oh, I see. You seem to have a good hand this time around. This should be fun. This really is the very last chance we have to bring him down. Somehow I don't believe that. You can ask me one question, and by that, I mean it's time to engage in testimony. 
Frankly, I still don't understand why am I being placed under suspicion here. Under your hypothetical scenario, Mr. Coach and I were fellow smugglers. But to get to the point, I was in Alabaster the whole time. So it's simply not possible for me to have killed him in Babao. That is my alibi. Until you tell us the truth, I refuse to budge an inch from where I'm standing. That's actually... Bullshit, he did answer your one question. Just, you don't like the answer. Oh, very well, I'll play with you just a little longer. Miles Edgeworth is my subordinate and representative of this country's prosecutors. You are forbidden to lose. Of course, that is something I've understood from the start. That guy's the one who ordered my father killed, isn't he? Yes, I believe so. The goal of the first Yagatarasu was the capture of the smuggling ring's leader. My father and Uncle Bad, their legacy will live on through me. So that's why we just gotta catch him, right? And by me, I mean you. Yeah, 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 that's that's right. We will, uh-huh, sure. Mm -hmm. Now, Ambassador Elba, let's have a, uh, let's have the at the truth now, shall we? <laughs> Uh, no matter how many times you ask, my answer remains the same. This case should have already ended. It should have wrapped it up around the time that you was taken away. Found a way to wrap that up then. Condense more of it. This is the second point in which it should probably be wrapped up after fucking him up. But I'm sure they'll find a way that we either cannot fuck him up or, oh my god, there's more information now to pad it out even longer. Right, it's not possible for you to have killed him in Babal, but that's not the point. So what do I show? Do I show that he was in here and he wasn't in Alabast the whole time? Or do I show that it's not really that we're talking about Babal where you have you could have killed him? They want me to go after the motive first. Hold it. Are you serious that just because you were partners that you had no motive to kill? Well, you're following your hypothetical scenario, so it's a logical conclusion. <laughs> like he's not going to admit it himself that he was in leagues with Mr. Cochin. I suppose not, but I do know his relation to the smuggling ring and to Mr. Cochin. You mean he's the ringleader and that Mr. Cochin was a subordinate, right? Correct, but I know more than just that. Ms. Von Karma, I'm sure you remember the safe in Mr. Cochin's office, correct? Yes. The safe had two compartments to it, didn't it? Yes, and why do you think those stolen goods were being stored in Mr. Cochin's office? Be because he was trying to cheat Ambassador Alba behind his back. So Mr. Cochin didn't turn the goods over, but decided instead to keep them for himself? I suppose that's possible. It seems to me that both men were only concerned with their own wealth and well-being. And that means that maybe they didn't have a trusting relationship after all. When Ambassador Alba had to gain, I believe that is his motive for killing Mr. Cochin. What are you people whispering about amongst yourselves over there? Oh, I'm sorry to have kept you waiting. Now then, let's continue with your testimony. Oh, they didn't have a trusting relationship. Objection. Right. Okay. So, the step before, once again. This one makes more sense, I think. You want to know, I believe you did have a motive to kill. It was because Mr. Cochin had betrayed you. But you had your own reason, too. Namely, you wanted to pin the smuggling all on him. Evil begets evil. And because you were trying to test each other, turned into this mess. I don't believe this. You have a bad penchant for telling tall tales, Mr. Prosecutor. And if you're not, then I suppose you have some proof to support your argument? I never use guesswork in moving my cases forward. It has been proven that this note was written by Mr. Cochin's hand. Can we take a look at it? The content of the note is a request calling for the theft of Alabas' Primadux statue. Huh. By killing him and pushing all the guilt for the smuggling onto him, you are always spotless. I believe you understand what I'm driving at. You had more than a few reasons to kill him. Objection, you only named two. That's a couple, and not a few. Are you finished with your hypothesizing? Excuse me? I suppose I did have a motive. Even so, a motive or a thought alone can't kill. Isn't that right? I don't expect them to resort to playing the semantics game with me. It appears that this is where the real battle will begin. I should have assumed that they were going to drag this case out as much as possible, which means we always play the semantics game. Now then, if you excuse me... What? Wait. I told you at the very beginning, didn't I? You only get one question. Master Alba, if you could please give us just a little bit more of your time. It doesn't matter what kind of man Manny was, he was my subordinate. That's why I would like for us to figure out the real cause of his death. As something for to, about to, to figure out, and something to which I have no relationship. Oh no! Now he's even turning down a request from Ambassador Polano. 
I'm very sorry, but it seems that now even my voice falls on death ears. There's no need for you to apologize, Ambassador Polano. I must find some way to stop him from leaving. If there are no further objections in that case, please allow me to return home. Hold it right there, Ambassador Alba. Okay. Like I said, Mr. Edgeworth, Yatsugrasu's legacy will live on through me. Yes, but how do you suggest we stop him from leaving? You just leave that to me! Ambassador Alba, do you recognize this? No, and why should I recognize that tattered old organizer? This is a clue my father, Burn Faraday, left for us. Did you say Burn Faraday? Mr. Faraday's organizer. Don't tell me this is the one from the second KG-8 incident. The one in which he wrote about the Yatsugarasu's key? Yes, this organizer belonged to the prosecutor you had Miss You kill seven years ago. <laughs> I have no idea what you were talking about. You say that like it was related to me. Inside this organizer, he wrote up every detail of every evil thing you did. What an amusing little girl you are, but that sort of trickery won't work on me. You don't believe me, then take a look at this. Now what is that toy there? That's... This thievery device was used by the Yatsugarasu, or rather by my father. Why? <laughs> I mean, it's cool, but where's the wind coming from? Yeah, I wonder if, like, I talk like this normally in court, except for when I object to, like, blah, 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 blah. OBJECTION! Everybody's like... What? It's sort of twang to it. OBJECTION! Oh, it's, his, his objection's hilarious. I love it. And now it's not blowing anymore, apparently. Seven years ago, he used this when he snuck into this embassy. What? These two pieces of evidence that hold information the Yatsugarasu dug up on you. If you go home now, I won't hesitate to send it all to Alabas right behind you. Little girl, get to the point. I want you to go up against Mr. Edgeworth one more time. If you win, then I'll hand over these two pieces of evidence. Yatsugarasu, ever the thorn in my side. Hey, does that organizer really contain any information on his dirty dealings? It's nothing case-breaking, really. Aha, uh -huh. then it was all just a bluff! Oh, well then what the f- Come to get out of here then. Why, why would you have said that out loud so that anyone could hear you? It seems, just seems incredibly stupid and short-sighted of you. Even if it was, we still can't let all the info my father and Uncle Bad found go to waste. Plus, just the existence of Little Thief is troublesome enough for him. Those two pieces, aren't they keepsakes of your father? It's okay, I believe in Mr. Edgeworth. He'll come out on top at the end. Okay. When the going gets tough, someone's gotta be there to put the wind back in your sails. Lord knows it's not your bratty little sister over there. After all this time, you're still quite the feisty one. I applaud your powerful nature. I refuse to lose this too. Ambassador Alba, you won't be returning home until you give us further testimony. How dare you all bury a person like me! Ambassador Alga, Alba, your testimony if you please. Yeah. Alright, but this is the absolute last. Then, even if you use all the power of Ambassador Palano's office, you won't stop me. Can't let this opportunity you can't created for me go to waste. Last time I went with Mr. Coach and was here at the Theatrum Neutralis. After that, I was in Alabaster the rest of the time, as I stated earlier. In any case, I did not see Mr. Cochin again after that. So you see, there is no time in there is no time span in which I could have killed him, wouldn't you agree? Now, since you people were practically begging, I'll allow you to question me. What an arrogant old man! Yes, but no matter, we can't allow this chance to escape us. I will warn you though, you've reached the end of my patience. Waste my time with any inane questions, and you will be punished. Gee, see how much your health will be taken? That's double, sir! Any needless pressing or presenting will cost more to our case. I swear, I'm going to be furious if you need to press here at the right time when they're threatening to take more life away from you and actively discouraging it. In that case, the only thing you can do is to present the correct evidence, understood? Yeah, we'll see. See if the game fucks me here. I don't intend to let him intimidate me. I know Mr. Cochin was killed before I returned to Babao. In which case, there is only one statement to which I need to present the evidence. Objection! I'd like you to take a look at this picture. A rather nice picture, isn't it? I wish to commemorate the restoration of relations between our nations. 
No, it's commemorative, all right. One that captures the proof I need to show that it was you who committed the murder. Come again? This is the knife that killed Mr. Cochin. I see you recognize it, as well you should, for it was you who brought it to this theater. You hid it among the flowers you were to give to the Steel Samurai. Meaning that you killed Manny Cochin here at the theater. <laughs> it's time for me to catch my flight. Objection! We're not through yet! Objection! Objection! It's game over for you, Mr. Edgeworth. I thank you for the entertainment. Ugh. No matter how passionately you orate, the end result will still be the same. I won't be returning to this country ever again. That's right. This man is an ambassador. He has extraterritorial rights. As though we haven't been, like, worried about that this entire time and suddenly forgot. No matter how hard we chase after him, we won't be able to have him tried in court. Yes, that's exactly the face you should be making. The face of a worthless cur. No! Now then, ladies and gentlemen, I must bid you farewell. I... The courts. Is there no one who can lay a finger on this man? Is this really the end? Agent Long. Sorry to keep you waiting, Mr. Prosecutor. Get out of my way. My plane is scheduled to take off soon. Sorry, but you're not going anywhere, Mr. Alba. I'm through playing games with you people. You can't touch me. If you do, it would spark an international incident, Agent Long. Well, then we're just going to be sparking an international incident then, aren't we? Sorry, but no, it wouldn't. What? Hey, Mr. Prosecutor. Good job holding the fort down here until I got back. Hmm? So, Mr. Alba, they stripped him because he's calling him Mr. Alba now. Yep. Your diplomatic immunity has just been revoked. What do you mean revoked? Spare me this nonsense and let me through. Lan Tsi says... Before aiming for the throat, chew the neck shield off first. Interpol headquarters and the Imperial household of the Kingdom of Avalast. Took a while to get things rolling, but they finally moved on it. Imperial household? You! What have you done? You've been relieved of your duties as ambassador, Mr. Alba. What? 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 Effective today, effective right now. And you have Mr. Prosecutor's videotape to thank for this. Video of the Yat Yatsugarasu protected? You can't be arrested simply because you're an ambassador? <laughs> In that case, I thought I'd strip you of that title. You underestimated me as a descendant of the founder of detainment philosophy, Lan Si. 4,000 years of deeply entrenched connections and networks around the world have really paid off. It can't be. I don't believe this. My ambassadorship has been revoked. <laughs> Looks like you've finally come to grips with your new standing. You're hunching. <laughs> Ooh, looks like he's turned oldie once again. He's probably in shock from the loss of his shield. Neck shield or whatever. Oof, what a shame. I had so wanted to use my whip on him. Why is this happening to me? I'm just a hard-working honest ambassador. That's actually complete bullshit. You really think you can still pull that on us now? We've already ripped away the mask and seen you for who you really are. Mr. Alba. Gah! Gah! No, I won't be stopped now. Still intends to find us? So what if I'm no longer an ambassador? You still don't have any evidence on me. The fact remains that you cannot arrest me. <laughs> I'd expect no less from you, the boss of the smuggling ring. Well, the rest is up to you, Mr. Prosecutor. Understood. <laughs> you say that I killed Mr. Cochin in the theater, but even if it's true that there was a knife in my bouquet, I left that bouquet in the theater. So anyone could have taken it out from there and used it, right? Besides, the claim that he was killed here itself is odd. After all, wasn't his body discovered in Babao? Are you claiming that I carried his body all the way over there? Preposterous. I'll be the one to prove whether it's preposterous or not. Good. Ex-Ambassador Elba, are you ready? Oh, I'm sorry. Too soon? Excuse... Uh, uh, because this is no game, this is war. 
Like seriously, after him, who do we go talk to? The Imperial, like, do we cross-examine the Imperial ship lord guy? I killed Mr. Cochin in his theater using a knife that was stuck in my bouquet. I left that bouquet in the theater. Anyone could have taken the knife from there. Besides, Mr. Cochin's body was discovered in Babao, right? There's no way for me to have transported his body from the theater to Babao. Look, don't you think you've had enough fun with me? You've already stolen my ambassador's ship from me. Would you have me surrender to? You have no plans to ever return to this country, isn't that right? Do you know that a bunch of your subordinates are sinking asylum because of you? <laughs> As if I care. Hey, Mr. Prosecutor, boot this guy out of the embassy. We can finally end everything. I know, and I will give it my all to see that he leaves in handcuffs. Without the title of ambassador, he was just another witness. Yes, just another witness. All right, what are we waiting for? Let's get this guy. And by let's and us and we, I mean you. Get him good. I wonder if they understand that all I can do is present evidence to the testimony? We can press him now, right? Without it being an issue. I mean, we saw him about, he was killed somewhere else. It's not bluffing, because you can't prove what you're claiming. If this were a court martial in my country, you'd have already been removed from the room. Well, then that means your court martials are fucking stupid. Are you telling us on purpose? Because I'd be happy to show you out and show you my claws. <laughs> Ching! Well, I need long allow me to find a my way with evidence. <laughs> I was just joking. I'm not so easily ruffled by the likes of him. Too bad though I'm no, no longer an ambassador, it still could have been an international incident. You know the will threaten us with that mouth of yours, then perhaps you can use it to return to the testimony. Very well. To be fair, you should watch what you say as well. Actually, I do believe there was a way to transport the body out of the theater. Perhaps you should give this a look. What is that supposed to be? It's footage from a security f camera that captured the state of the immigration area. Should I congratulate you on getting your hands on it? Just letting you know that we're not the only ones watching your every movement. Oof. Thank you for the warning. Well, if you could take a good look at this section here. This lump here inside the push cart. Do you know what's causing it? Should I? Because I don't. Hmm, in that case, allow me to enlighten you. This is the cause of the unnatural lump under the cloth in the push cart. What is the meaning of showing me that? It's to say that the unnatural bulge in the push cart is Mr. Cochin's body. You had the steel samurai wheel his body away from the real crime scene. <laughs> what a guess. But I wonder if you have any evidence to support it. I admit that for now it is a bit of a hypothesis, however. <laughs> if you can't prove it, then I'm afraid I must be on my way. It's time to hit the old dusty trail, as it were. I don't have any more time to play with you people. All right, ducks along, Mr. Edgeworth, sir. Gummy! Detective Gumshoe, was that the Steel Samurai's push cart? Yes, sir. I found it in the open air stage area. So that's where you went. Okay. So, but in justice for all, dude was able to, from the Gatewater Hotel, run down to the precinct, then from the precinct, run to his house, and then run back from his house to Wright and Co. law offices before Wright was able to go just from the hotel to the law offices. And now you're telling me dude had to walk 20 meters away into an area to go find this one thing and it's taken him like an hour and a half? The detective spirit that Pops left me with. Thought I'd follow my gut and go with it, sir. So, Miss Redworth, is this worth anything to the case? <laughs> yes, it just might play a major role in solving this case, detective. But something isn't right. I thought that the entire samurai family was in Alabast. Where exactly in the open air stage area did you find this push cart? Oh, it's just lying there at the edge of the stage, sir. Oh? Well, let's leave that for now and examine the inside, detective. Yes, sir. Blood. This must be Mr. Cochin's blood, which only goes to prove that Mr. Cochin's body was indeed transported by this push cart. I believe you understand what this means, correct? You kill Mr. Cochin at this theater and then place his body inside the push cart. And then... You force the Steel Samurai to unwittingly move the body for you. I forced him to move the body into Alabast? What nonsense, why would I bother to do such a thing? Let's say the whole thing is that he killed him in the dressing room and then put him in the cart. Couldn't Larry have still been the one to have killed him then? 
I guess the biggest thing is how would he have gotten the knife? Because like he had no access to it. Plus he doesn't have a motive, but like I, it looks like Larry was involved in some way. I don't know. You were scheduled to make a speech in Alabast, meaning it was difficult for you to make a stop in Babal. However, what if you moved the body to Alabast? Because it was your embassy, you could keep an eye on it and tamper with the evidence. Then you smuggled it out of Alabast. No! I can show how you move the body from Alabast to Babal, then I win. But you can't! The security between the two countries is incredibly tight. I'll be the one to judge whether I can or cannot prove it. And so I ask you to provide us with testimony regarding your movements after you return to Alabas. Miles Edgeworth, have you figured it out? Do you know how the body was moved? To be honest, I have nothing to support my hypothesis at this time. However, I don't believe I've made a mistake in my logic up to this point. I swear to fucking God, if they put that body on the goddamn string and pushed it across this, I might quit being a prosecutor. Which means, there is no question that can't be answered, right? The Primadux statue was smuggled successfully through a brief flight through the air. So why shouldn't there be an answer as to how the body was moved? Which means that there must be a logic flaw somewhere I can exploit. <sighs> I returned to Alabas, I had my picture taken with the Steel Samurai shaking hands. And just as I was about to start my speech, the Atagarazu appeared. I feared for the national treasures, so I raced back to my office. Is that all? Yes, that's all. Objection! Looks like you left out a few things, such as the murder of Damas II. Furthermore, you left out the part about meeting with me in your office. Uh, those trifling matters? I don't believe I need to speak of those things again. I do so hate to waste time. What? You. Is not every life precious? Eh. <laughs> you really need me to answer that for you? People like you cannot be allowed to freely wander through society. Oof, then you'd better try hard because I doubt you'll find a single contradiction. He's really full of himself, isn't he? Yes, he is. How can he be so confident at a time like this? Ha <laughs> ha! Uh, come, don't be shy. Go ahead and ask whatever you like. That Yatsugarasu was just a trick that you had set up. <laughs> a most amusing joke. And how do you propose that I set it up? If you really need to know, I can explain it in detail for you. You arrange the spotlights in the Rose Garden so that when you were to take the stage, the audience would see the Yatsugarasu's shadow. Oh, that is an interesting tale. Sadly, it has nothing to do with me. You! What's it gonna take for you to fess up to anything? Hmm. <laughs> Very well then, let's move on to a different question. After the Yatsugarasu appeared, what was the state of the Rose Garden? Everyone took refuge inside the embassy, I even helped with the effort. And then once everyone was inside, well... What national treasures? Hold it. And what happened after you returned to your office? I don't want to keep on repeating this, however. On my return, I had the stroke of bad luck and bumped into Mass Man. And I don't want to keep on repeating this, either. But his name was Damas II. Uh, who cares what he was called? By the time he got to the Primarch statue that he was supposed to steal, he'd already been swapped for the fake. Talk about an unlucky man. Being bludgeoned to death of the fake statue. <laughs> oh my god. It's Von Karma's really letting her whip fly now. Eek. I think the scary part is her silence when she's doing it. She must be at the limit of her patience as well. But physical attacks are meaningless here. Only evidence will suffice. Uh, I can't find a single contradiction. Mr. Edgeworth, he's only totally dead on the inside, just like a hollow tree. You're the only one that can cut him down to size, Mr. Edgeworth, sir. At this point in time, we lack the information required to fight back properly. Hey, Mr. Prosecutor, you just say the word and I'll get him talking for you. Don't forget that we have plenty of ways to get him to talk. We got some real scary people on our side, huh, Kay? Well, I'm all ready to help out, Gummy. How about you? I can't believe even you're getting into this. Well, I mean, he did kill your father, so maybe I should have thought about that. In that case, I'm ready too, sir. Ah, uh, everyone, please calm down. I'll think of something. Yeah. I... I can't find a single flaw in his argument. At this rate, I won't be able to prove that he is actually guilty of anything. Are we finished here? 
How many times do we have to do this? Like, this is bad. This is ridiculous. How many times do we have to be like, are we done here? Blah, 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 blah. Testimony. Are we done here? Blah, 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 blah. Testimony. Are we done here? Interruption. Testimony. Are we done here? Like, fucking <sighs> Miles Edgeworth, can you not come up with how the body was moved to Babal? Sir. Mr. Edgeworth. Good. Even after proving so much, is he going to get away with it? Mm. Is this the... Is this the end? This is a fever dream. I understand now. This is not really what's going on. No, this is this is all just a very prolonged fever dream. I stayed up till 10 a.m. Probably fucked with my sleep. Still, still sleeping. Why is he holding that child up? It would be, a, it would be a great honor if you allow us to be your allies in battle. Evil Barrier Strait, it's time for you to pay. It's the Steel Samurai. You, yeah, you are mistaken, for I am Steel Samurai Daddy, married man of Neo Tokyo. I know it's a doll. But you also realize that if he's gonna do anything physical, he is literally holding something in one of his hands to make it even more difficult to struggle. And this is Pete Fritz's mommy. Edgy Poo! The two people I wanted to see the least. Larry! What are you do two doing here? Way to show your gratitude, Edgy. You just wanted to help, jeez. I'm gonna get the bad guy with single thrust of my samurai. Go away! How can you be so mean to us, Edgy Poo? All three of us came to lend you a hand, and this is how you treat us? It's not a person, damn it, it's a doll! Now listen to this, Grand, and I see they managed to find the iron infants. Does that really matter right now? Hey! Is it just me, or is the iron infant, infant completely soaked? That was my other, other thought that I mentioned that I had, instead of the. They threw him in the well. Or they, they... Because that isn't the water system, like, connected. It had something to do with throwing him in the water. Hmm? Oh, yeah. I found him in Babel, but he was in the middle of the pool. Wait a second. Larry, go back to what you just said. Huh? Oh, um, it appears that we made it. Not that far back. <laughs> that was pretty funny, actually. Something about finding the Iron Infant in Babel? And he found it in the pool? I don't recall there being one in Babel. Oh, that. Well, I was in Alabas the whole time, so I have no idea how the Iron Infant wound up in Babel. I thought I lost him in the Rose Garden, but I guess maybe this cute kid can swim, huh? Wait, what? Larry, you lost the Iron Infant in the Rose Garden? Are you sure about that? Yes, I'm sure, but I found him in... That's enough, Larry. The Iron Infant that Larry lost managed to move between the two countries. Furthermore, the Iron Infant was found soaked in the middle of a pool? This is what I've been looking for. It's another smuggling route between the two countries. The key to the route the Iron Infant took to travel from Babal is... Well, that's right. This embassy was built with bilateral symmetry in mind. I think it was, it was stated a long time ago in the case that their water systems were connected, I think. Detective Gumshoe... Yes, yeah, sir. There's a little case and I wish for you to examine post-haste. Is where I believe the route to smuggle Mr. Cochin's body lies. Does something like that really exist, sir? An embassy built on bilateral symmetry, meaning that this is where we need to examine. Take that. Yes, sir. I'll be back before you know it. Whatever if he comes back like, that wasn't the place, sir. It's too late. It doesn't matter now what you do. It's all a waste of time. You will stay here with us and wait. Yeah, what the fuck are you gonna do, old man? You are severely outnumbered here. Oh, sorry everyone, this is really awkward. I thought I put this on sil silent. Uh, this is Edgeworth. It's Edgeworth! It's here, sir! Again, Gumshoe's cannon speed just all over the place. All over the place. It's here, sir! There's a reservoir here. Just like in the Rose Garden. This is I suspected. What is it? The two sides of this embassy are mirror images of each other, which means that there is also a pool at the corresponding location on the Babylese side. 
Mr. Cochin's body was moved into Babal through the pool in Alabast. Now where is your proof that the two sides are connected? Objection. Fucking blueprints. You know, this is actually, I do think, oh shit, lines. The proof is right there before your eyes, the half-drowned iron infant. This is a much better explanation than transferring the body over the wire. Much better. This actually kind of makes sense. What? This blasted doll! Mr. Edgeworth, I'm back! Hey! Don't tell me. You guys figured everything out without me? We did, thanks to this hero of justice's son. Even if he is just a doll, he managed to help foil the villain. Hey, Miss Prosecutor, look, I don't want to say this, but it's kind of unlikely that the body just happened to have passed on through to Babal. This guy is a doll, and he's small, so I can believe he made it, but he has a point. <laughs> yes, that's right. I'm glad someone here understands. I love how it's a thing in this series where people are just like, you confounded thing to foil my plans! And then someone will be like, ah, uh, but really, is that it yet? And they're like, yes, that's right. Forget that I basically just admitted to doing it before by being all reactionary and surprised by the fact that you were able to use that to discover my plans. Yeah, let's just keep going now. Like, I never said that. Implicate myself in any way. Mr. Edgeworth, are you going to next propose that a dead body can swim through a pipe? You see, Miss Prosecutor, our chase after this man is far from over. Agent Long, I would have guessed as much. This game wants to pad itself out as much as possible, taking anything that was good about this case and rendering it absolutely worthless. Or at least very watered down. Why is he helping Mr. Alba out now? He's not. He realized the flaw in my argument is helping to move the logic along. Yeah, I mean, he's not wrong to do that. In which case, I should return the favor and find an answer. And another thing, Mr. Cochin's body was found in his office in Babao. So what happened to his body after it was transported to the open air stage? Hmm, Mr. Alba had an accomplice in Babao, remember? You mean, it's Sheena, right? With her there, you can see how it was possible to move the body up to the office. Are you seriously claiming that she swam, swam through the connected pipe with the body? He's right. Miss Shina would have drowned if she did that. Hard to imagine that she swam through the connecting pipe. Looks like your hypothesis about how the body was moved is still only half-baked. In the end, it's all just the befuddled musings of an accusatory man. Now then, I believe you should give up and allow me passage. Oh my god. Because from the start, there was no feasible method of transforming a body. What? Mr. Prosecutor, recall Sheena's movements. Ugh. If only there was a way to get rid of the water in the pool. The fire, you fucking mor- Oh my god. <sighs> get rid of the water? Nah, uh -huh, that's it. I believe this time we really are done, right? Mm, unfortunately, this is not the end this time. It's, it's far from over, Mr. Alba. You're our most persistent man. Are you saying that you thought of a way to move the body through the water? Move the body through the water, and it's completely unrelated to how it was done. Excuse me? The reason I say that is because there wasn't any water there at the time. What do you, what do you mean there wasn't any water? It's what it sounds like. Tonight's events made it possible to drain the water, allowing the body to be moved. Tonight, the Yatakarasu set fire to a variety of locations in the Babylese Embassy. In order to put the fires out, much of the reservoir's water was used. Of course, when the water was used, the reservoir's water level went down. If enough water was drained, the connecting pipe could be of use to traverse the border. Huh. So what? The water level went down, the reservoirs were connected. Pshaw! Flim flaw! Does any of this matter? You can't prove any of this. Hmm. Pretending to be ignorant won't work with me. We both know what kind of situation we're in right now. Even in a game, there comes a critical, game-changing moment. A moment in which you hit a wall that you must overcome in order to beat the game. Which I just lost and the rest of you did too. If you are indeed playing the game. I haven't lost yet. I found the route you used to smell the body and that route will lead to your defeat. Even if all the water was used by the firefighting effort, you still can't really call that a smuggling route. Hmm. 
I know that. <laughs> I should have figured that you'd notice. Hey, Mr. Al hey, Mr. Alba, how deep are those pools anyways? <laughs> I have you know those pools are entirely, extremely deep, and there are no ladders or footholds along the walls either. It would be difficult for Sheena to hold the body and climb up out of the pool. With ladders or footholds along the walls? There was no need for such things. What do you, what do you mean? If one were to use a certain something, they could go up or down the pool at will. Oh, looks like you got an answer already. Well, what are you waiting for, Mr. Prosecutor? Latinus. This was used so that the body of Machina could move up and down in the pool. Mr. Alba used the fountain spouts in a manner of speaking. Used the fountain spouts? How so? The water level in the pools can be controlled by opening and closing the spouts. Machina and the body were lifted upward by their buoyancy in water. The fire on the Babbly side and the firefighting effort. These were set in motion, all for the sake of smuggling Mr. Cochin's body. Yeah. Shall I show you where the final destination of my train of logic leads? First, Mr. Alba closed the fountain spouts in advance, in preparation of things to come. Then he took the push cart that was brought to the Rose Garden, and pushed it along with the Iron Infant and Mr. Cochin's body into the pool. At this time, Miss Sheena was busy conveniently starting the first fire in Babao. She then made for the open air stages pool to wait for the firefighting effort to begin. When the firefighters used the water in that pool, the water level went down. And by the time the fire was put out, the pipe between the two pools was exposed. This is where she pushed the push cart from Abelas into Babao. Once that was accomplished, Mr. Alba simply opened the fountain spouts once more. And the water level rose up to its original level, and with Miss Sheena in the body. After that, Miss Sheena used the push cart to carry the body up to the Secretariat's office. There is an elevator in the embassy after all, so you see, and which we know was in use. Because Ambassador Polano could not use it. Or, uh, not Ambassador Polano, um, Gumshoe. Because Gumshoe tried to use it and could not. Even with her small frame, she could have easily transported Mr. Cochin's body. And that wraps up my thorough explanation of how the body was moved. Hmm. Well, ex Ambassador Alba, what do you think? Not so untouchable without your precious extraterritorial rights to protect you, are you? I know you can do it, Mr. Edgeworth. Way to fight back. T minus 10 seconds to. <laughs> it still means nothing because blah, blah, blah. You accuse me of moving the body across country lines? But when you get down to the nitty gritty, you don't have what it takes to indict me. The nitty gritty? What's the old man want now? Proof. I believe this is what he seeks? Yes, proof. Without any, who is to say whether or not any of what you said really happened? He wants proof? What are we gonna do, Mr. Edgeworth? There is no need to worry. I've had all the proof we needed all along. What did I find there? That's right. Take that! And what exactly is this? Oof, you have no idea, do you? This little piece that I found on the Beverly sign will be your undoing. The guitar pick? Well, would you care to explain how that is going to do me in, as it were? Much to your chagrin, perhaps, but this is not a guitar pick. What? This is something I found at the open air stage which was transported with the body. I naturally assume that you would recognize it since you took a photo with it after all. But since you don't, allow me to fill you in on what I found at the stage actually belongs to. Take that. Let's take a good look at the murder weapon that was used to kill Manny Cochin. On the handle of this knife, there was there's a beautifully blooming flower. However, it would appear that it's missing a single petal. Rendering it ugly. <laughs> now, let's see what happens when we try to fit this pick in that open slot. It's a perfect fit! I assume that the petal must have fallen off of the flower during Mr. Cochin's murder. And then it was accidentally placed into the push cart along with Mr. Cochin's body. Gah. That's an interesting story, nothing more. Well, I assure you, it's more than just a story. Because for some odd reason, this flower petal was wet when I found it. It was wet, you say? Yes, and the only place it could have gotten wet from its... 
from is the open air stages pool. Now I ask you, how did a part of the weapon which was smuggled into the theater wind up in the open air stage area on the Babel East side of the embassy? I don't think I need to waste any words explaining this, as this pedal explains it all for me. It proves that someone went from the Rose Garden's pool on through into Babal. Impossible! People of Cheng Fa have been waiting to see you face to face, Mr. Alba. I'll tell everyone back home we'll be there soon. You should be happy. I this. Why? Why? It's a little late to be asking that question. You should have known from the very beginning when you took your first life. No matter how you may plot or how you may try to cover it all up, you can never hide from your crime and what you've done because we're here to see to it that justice is served to people like you. You can't call what you've given a perfect argument. You know, I don't think this guy is going to ever admit to his wrongdoings, Mr. Edgeworth. Of course not. The game must continue to pad itself out. Because he values himself over all else. Just like the creators of this game, apparently. People who can't be negotiated with, or people who refuse to admit when they've lost, I don't believe those kinds of people really exist because everyone breaks eventually. I don't know, okay? The writers of this game do. You're right. In that case, I have no choice but to use all the evidence I have. To use it all until it br until he breaks under the weight of his crimes. Mr. Alba, I request that you testify once more. This really will be the end of the line. Why? Is there even a to be- Why is there a to be continued here? We're not going anywhere. We're still interrogating him. That's like the only thing I can think of is like, hey, you haven't saved in a while. You should probably save. Mr. Alba, I request that you testify once more. As if there's anything else for me to testify about. I still have yet to fully prove that it was Mr. Alba who murdered Mr. Cochin. Well, I would like to hear about your movements before the murder occurred. I wonder if you could tell us about what you did here at the Theatrum Neutralis. Very well, I suppose I could tell you about that. <laughs> Because about all I did was watch the Steel Samurai stage show. <laughs> Elaborating on even that alone is good enough for me. I watched from the last row. The stage was well lit, but it was dark out in the audience. I swear I was there in the audience. But it's hard to prove that, I suppose. I do remember the contents of the show very well, though. Is that proof enough for you? These moving scenes were seared into this old man's heart. I'll never forget them. So you were in the theater proper watching the Steel Samurai stage show, were you? Of course I was. I have a great fondness for the Steel Samurai. <laughs> yeah, I was pretty cool up there, wasn't I? You're not the one who was cool, it's the Steel Samurai who was cool. You get that right, you mother... Anyways. Yeah, and the Steel Samurai special finishing move today was really something, huh? Can we not talk about Larry's stupid fucking stage performance? Hey, Edgy, who is she? Who is this super cute girl? She's... Standing here this whole- she's been standing here this whole time and only now he notices her? Her name is Kay Faraday and she's helping me in my investigation. Sorry I didn't get to introduce myself earlier, but better late than ever. Yes, yeah, okay, I'm Larry But Thank. God. Silence in the peanut gallery. There's no time for such trivialities at a time like this. Mr. Prosecutor, this is the final battle. You got that? I know. This is the end. My friend. That man there. <laughs> no, that's the kind of thing I like to hear. Even though I think it's utter bullshit, I think I'll give trusting you a try, Mr. Prosecutor. Or rather, Mr. Edgeworth. I'll leave this critical battle up to you, Mr. Edgeworth. I have no fear I will finish the job. That's really it. This really is the end game. The time has come to expose every last one of Mr. Alba's lies. I don't want to keep harping on this, but this is actually horrendous. It's absolute worst. Actually, I take it back. It was kind of funny where we did it five times in a row or four times or whatever, and each time there was some person coming in to save us in a row. Yeah, that was kind of funny. But now we don't have that anymore. All the players have been used. Unless they bring in somebody from like, Hey, remember me, dude? I'm from 1-4. I was a bit character there. Now I'm coming to save you. Or what's his fuck, the officer who was the blue badger. I was in the
in this game earlier, sir! Now I'm here to help you! Hmm. Well, I remember the contents of the show as well myself. That's nice. <laughs> That's nice! Miles Edgeworth, don't allow yourself to be riled up by him at this important juncture! I wasn't planning to let him. Well, if you ask me, I think I'm the biggest two samurai expert around here. Did you think the climatic scene of today's show was just totally awesome? Yes, I remember that well. And that spectacular special move. The way you delivered the final blow against the evil magistrate. Early summer pain jab. Oh, no, sorry, not pain jab. Nope, nope, nope. It's rain jab, rain jab. No, I remembered now. I remembered. Don't hold that against me. No, that scene will live on in my heart forever. Is that how it went? Is that how it went? <laughs> I totally forgot about that. How can you forget your own special moves? To be fair, I forget things that happen in my own streams. So, I mean... Not that I'm the, the Steel Samurai. That's the special attack that the Steel Samurai uses when he's using the Samurai Spear! Yeah, should today was the first time they showed it off, was it not? If I hadn't watched the show, then how could I have a I answer you with the name of the move? I suppose you are correct, but if you could, please elaborate on this point for me. Did they...? Objection! Yeah, he couldn't do it. The special move today was the early summer rain jab. Is that your final answer? You little irritating gnat. You think you could trip me up by asking the same question over and over? No, it's not my intention. Your testimony is more than sufficient. However, I believe it would be wise for you to take a look at this. The Samurai Spear, what about it? This spear actually never made it on stage today. Excuse me? This idiot right here broke it. Unfortunately for you tonight, still Samurai, happened to be a goof of a young man with an abundance of useless hot-bloodedness. <laughs> it looks like my stupidity saves the day again, right, Edward? <laughs> Am I right? Having said that, said useless man bent the spear during his rehearsal this evening. Kay, do you remember what the Steel Samurai special move was tonight? It was the Steel Samurai Sushi Slash! Uh, uh... Correct, because he couldn't use the spear, a last minute change was made. Had you really been watching the show, you would have known the move that, w that was you. How dare you call yourself a Steel Samurai fan? You should be barred from all conventions in the near future! Sorry, I just... A little worked up there. I am a bit of a toxic fan. Ugh. Quirkus Alba! You didn't watch even a single minute of the Steel Samurai stage show tonight, did you? Ah, Sophie wasn't watching the show tonight. Then it opens up the possibility that he was busy committing murder. So where were you during the show? I demand an answer now. <laughs> Here we go. This one is so funny. You're so sloppy, and so are your conclusions. I still insist that I watch the show. Or most of it, in any case. What do you mean by most of it? Who walks out during the middle of a Steel Samurai sh <laughs> I won't let him get to me. I won't let him get to me. Uh, as you see, during the show I left my seat for a spell to visit the bathroom. Yep, there it is, the ultimate, I, how could I have been there, defense, when I was in the bathroom. <laughs> I assume this was when that dramatic scene was played out on stage. That is the lousiest, lamest excuse I've ever heard in my life, pal. God, when Gumshoe in the game is calling that shit out, maybe as the writers you should think, maybe this is a really stupid way to go about this. And maybe we should actually go back and cut out like the last hour and a half. Uh, just because he got the name of the move wrong. You can't really use that as proof that he didn't watch the show at all. Drah! As a fan of the Steel Samurai, I wanted to watch the entire show. Honest! Honestly! As a Steel Samurai fan? For someone who wasn't even in his seats for the climax of the show! You have no right to call yourself a Steel Samurai fan ever! Who was that just now? 
You be a uh, young lady. Larry, what are you doing interrupting me like that? And you just hold up for a second, I beg. You may never accept this old man as Steel Samurai fan, but I totally think he's a Steel. St oh my god. I totally think he's a Steel Semaniac. Oh, what exactly is a Steel Semaniac, pal? I believe he meant to say Steel Samurai Maniac. Yeah, trust me. I know a real fan when I see one because I'm the Steel Samurai. I will never acknowledge you as the true Steel Samurai! What are you getting so worked up over, Mr. Edgeworth? Like, your vein in your head's getting really big. It appears that the real Steel Samurai recognizes me as a fan. As well he should, for I am a fan. Not as though I missed the entire show. It's the most amazing show, filled with the spirit of young and the young at heart. <laughs> the sarcasm dripping from his long wooden nose couldn't run any thicker. You know what, Graves? You're really something else. I might have received such praise from the Steel Samurai, but what is it for? Well, I was just wondering how you found out about the early summer rain jab. That movie's a bit of a secret that only a small portion of the staff knew about. Wait, is it a secret? Larry, wait, what did you just say? Huh? Did they say something stupid again? Did you say that the early summer rain jab was actually a secret? Well, maybe I shouldn't have said it secret. More like we only decided on the name of the movie right before the start of the show. Right before? Yeah, the stage director was going nuts because we were supposed to debut the move. About five minutes before the show, we threw it up on the dressing room's whiteboard. If it's gonna, if this ridiculous convenience, which is still really weird to have happened in the first place, will get us through this case, then you know what? That's fine. Early Simmer Range, yeah, that's kind of how we decided the name of the move. But by the time, I'd already bent the spear, so I guess the whole thing was kind of pointless. All of you still samurai actors are the same. The director has my complete sympathy. So because, so basically because we changed the name to the Sushi Slash, we kind of pretended that the early summer rain jab didn't exist at all. I mean, it'd be bad if someone found out we'd changed the move, so we made it a secret. So basically a gag order was issued for publicity's sake. It almost, it almost makes the early summer rain jab sound like a lost art. Yes, which is why I think most of the staff haven't even heard of the movie. Oh, those lips of yours still. What the heck, old man? I've done nothing but listen, and from what I can tell, it's all very unrelated to the case. A very tedious and a pointless exercise of wasting time, much like a kid's show. Mr. Alba, I have been very patient with you myself, but don't you ever, and I mean ever, refer to the Steel Samurai as a kid's show again. I believe the one who should be quiet now is you. How dare you. I suspect that you're, you've already noticed exactly what the very severe implications are in this man's testimony. Ah, so now you're trying to bully me, huh? There are no implications to be read into a behind-the-scenes story of a kid's show. Don't even think about trying to slither your way out of this, Quirkus Alba. You were the one who said it yourself that the name of the move was Early Summer Rain Jab. That name was only decided upon right before the show was about to start. So, just what are you driving at? That the name of the move you told us was never used in the show or said aloud. Now then, would you care to tell us about how you found out the name of that move? Because I can only think of one way you could have known. Quirkus Alba, this is the only way you could have known the name of the special move. You knew the name because you saw it. You saw it on the dressing room's whiteboard. The staff members who knew were keeping it a secret. So you couldn't have simply gone up to a staff member and asked. Which means that the only other option left is that you saw it on the whiteboard. That means that Mr. Alba was in the waiting room at some point, right? What's the big deal, sir? I don't see what that means. There's another piece of evidence that has a great deal to do with the dressing room. So we can't afford to let this slide. This is related to both the dressing room and Mr. Cochin's murder. The cart? Take that. The push cart that was used to move the body right there in the dressing room. During the show, the push cart awaited its turn to be pushed on stage in the dressing room. And it was finally pushed there along with the Iron Infant in the last scene of the show. Oh my god, that had a dead body in it at that point? Would it not smell? Like, really bad? Is the whole you shit yourself thing when you die not a real thing? Like, seriously, it's not guaranteed. That's an awful risk to take. 
Uh, Mr. Cochin seems like the kind of guy that won't shit his pants when I kill him. <laughs> so this will work out perfectly. And then, right after the show ended, it went into Alabasta along with the Steel Samurai. Which means that the only time the killer could have placed the body inside the push cart was when the push cart was in the dressing room backstage. So basically, the killer has to be someone who visited the dressing room during the show. Precisely. Ah! Oh, but wait, what if... And this is just a what if. What if the murder didn't take place in the dressing room? What do you mean, Kay? I have to admit, she brings up a valid possibility. During the show, the dressing room was supposed to be devoid of people. Anyone going into the private dressing room would stand out like a sore thumb. But despite that, the killer still managed to move the body with the push card. Correct, and it is because of the setup of the theater's dressing room that it would be the ideal location for the murder of Manny Coach. Marcus Alba, during the show, you went down to the dressing room, and I want to know why. Yes. Yes, I was there. I went into the dressing room. I knew it! I'm placing you under arrest right now, pal! You got that? Arrest! Not so fast. What is it now? <laughs> Don't I deserve a chance to explain myself? Explain? What's there to explain? I believe I told you earlier that I went to the bathroom. Well, I got lost when I did. Wanted to ask for directions, but when I opened the dressing room door, no one was inside. That's when I saw the name of the move on the whiteboard. You punk! Still trying to get out of this? Do you really think you can get away at this point? Mr. Edgeworth, is there anything we can do to stop him? <sighs> the I got lost. Defense. My only weakness. That and spirit mediums. Defense attorneys with spirit mediums. I don't have enough evidence on hand to do anything. I don't have the airtight evidence I need to put this man away for good. If that's what I need, then perhaps. Agent Long, I believe an investigation of the dressing room in question is in order. Oh. My. Fucking. God. I want to hear one justification as to why they needed to, break, uh, like, drag this out this long. One person. One, in the comments, if you thought this was a good case, I want to hear why you think this fucking absolute abysmal portion of the game is justified. Yeah, the first part of it was fine. With you, that was interesting. Possible that we may find new evidence there. Yeah, if Mr. Edgeworth pokes around in there, I'm sure he'll find some new facts, pal. Oh, and if we use Little Thief, we may even learn something from a recreation. We don't need to do any of that. What? Wolfie, how could you? I'm not saying this to be mean. It's just that we've already searched there. My men really are something else. And they found nothing? There's only one thing I can say to you, sis, and that's they found nothing. That's it. Just answer yes, then. I guess you're right. If they had found something, they would have reported it to us. <laughs> they couldn't find anything because there's nothing there to find. And if there's no info to feed into Little Thief, then I can't do much to help either. Is this the end? The murder took place in this theater, which is not protected under extraterritorial rights, and the fact that it was Mr. Alba himself who committed the murder. If I can't prove both statements to be true, Mr. Alba walks away a free man. I'm just stating a bunch of the fucking obvious. Who cares? Stop saying the same shit over and over again. It would appear that your hand of cards has been turned out to be a bust. Now, if you'll excuse me, because of you people, I missed my flight. Now I must make haste to arrange a new one. Who's it this time? Thank you. I, and the game's calling out how fucking dumb this is. Hold it right there, you whippersnappers. Ah, first Larry and now you? What is with that scary mobster-like scowl on your face, Edgypoo? Don't treat me like I'm some sort of nuisance. I've been meaning to say this, but all of you keep talking about things I don't get at all. If you're all leaving this lady in the sad, depressing, lonely dust that I'm about to cry in, or turn into, why do you have to speak up right at this instance? But you know what, Edgypoo? Cheer up, because I'm about to give you the most wonderful thing. The most wonderful thing? From you? It's so super, super special that I couldn't give it away to just anyone I know. Ah, uh, my special present of love to my sweet edgy poo. Are you ready? It's this. It's... It's a box of those samurai dogs, right? Yes. Oh, edgy poo, here you go. Eat one and you'll, you'll feel as right as rain. Are we through here? Why, why did everyone get so quiet all of a sudden? Edgy poo? 
tell me you understand the depths of this lady's love for you. I'm not, t I'm not one to hand out snacks really nimmy, you know, no sir. It thought it occurred to me that maybe if you were nice one for one day is my dream to serve you some of my moves. Well, I mean, it's the desire of every woman to make sure their beloved never goes hungry, and that's what I wanted to experience. I'll tell you some time ago they do see the ingredients thrown in front of me. Mr. Edgeworth, can't you do anything about her? There is no power on earth that can force that woman into silence. I'm so sick and tired of it. All you people do is look down on me. Even this box of samurai dogs pay me for a fool. I had a special design on its fan. Like the Japanese flag, so I thought it was special. But when I ate one, it tasted just like all the rest. Oh, it made me so mad. Wait, a second box with a Hinomaru like fan on it? I've never heard of such a piece of merchandise existing before. However, there it is. The red insignia sun on this fan is filled in. Is it possible? Could it be? After the after the show, the samurai dogs were piled up on the dressing room floor. However, there is no such thing as a rising sun dog. This contradiction of facts between something that should not exist and yet it does, the rays from the rising sun may, may be just what we needed to point us in the right direction. It's time to piece the final pieces of this logic puzzle together. No matter how fragile or small the connections may be, once we've found them all, the way to the truth will be revealed. The killer used the push card to transport the body. Which means that they had to remove the samurai dogs from within first. Therefore, the samurai dogs that were piled up on the dressing room floor were most likely taken out of the push cart by the killer. I'm gonna be so mad. That which should not exist, this box of samurai dogs with a Hinomaru on it. If this red rising sun was filled in when we, the killer was busy removing the dogs from the push cart, then it's proof that the murder took place in the dressing room. As long as this red substance turns out to be what I believe it to be, Wendy Old Bag. I thank you. What you have given to me is truly something very special. Echipu! Mr. Edgeworth, are you sure you're feeling okay, sir? Mr. Albi, as I suspected, you killed Mr. Cochin in the dressing room. With the knife. How many times must I listen to you repeat yourself? Haven't you figured it out yet? Your words are meaningless, worthless, and powerless. The only way I'm going to continue to cooperate is with some definitive evidence. <laughs> that arrogance, that self-confidence, you believe that you've erased every piece of evidence that can incriminate you. However, there remains one piece here, and it is what will put you away for good. Ah, you're bluffing. Oh, oh, hey, Mr. Prosecutor. Sounds like you finally found them. You finally found the fangs we need to go after this guy's jugular. So tell us, what about the, that box of samurai dogs is going to put the old man away? Trace evidence that will bring him down? Why, it's, why it's here, of course. Oh, my God. This box of samurai dogs with the rising sun on it, this should never have existed. So I want you all to take a look at this red spot. It's a single drop of blood perfectly coloring in this circle with no other drops on the entirety of the fucking box. Oh my god. Oh. Huh? What? Blood, you say? Agent Long, I like this blood analyzed post haste. I've got to admit, I'm a bit surprised. I can't believe we found blood in a place like this. This is, like, borderline impossible. Hey, you, get this down to the lab pronto. What's this, like a point zero 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 one chance of it landing and spreading and filling in the way that it did perfectly? But why was there blood on that box to begin with? If we think about the flow of the crime, I think the reason will become obvious. Larry, you said that you transported the samurai dogs with the pushcart, correct? 
Oh, um, yeah, you have a great memory, Edgy. And Pushka was a bit too big for my son. You know what I mean? So to make sure everyone could see him, I had to, do I had to pile some stuff in. I figured the samurai dogs were there too, so I used them to fill up the cart. What Larry says is true, then what were the boxes doing on the floor? I uh, see, the killer took them out of an order to place the body in the push cart. Exactly, and that is when I believe the victim's blood found its way onto that box, in that perfect way. But when my men investigated that room, not a single box of samurai dogs was in there. Because embassy staff members had already confiscated them. Yes, no doubt to hide the evidence of the murder. It's a good thing Miss Olbag managed to steal that one box before they got to them, huh? Looks like Miss Olbag also managed to put this this great thief to shame. What a scandalous way of putting that. I didn't steal, I received it from myself. Try using that sometime. Marcus Alba, I'd say this was one very fatal oversight on your part. Heh <laughs> of course. Yup. Who didn't see that fucking coming? Sorry to rain on your little love fest, however. How how can he be so self-confident in an Owen situation for him like this? It must be the writers. They've given him a bullshit way out of this. Even if that blood turns out to be Mr. Cochin, then what? Heh. <laughs> yeah, so Mr. Edwards sounds like he's not ready to call it quits yet, huh? The sole piece of evidence that was left at the scene of the crime? That alone has shed light on a new fact. At the very least, we now have proof that the murder occurred in the dressing room. And? You say that like it means something. Huh? Excuse me, sirs. Excuse me, sirs. Uh, report. What were the results of the end? The, the, uh, the analysis. Sir, the canals, the analysis came back and confirmed that the red substance is blood. I knew it. With this, Quirkus Alba. Objection! Mr. Edgeworth, I wonder if you might humor my question. Your question? You know I won from before, have you forgotten? Even if that is Mr. Cochin's blood, what difference would it make? Like we already told you, it proves that the crime scene was the dressing room. Well, it doesn't prove that I am your killer, does it? Yeah, that's... that's... Uh, is a very good point. The blood on that box doesn't prove that Mr. Alba is the killer. Then, this evidence, it's meaningless! That can't be, we were so close, sir! <laughs> I want to smack that smug look off his face! Come on, there's got to be something we can do! We finally found a solid piece of evidence. There must be something I can expose with it. Ah! I can't think of a single thing. <laughs> That's all I can say now is... <laughs> now, if you excuse me, I'll be on my way. Who was... Who was that? It's too late. I won't allow anyone to stop me now. It wasn't me, pal. It wasn't me this time either. It wasn't me either. It was me! Why did you... Um, because I haven't finished reporting everything to you yet, sir. There's more? What? Well, hurry up and spit it out. Why did you stop talking then? Uh, yes, sir, the blood I mentioned. It's not of the same blood as uh, the victim's blood. What? No! It's his, it's his blood. We're going to be able to show it with the scar that we haven't used yet. What? What do you mean it's not the same type? You mean it's not the victim's blood? If it isn't, then who the hell is it? I don't know, sir! All I know is it's not the same blood type as the victim, sir! What should we do now, Mr. Edgeworth? I have no idea what what's what anymore. Neither do I. <laughs> My, what an amusing turn of events. That blood drop proves something to be true, all right. Namely, my words. Which of your words would that be? The ones where I said that your words are meaningless, worthless, and powerless. That blood has nothing to do with the murder investigation whatsoever. Need I remind you that the blood got onto that box long before it entered my embassy? What sort of nonsense? Yeah, it's blood, pal. There's no way it's not related to the murder. Eh, <laughs> you and your double negatives won't fool me. So you would like to believe... But what if someone preparing the samurai dogs had a small nosebleed? What then? I guess that's possible. Damn it. Have we been wasting our time on a red herring? The blood doesn't belong to anyone connected to the case. That should be clue enough. Quirkus Alba, you bastard. Silence! Don't you ever address me with such a filthy word again. 
I wasted enough time here with you, and you have your answer. Now let me through. Alba, doesn't matter where you run off to, you'll never escape me. Someday I'll have the satisfaction of seeking my fangs into you, you'll see. And all the Interpol will be behind me, working to see if... To see to it that that day comes, you will see. <laughs> Do you know what your words sound like to me? They sound like the whinings of a pathetic loser of a mutt. A moo! Is this really the extent of all that we can do? Is the blood really from someone completely unrelated to the case? Or is there another possibility? Someone else other than the victim? Just when I thought I had him backed into a corner, and it's I who have been backed into a corner. In a situation like this, what would that man do? Use a spirit medium. But other than that, what would he who can turn any desperate situation around do? Turn it around. That's it. I must turn my way of thinking around. It's not whose blood is this, it's whose blood could get onto the box like this. And if I think about it that way, if the blood got onto the box when the body was being placed in the push cart, then the owner of said blood must have been in the dressing room at the time. And there's only one person that could be. Well, I must praise you for trying so hard. It's because of you kids that I was removed from the center stage. I will now be forced to live out the rest of my life in the shadows, unfortunately. But it's not a total loss, as the underworld will allow me more freedom than you'll ever know. Freedom like what the raven feels as it flies through the dark night sky. You can't lay a finger on me now, not now or ever. The arm of the law is powerless before me. Hmm. Powerless, is it? I wouldn't be so sure about that if I were you. What do you mean? Allow me to describe you in one word. Pitiful. Pitiful? How so? What Quirkus Alba, your wings were clipped long ago. And for someone who's trying to fly away on them without noticing that fact, pitiful is the perfect word to describe you. Ha! Mere words! What do you mean by his words are clipped, Mr. Edgeworth? Just what you think it means, Kay. We had already caught him in our trap a while back, with an incredibly powerful definitive piece of evidence. Hey, Earth to Mr. Prosecutor, here to speak in English? What are you talking about? What piece of evidence? The piece I speak of is, of course, this drop of blood. But we know it's not the... it's not from the victim. I don't see how it remains relevant to the case at all. Miss Von Karma, I believe that is exactly why it's very important to this case. And the part that is the most important is the fact that it's not the victim's blood. You're looking a little pale. Good. Then I believe you're already aware of what I mean. Then you know who the blood belongs to? Of course I do. This piece of evidence is the irrefutable proof that will stop the killer in his tracks. The blood that was that soiled the box of samurai dogs belongs to this person. The blood of the rising sun on this box belongs to you, Quirkus Alba. Grr. What? What? Why is his blood on the box of samurai dogs? He's not even a victim. The blood fell onto the box when Mr. Cochin's body was loaded into the push cart. At that time, the only two people in the dressing room were the victim and the killer. So that's what you mean. The blood doesn't belong to the victim. Then the, there's only one other person it could belong to. Yes, and that person is the murderer himself. That's the only logical conclusion. But Mr. Cochin was the one who, stab who was stabbed, sir. Why would Mr. Alba have been the one who, who was bleeding? What if during the murder, Mr. Cochin had fought back? You mean... If before Mr. Alba could kill him, Mr. Cochin managed to wound Mr. Alba. Yes, and I believe we have a piece of evidence that proves that he was bleeding then. What is the piece of evidence that shows that Mr. Alba was probably bleeding at the time? Take that. Mr. Alba, you bear you bear on your body a great wound. That was from when Dimash II attacked me with a pair of scissors. Yeah, and that happened way after he was in the dressing room. Ah, uh, well, is that really what happened? You can manufacture a weapon by smearing blood on it, so I can't just accept that as fact. Shall we try to test Mr. Alba and see if the shape of your wound matches the scissors? You really are something else, Mr. Edgeworth. You don't let a single thing slip by you, no matter how insignificant the possibility. Hmm, you're, the, you're one to talk, Mr. Alba. You've managed to give the law the slip for ten years as a smuggling ring's leader. No matter the danger, you can hide every last ounce of fear and anxiety from everyone. You truly are a one-of-a-kind criminal. <laughs> I'm a master of my fear, however to think that a person such as you could miss such a large thing. You believe I've overlooked something? 
You said that my wound was caused by Mr. Cochin, and that it was caused here in one of the theater's dressing rooms, right? Yes, that is correct. I'd like to point out that that's simply not possible. My wound is a stab wound, and one that could only have come from a blade. I wonder where you propose that such a weapon came from. Ah, the theater was packed with security guards. It would have been impossible for anyone to come into this area with a weapon of any sort. Just as Mr. Alba was able to bring in the alabash knife and a bouquet, there must have been an, uh, some other way to sneak in a weapon of some sort. Ah, but as long as you can't prove what that other way is. All your talk about Mr. Coach and stabbing me is pure nonsense. So if that other way does exist, you better hurry and tell me now. With pleasure. Wait, what? This piece of evidence shows us how Mr. Coach brought a weapon into this theater. Oh, but it was a key at the time. Among law enforcement, this piece is known as the Yatagarasu's key. That key! That's the key my father stole from here seven years ago! And it is very unique in that it is both a key and a knife. Meaning that under the guise of a key, it could have easily been brought into the theater. No! Oh! You, you, you couldn't dispose of the knife that stabbed you. Therefore, you wiped off the blood and placed it back in Mr. Cochin's pocket. After all, the key itself opens the safe in his office. And inside that safe, there was a document about Kenobian paper, signed by Mr. Cochin. In order to make it look like Mr. Cochin died as the leader of the smuggling ring, you had to make sh make it so that the police were the ones who opened that office safe. All that hard work to save yourself only served to destroy you in the end. Shall we try matching this knife's blade with your wound, Mr. Quirkus Alba? And that is what some may call the coup de grace. Impossible. You, you can't take me down. Swine, all of you, especially Manny Cochin. That is all because of that man's betrayal. He sought to steal control of the smuggling ring from me by removing me as ambassador, which is why he deserved to die with bearing the guilt for all my crimes for me. That's why I sent the Yatsukarasu's card and how this incident was born. Manny was supposed to be the smuggling ring's leader who was killed by the Yatsukarasu, but I had. Yet another reason, another story that was supposed to play out. Manny's death was supposed to bring everything to a close, and I would have gotten away with it too if it wasn't for you meddling prosecutors. <laughs> All right there, Scooby-Doo villain, calm your, calm your tits. Mr. Alba, I'm afraid there is one more question I forgot to ask. This country, or Alabas, which country's court would you like to face first? Either way, it's game over for you. I mean, I feel like this aged me about that much, too. Good lord. Oh, this is it. The big day. It's Mr. Alpha's tri trial today. And next week, he's scheduled to stand trial in his own country of Alabas. Francisca is heading, is heading that one. I suspect she'll be serving a full course of whiplashes at it. Having to face Miss Von Karma in court right after facing you, sir. I don't even want to think of what that would be like. I caught a glimpse of Mr. Alba as he was being escorted into the courthouse. I caught a glimpse of Mr. Alba as he was being escorted into the courthouse. And boy, he looked about as glum as I do the day before I get my monthly paycheck. You know, I've been thinking. That flight attendant and even Mr. Portsman were all Mr. Alba's secret agents. Correct. That smuggling ring was the common thread between all of the incidents. Cammy Meal was to provide support during smuggling ops using her job as an attendant. And Mr. Portsman was to manipulate trials related to the ring to end in their favor. Oh, I fly airlines and even the prosecutor's office. No one was safe from the smuggling ring, huh, sir? I suspect there are even more members of this ring spread throughout the world. Yeah, it sounds like such a big op that I can't even begin to imagine what it's like. Hmm? What is that, Detective? Ah, uh, nothing. It's just, well, come to think of it. Mr. Ernest Romano's trial is also scheduled for later today, sir. I'm aware of that. Mr. Romano has been working with the smuggling ring for over ten years. He used the Romano Group's various connections worldwide to assist them. But all of that has come to an end, as his conglomerate is now undergoing harsh scrutiny. I owe, I owe Mr. Romano a debt of gratitude, but he must pay his debt to society. Oh, well, with the arrest of both Mr. Alba and Mr. Amano, I guess that the that about wraps up the KG-8 incident as well, huh? I suppose so. The real killer in the KG-8 incident ten years ago was indeed Manny Cochin. 
Seven years ago, the killer in the second KJ incident was Macrell. Those two facts are the unshakable truth, however. It seems that a lot of effort was put into hiding these and other truths from us. And I will expose it all at the trials today. Solving cases left and right today, aren't you, sir? CCU and dead man. Perhaps now these two brave souls who tried to make the truth known can rest in peace. By the way, I received some gifts from Ambassador Pillion. Plano. Why did I say his name so weirdly? Shrimp, crab, beef? I don't need any of these, so I'm giving them to you. <laughs> I have no need to eat. I simply gather sunlight. Or moonlight. What? Seriously, sir? Wait, actually, I don't think I want them anymore. The way you're holding them. Don't tell me they're just coupons, sir. Detective Gumshoe, have you not re read the papers recently? Ever since the two countries became Kenobi again, its economy has changed. Really? It seems that Ambassador Paleno has reaped a few benefits of his own from it. He has been announced as the official ambassador of the newly reunified Kenopia. What would it be? Even though every item he sends to treasure, you don't seem to appreciate it. But if you don't have... I can give them to my lovely assistant. Okay, hey, wait. What? That's not what I said. Um, Mr. Edward, so let me have them, sir. What? Which, didn't it say question mark? Actually, come to think of it, where is Kay? How come she's not... She's still not here? Oh, because she was pretending to be him. Hey, you gotta be more alert than that. Ah, can't believe you didn't notice. I was even mimicking Mr. Edward's voice for a bit. I totally didn't notice. I realized that voice was you. Lanzi says, ferocious. Love blooms with each new spring. Agent Long, a pleasant surprise to see you here. It's been a long time since I set foot in the courthouse, but I wasn't going to miss watching the guy who screwed up my court country finally get what's coming to him. Well, then, something else. I want to see you in action in court. Is that so, Agent Long? You flushed out all the counterfeit pills, so Chang Fa is finally at peace again. And it's all thanks to you, so I just wanted to say thank you. Well, I never thought I'd see the name. Oh, Wolfie says thanks to Mr. Edgeworth. I should be the one thanking you, Agent Long. You had negated Mr. Alba's ex extraterritorial rights. I would not have been able to bring him to trial. I believe the victim belongs to both of us in this case. <laughs> Shared victory, huh? Look, don't get me wrong. I'll still never forgive you prosecutors. And I have zero interest in that truth thing you talk about in court. I've always done things my own way, and that's not about to change, you got that? Hmm, I see. Well, I believe you should follow your own creed when you do your job. Yeah, and if there's ever someone you precious, your precious truth can't catch, feel free to sit around and cry about it all you want. But as for me, I'm going to get that person no matter what. <laughs> Alright. It's about time for the trial to start. I will see you later. I'll be watching a performance from the gallery. I'm looking forward to this. I've prepared a whole ton of ticker tape for today's victory, sir. I'll throw some around when Mr. Edgeworth wins. <laughs> Hope you've got enough because I'm going to give call I'm going to go call my man up as well. A modest amount of ticker tape goes a long way. Legend of the Great Thief Yatsugarasu It's the story of those who chose to dedicate their lives to the pursuit of the truth. Prosecutors are those who seek a guilty verdict for the defendants they meet. And then you have no other choice but to win by any means necessary. That creed was forced on me since I was very young. However, I no longer think that is all we prosecutors are. And that is because... Even though I've only been away from the courtroom for a short time, I feel as though it's been a lifetime since I've set foot in one. And today, more than any other day, I feel the fight within me rising. I'm really in Mr. Edward's debt for the other day. Thanks to him, I'm still free to serve in the friendly blue skies. Oh, so about my suitcases. I've been selling them on the internet, they become a real sensation. For something they call memes? Thanks to the praise the art world has lavished on my work as being truly postmodern. Airlines has chosen me to design their new line of iFly Jumbo Jets. Just think, someday you'll be able to take a ride in my pink 
bald, yellow seated Oh god. Oof. 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 Oh, I have to earth Darunus! So he rude man! Oh, because of him, my time and money is wasted! Even more important, I released the most fantastic present recently! The Paradox Statue of the Prince Valley of Cronopia! Its weight is a bit light in my hands, but the investor Paleo was most generous. <laughs> you gave him the fake! What a dick! We finally caught Agent Hicks's killer, and I was able to witness Mr. Alba's teary eyes. Feels good to finally bring everything to a close. I received another offer from Interpol to work another case in cooperation with them. However, the Kadopian courts await. Kadopia's air is supposed to be very fresh, so my whip should find new vigor there. Why is Amano not... Oh, this is an action that's going on. Just... So, Patrolman has been fired as of today, sir. I thought I was safe since we found the gun I dropped. But I noticed that I had dropped my police badge, too. I guess what really broke the camel's back was that I couldn't find my badge. My whole life has suddenly tripped into a dark black hole, sir. I think I'll go to the courthouse and file a complaint with Ruffles... With... What? Ruffles, man? couldn't even read that blurry point. And so he's at the courthouse guard, right? Bailiff? Later? I was actually hoping to talk with Mr. Edgeworth a bit more than I did. But I've got to get going and return to Europe. I've still got a long way to go, and I have a lot of stuff to study there. Next time I help Mr. Edgeworth on a case, I'm going to do it as a real forensic scientist. I'm sure he's going to need all the help I can give him, scientifically. Also, make sure to catch my Link to the Past randomizers over on Students of Gaming. Bring me at that sub two hours. Oh, she was precious. Because kidnapping was staged, I was let off easy. But I won't be going outside much anytime soon, but that's really okay. Still got that ring pop, huh? <laughs> the only prison I'm forever trapped is a cave of love! The guard down at the detention center. Well, but he's on guard duty. Oh my god, that looks creepy. He was such a he has such a cool look in his eyes, just like that prosecutor. <laughs> oh, stop it, Lord. Don't you ever learn to stop being a prisoner of love? I like Lauren a lot. <laughs> She's so spazzy. I suck. I don't even know why I was in this. I don't even. Uh, wait, that's not even my voice. I suck. I don't even know why I was in this game. I offered absolutely nothing. I continue to be an absolutely worthless judge. By the way, what are your thoughts on the game that Quinn should play next on Suits of Gaming? I will accept any and all arguments. Hey, Maggie! Oh, she's that outfit's so cute on her, even though it's Blue Badger. Like the colors are nice. Oh, I barely escaped death yet again! Yeah, but boy, we're really lucky to have Mr. Edgeworth help us out, huh? Yeah, but because I lost the key, I got fired from my security job. Oh, let it get you down, Maggie. This has got me. And my paltry salary. You're right, sir. I won't be sad. I'm going to pick myself up and get through this. I wonder what my next job should be. Uh-oh, this is actually kind of fun. I love Maggie. Maggie's probably going to get bumped in the tier list. I think I had her in B. She's probably gonna be A now. Why not continue come to Canopia for your summer vacation? You have coupons aplenty. 
Right now our embassy is proud to present our Let's Investigate a Murder Show. That's really funny. Although, in creating that particular case create a few small fires of its own. Uh, then we had a few problems with the fire marshals, but the next event will be great. It will be an attraction entitled Capture the Yatagarasu. Of course, I hope to enlist Kay's help in creating our latest attraction. At the end, he's all like, And this all goes according to my plan. <laughs> Dude was the one that planted it in his head in the first place. I can't believe it, me. It's me and went to Japan. It's okay, because that's how I met Miharu. We're planning to go to Paris soon and start a business. We're going to sell Blue Ocean Dogs. They'll sell like hotcakes, hot dogs for sure. Hotcake, hot dog, what? A blue hot dog and a blue bun. I guarantee you to turn your tongue and your face blue. I know, I'm not really the type to work a lot, or at all really, but... Oh, so I noticed that I really haven't seen the guy in the blue suit at all recently. I wonder what's up. Well, the next time we meet, I'm gonna make him eat one of my dogs. Today I gave testimony in, like, in court today. Today I gave testimony in court today. As a member of the Yatsugarasu. Yo, Mr. Bad, you look well, all things considered. By the way, have you noticed that elements within the ring have begun moving? You're probably fighting over who should succeed, over who should be the next boss. Although, to be honest, I wish I could forget I'd ever heard of that smuggling ring. Hong Si says, they really bite the poison snake from head to tail. No one runs afoul of the law and escapes this wolf's fangs. I get you. I'll get you all yet. <laughs> ah, youth. Where did I become so old? I wonder. I began noticing the gray hairs in my beard more. I'm thinking of retiring my mirror. Isn't he like 70 years old or some shit? I'm probably going to get grays in my beard in the next year. I was a pink princess and a pink badger. Oh, it's been in two days. You're talking about busy. But it's all right, because I got a letter from my beloved Edgy Pooh. Please take care of your, your hip. And when you wish to speak, first take off your headpiece. What does that mean by that last statement? Not like I enjoy being under a headpiece every time I see him. There's some creep, fuzzy pink animal, and then I was a pink princess, great hero of injustice. But ever since I was a young man, I could stylish hat on my head, also to wear my own costume for some reason. That's a terrible idea. tired i'm hungry let's just fucking oh god whoop there it is feels so much better now the trial's over and as always your legal prowess was top notch sir yeah nothing beat the look on mr alba's face when you revealed the ring's secrets i was amazed you're like a totally different person when you step into a courtroom mr edgeworth is always 10 times fiercer in court based on the information mr alba offered up they've begun large-scale operation to clean up the rest of the ring which i'm happy to leave to francisca and agent long so what are your plans now okay hmm? oh well we Taking care of the creep who killed my father, so I'm not sure. Yeah, I know. Maybe I'll just keep on being Mr. Edgeworth's assistant. Are you still trying to steal my job, pal? Just kidding, just kidding. I can't steal something so important to you, gummy. Phew, what a relief. Okay. Yes? And after all that's happened, after you, are you still planning to become a great thief? Of course. But I don't want to tarnish the legend of the noble Yatsugarasu. So I'm going to hold off on doing anything until I can make a tight three-person team of my own. Three-person team? three-person team of young beauties the same age as me, if possible. With those criteria, I highly doubt you'll find the two other people you need. My father chose to fight for the truth. I think that's what's so noble about him. You see, Mr. Edgeworth, the only things the only things I will ever steal are the truths that have been hidden away. I'm going to work extra hard to make a world where the Yatagarasu isn't needed. Hm. Let's both strive for such a future. Well, I guess it's time for me to get going. I see. Okay, keep your chin up. Stay strong, okay? Don't be a stranger. Don't worry, I'll be back. I'll be sure to break the lock on the window and sneak in. If you could, I'd appreciate it if you came in through the building's front door. It's okay, Mr. Edgeworth. The lock on my window at home has been broken for forever. One last thing before I go. Let's take a group picture, just three of us. Yeah, remember a photo. Every big case has to end with one. No. Hey, why not? 
Don't tell me you're camera shy, Mr. Edgeworth. Of course not, detective. Come on, Mr. Edgeworth, I'm taking the picture now. Hey, come back here. Mr. Edgeworth, you can't run away from this, sir. It's your destiny. Oh, hey, Detective Gumshoe. Stop that. I can't be seen doing that. Okay, I'm totally taking it now. Say cheese. And thus, the long tale of the KG-8 incident came to a close. Saw the demise of a smuggling ring, the birth of a little great thief. But there is a l there's little time to rest and relax, for the next game is afoot. For I'm eager to tackle the investigation into a new case. The reason for my eagerness is... I want to pursue the truth, and... I want to believe in the strength of those who use the power of the law for good. Someone who has chosen to live my life as a prosecutor? That is my new creed. What's he doing? I mean, that's fine. That's cute. She selfied, though, which is funny. I guess selfies were a thing at this point, right? Her key's gonna stab him in his eye! All right, we're done. The second half is absolute trash. The first half is good. Uh, the stuff with you, I like that. That second half of that case is absolute dog shit. And it really hurts the rest of this game because up to that point, I'm like, I don't see what people were so cons like upset about this game for. I think it, it's not great, but it's fine. And then that happened. That is the worst. I'm done. I'll be back tomorrow.